Catching rides and sleeping in tents. Don't you know he's streaming it live? Take a look at some of his clips on Twitch TV. That's Twitch TV slash Hitch. Hitch. Hitch.
Good morning. Welcome to day 13. I just set the date or checked the date, but now I forget. Day 13 in total, day 32. Welcome to my tent. Welcome to South Korea. Another day in the life. How y'all doing? Uh, what the start of what is probably the final day of actually getting stamps here in Korea. We've got well, f four more to get. Three are like actually new, and the fourth one is a redo. For completion's sake. Yeah. <sighs> Morning. I was running like a loudspeaker that came on um, at like three in the morning. Yeah, it was just, you know, an authoritative sounding Korean voice just saying shit. And I'm like, I don't know why they'd be doing that. God, I didn't get an emergency alert on my phone, so <laughs> what's going on with that? Um, I'm like, I am camped like just down of a dam or a weir or something like that. So like, let me just, just in case they're like releasing water, let me just see how close I am to the to the river, like, is there, <laughs> either releasing water, am I, like, close to the water level enough that that would be concerning, um, so I got out of my tent at 3 a.m., and I, like, walked over to the riverbank, and I'm like, nah, I'm so far away, um, so I went back to bed. It's just like, you know, if a loudspeaker comes on and starts warning stuff at three in the morning. We're considering the power plant in Oreo, aren't you? Well, it's like, I am on the, the river side of the dike, so, you know, we're technically in a floodplain here. But it's not, it hasn't been raining much, and it's not technically the monsoon season here in Korea, so... No. Anyway, that's my story for the night. The rest of it, I was sleeping. Ugh. Oops. Well, that's the view of my tent. Oh, yeah, this is trying to lift that Big friend wants to switch back to being completely confused. Oh, yeah, the... Was it, was it Dan or something like that? Or was it in Norway? But then, of course, there's someone on a loudspeaker speaking Norwegian. And I'm just like... Oh, I think a viewer translated being like, Yeah, they're telling you to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow, that's just like the easiest few more minutes of sleeping. Well, how do you look when you first wake up in the morning? Most people who stream, they wake up in their bed. They get up, maybe they have a shower. You know, it's the entertainment industry. A lot of people want to look good. Maybe they put some makeup on. Probably eat some breakfast. Drink some coffee. Do you think I do all that? There's a lack of many of those amenities. The bed, the bathroom, the shower kitchen, the breakfast, the coffee. It's essentially like, picture your favorite gamer. Who's like a popular gamer. Name a gamer. Shroud, okay. That, that one I know. Okay. It's like, you know, you watch Shroud streams, you know how he looks. Imagine him just still in bed, like laying on his side, and he starts his stream, like right there. He's just like, hey. 
I guess we'll go. You don't get that. No one does that. Portugal. I watch Portugal on YouTube. I met him at uh, TwitchCon. Which one was that? I don't know. At TwitchCon. We're hanging out at a party. Who's next? I like him. Straps, what are you doing? Oh, Sarah's here. Sarah, where are you right now? <laughs> Sarah's in peace. Grease Sarah, go Grease Sarah. Du, 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 du. Enough of my musical interlude. Cab tried to charge me 130 euros for a 10 minute ride. Did you respond with violence? Jeez. Scammers. What a great first experience in the country. <laughs> Someone trying to scam you. So no, I'm not doing that. Good. That's good, sir. I like that assertiveness. Made it to my hotel. How much did it cost you? Did you have to sell your soul? Twenty-seven euros. See, that seems more reasonable. <laughs> yeah. What the heck. Oh yeah, the DM. I did last night, but I forgot about it. Taking any action? Uh, no. Yeah, your highlight in two parts would be would work. Yeah. Sorry. I did see it before, but I was eating and then I just forgot about it. Do that in the morning. Sounds good. Uh, where is my... 
Let's right. That's part of this. There's the other part. All right. What song are we singing? You don't know the song. The Exa. I taught you this. Why this car is automatic. It's hydromatic. Why it's Grisera. Grisera, go, Grisera. <laughs> yeah, we're ending Koreans on their morning walk, just being like, <laughs> why, why is the music from Greece playing? I feel like Koreans would know music from Greece. It's like iconic enough, right? Grease a light. Oh, this one I'm climbing hills in Greece. Yeah! Some motivational music. Yeah, let's see. Nice morning. Sorry, I have to do a quick clapping interlude. Are you going to do that while you're climbing too? That's what we're looking at. A grass field. We're initially gonna go over there. Uh, I can't even see the screen. Uh, the gazebo's over there, but I just like. No. Lightning, 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 lightning. All right. There you go. Sarah Lightning. You missed the eclipse. Korea doesn't get an eclipse. I know a lot of people are from America, but that's where it mostly was, was America. There's more places in the world. People keep asking me, like, what's your plans for the eclipse? And, like, what are you going to do? How are you going to watch it? I'm like, it's not on this side of the world. <laughs> I'm going to continue living my life. Um, 
that's about it. We got a bug in here. Yeah. <laughs> grease lightning, go grease lightning. Well, it looks a lot less cloudy than yesterday, at least so far. So I'll check the VOD. In the meantime, uh, YouTube's an option. I think. YouTube has a better VOD player anyway.
your breakfast? Uh, good question. So at the stamp point, which is just a couple hundred meters down the road, uh, there was a little convenience store in the whatever something center building there. I just don't know if it's open at this time. Like it's a convenience store, so usually they open early. It's like the only thing that opens early in Korea here, but um. Meat can tip five dollars. Thank you, and Young Haseo Hitch. Uh, Migukin with a fiver. Thanks for the five dollars. I appreciate it. It's very kind. Um, Annyeong haseyo. Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm sorry, my Korean is, is that bad. It's probably like the most basic Korean phrase. But thank you for the fiber. What does it mean? One Michi cheered 100 bits. Means I hello? To McDonald's today. Really? It's that basic? They don't I don't have McGriddles in the UK. Or at least my town. That's Trevor, what... stay away. That's why I haven't learned how to say hello. They'll say something to me and I have no idea what they're saying. And I assume it's hello, but I'm like, it sounds complicated. Well, I can't. Well, I can't just be like a nice English. Hey. One syllable. I can learn one syllable. Now we got Mitchie with the 100 bits. Uh, they have McGriddles. They have McGriddles in the UK? Yeah, I was considering going after seeing Sarah struggle there. Um, I wanted to struggle too. Um, but now they don't have McD McGriddles, so um, never mind. Thank you for the 100 bits. Alright, let's get the fly off. Um, it is dewy. I may put it in the sun. We will consider our options. in Korea? No eclipse in Korea, unfortunately. We will not see it. back to Seoul. That's our current thought. Like, once I get all these stamps, like our final fourth stamp, they will probably be around where we finish. But um, yeah, the thought is to ride the whole way back. It's, it's gonna be like 400 kilometers from where we finish today. I think like it's still a good distance. 
maybe not quite that. I don't know. We'll have to look. Um, but I'd rather ride it than like just bust myself back. Happens <laughs> after you get stamped out. Well, we go back to Seoul. We go to the the government office for bike certification we get my passport certified and we get a freaking gold medal that's what we do the gold medal tonight no we're very far away from Seoul <laughs> we're very we're on the wrong side of the country and if we're riding back to Seoul it's gonna take some time kidding what get a gold medal no I'm, I'm dead serious about that that's why we're doing this they give you a gold medal if you finish the entire passport I want a freaking gold medal okay it is critically important to my enjoyment of life at this moment I will not be satisfied until I get a gold medal I can be bothered to just let this dry in the sun. It's gonna take too long in this early morning sun. Well, yeah. Okay. Right. Are the in Seoul? No, they're on my way north. Um, today but we still won't be anywhere near Seoul by the time we get the last four stamps in the passport there. requirements to legit the tour biking no not really like you just fill out the passport and people be like you could totally drive your car to these different ones and fill it out and it's just like technically yes you could do that but you're just really cheating yourself but um there's no time requirements or anything like that a lot of people that do eventually complete the grand slam do it over like a couple of years and just when they have some time off they'll here in Korea, like take a train or something like that with their bike because you can on the weekends and they'll do a segment and, and then, you know, do another segment in another few months when they have some time. Um, <sighs> tent. I did it in two parts. We did part one, December, part two, March, April. Using the drone again? Today? Uh, yeah, we find a good spot to use it. I don't think I'll fly it first thing this morning, but... 
we can. On this side, if I want to like have a bit of a snack here, or if I just want to like ride up and see if there's that convenience store open. After that spot, there's a bunch of picnic tables there. Maybe we'll ride there and we can sit down and eat. There's a picnic table down here too, but anyway, I think we'll do that. Let's see if we can get like a coffee. Some kimbap. but I'll brush my teeth. How do you feel when you do these trips? Felt unreal or nah? I've spent so much of my adult life doing like longer term trips where every day is just you're traveling, you're going for a distance and just experiencing the process of getting from point A to B, that this just feels like my normal life, <laughs> as strange as, as that is. Um, this feels more normal to me than being home in Canada. Um, teeth, that's what we were doing. <laughs> Some chocolate milk. Oh, well, hopefully we'll find some. It's it's pretty available in South Korea, but there's a lot of places without any chocolate milk. That is my toothpaste. Almost out, but I do have some. Thanks. You're not scared that someone would steal your bike? What, when I'm camping? Most of the times when I'm camping places, I'm somewhere where people don't really even see you. So if no one sees you, there's no one there to steal your bike. I also feel more stressed out if I ever have to like camp at an actual campground where there's just a bunch of people around also camping. I'm more concerned about the safety of my tent there um, than when I'm wild camping. Hi, what are you doing? I'm about to brush my teeth. Because dental hygiene is important. Uh, but we're doing a bike tour around Korea to, to answer your most likely actual meaning of the question. One second. I can't answer a question right now. <laughs> One second.
All right, now I can answer questions. <laughs> Sorry. Trying to see the worth of this gold medal. It's not going to be actual, like, gold content. It's just a medal that is gold colored. All right. It's not about the monetary value of the medals in the medal. It's about just getting a medal that is gold in the first place. I've never had a gold medal. I'm excited to get one. So many people's first response to them, I'm like, you got a gold medal. They're like, what's the gold content? How many carrots? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Many kilometers to the last checkpoint? Uh, I don't actually. Well, what did we do yesterday? 80. Including that, the fourth one, which we've already kind of done, which is off route, but we have to get to anyway. It's probably about another 75k or something like that. 70 to 80k. Uh, by Crow, press the radius, there's very complimentary of you. Yeah, I had it up while I was like actually getting ready for bed for a second, and I'm like, man, <laughs> he's saying lots of nice things about me. Wasn't expecting that. That was, that was good. Yeah. Okay, let's lock my headlamp. There you go. I'll make today the last day. Well, last day of getting stamps, but we still have to get our passport verified. And to do that, we have to get back to Seoul. And we're notably in Southern Korea and Seoul is in Northern South Korea. I feel like I had to add an extra word there to clarify. So yeah, today is the last day of getting stamps. But it's not the last day of this bike tour. Your thing experience during your hikes? Uh, that was pretty scary when someone was shooting at me in Arkansas. It was accidental, but still at me. Still didn't like it. Crazy after he went up there, he's like, Mind if I go hot again? He's like, Yeah, do you mind if I keep shooting? I'm like, Well, yeah, sure. He's like, There's no one else there. I'm like, Yeah, there's just me. I was the only one you were shooting at. <laughs> so, you know, luckily for you, you're only shooting at one person, not an entire group of them. Then he asked me if I want some weed, and they left. To the best of my knowledge, that's true. There could be some hidden dude somewhere in there. <laughs> in the bushes that I don't know about. Could have been false information. <whistles> B. 
do 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 Uh, I gotta steal your uh, microphone so the audio will change, I will sound quieter, and then we'll uh, be switching over to the normal streaming backpack at that point. So represented by the same company, what do they do for you and roughly how much does it cost? Uh, that's our agency. Um, so. Essentially, they find us sponsors and then take a percentage cut of any sponsorship revenue received, but we don't pay them directly a fee. It's just if they find us a sponsor, then they take a percentage. Um, we got Marley with the, with the raid. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome to South Korea. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Hope you had a good stream. Um, we were just starting our day here. I just packed up my tent. It was right here, and now it's in that pannier. Uh, and now we're just switching from just the cell phone camera stream to a backpack stream to mount the camera on the bicycle. And then we're going to try and find some breakfast, maybe some coffee, probably some kimbap, which is like seaweed with rice and stuff inside of it. Um, and then we'd ride our bicycle. It's actually the last day of collecting stamps on this tour to complete the Grand Slam Tour of South Korea, um, where when I finish that and take all the, the passport back to Seoul, they'll give me a gold medal. So it's actually kind of a big day. All right. Uh, I, oh yeah, I'm taking the, the mic to switch it to the backpack stream so the audio's gonna change and I'll sound very quiet if I'm talking. When is a gold medal actually made of gold? Not even Olympic gold medals are made of gold. They're silver medals with a thick gold plating. Pissy Fitz, thanks for the gifted sub. <laughs> uh, the five gifted subs. Thank you very much for the five gift subs. Your gift sub, welcome to Twitch Bikers. I appreciate it. We're on the bike camera, but it's not on the bike yet. I switched over a little faster than I usually was going to because <laughs> I had to acknowledge. Hey. Okay. Um, let's get this actually on the bike though. Fall off the bike. Stay on the bike. Oh, this is uh, Trevor. There's a kitten in my room. Uh, people yesterday did say that you would enjoy Greece because there's lots of cats. So, so far they're accurate. That's good. Uh, but his fifth thanks again for those five gift subs. Uh, 
grab this phone. I was letting a slug out. <laughs> now there's a kitten. Why was there a slug in your hotel room? Take a ship from Jeju or plane? Uh, a ship. The flights from Jeju can actually be really, really cheap. Um, our issue is I'm on a bicycle and flying with a bike. I do it a lot, but it's just a pain in the butt. So if I can not fly with the bike, in this case, take a ferry, I absolutely will, because it's just, I don't have to find a box to put the bike in, get the bike in the box, pay a bunch of baggage fees at the airport. bike in the box like it's so easy oh wait did did sarah stream herself putting the bike in the box how'd that go i missed that what have you been getting a medal if i'm allowed to i don't know it's at the government office though is our you know my concern so I will try, <laughs> but no guarantees. Is quit something? Are you saying Sarah was struggling? That's part of the vibe of Sarah's stream. But I have learned you guys like to watch me struggle too, so I think people just like struggling. You're all a bunch of sadists. Um, This stream bike got blown away by the wind. I don't think the bike did. Her bike is notably, you know, a touring bike. She's heavy. I think I heard something about a bike box blowing away. How do you like it now? It wasn't me. What do you mean it wasn't you? Packing the bike? Uh, update, there are two cats. Well, there you go. Sarah's made friends. So, so far, the Sarah Grace update is a taxi tried to scam her and the cats like her. Which sounds about right. I haven't been to Greece, but, you know, I was almost in Greece, and the world shut down. I was in North Macedonia. up here. Fixing my pants.
So it should just be a short ride to the little certification center with the, um, what you call it? Convenience store. I just don't know if it's going to be open or not. We'll find out. Great camping spot. Yeah. I'm quite satisfied with this one. And like in the morning. Uh, so what I was saying yesterday was where the little gazebo things are down there. Like it's just like completely clear line of sight to the road. So I decided to try camping over here. Just in this grass. But let's see if I can show you. Like behind this tree, this tree is just a little sparse. <clears throat> but although I can't see the the ridge of the road, yeah, I'm just like a little bit tucked behind the tall whatever dry looking grass in that tree bush. Tracker enabled. Uh no back and turn that on. One sec, let me check the camera level. <laughs> Do 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 uh let me just turn it in a couple degrees and then we can turn the tracker on and go. Nice. Should we start before the stream today? Uh, no, but I don't, didn't really need to because it will be a couple hundred meters, but it is distance I actually cycled. So whether it was yesterday or today added on, it actually makes sense to add it on. Because um, I turned it off at the um, eel restaurant last night. But, you know, so it'll be however many meters, maybe up to one kilometer. Shouldn't be more than that from the eel restaurant we are. Let it think, 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 and go. Okay, we are GPSing now. Of course, we've been in her Discord of the cats. Ooh, maybe when I get to the convenience store and we're chilling, I will uh, inspect the cats. Zero point six. Gotcha. So that was the distance from our EO restaurant last night. So it was technically not done today, but it was done last night and not actually added to our distance yesterday. So it's okay. Are you expecting? Were you talking about for the GPS thing or, or to like today? <laughs> Should oil my chain too. Much common in fourth stamp. Uh, everything in the seventy to eighty year age. To get our fourth stamp, um, and then we'll. S the plan is to still ride back to Seoul, so that'll take a few days, realistically. I'm tempted to see how fast I can do it, like, treat it as like a personal race. Ooh, a cat. Sarah, I have a cat too. It's running away from me though. No, don't run away. Why aren't you friendly like the Greek cats? Mm -hmm. 
All right, turn left here. Steep little climb up. Oh yeah, that's actually pretty steep. Let's see, is the convenience store open? No cars. Oh yeah, doors open, that's a good sign. <laughs> In some bumping places, there's actually quite a few bikes here and stuff. Yeah. Um, coffee, kimbap, and some chocolate milk. I got gummy candies. Stuff. Go get things. Kimbap. We'll get a thing of noodles then, I guess. <laughs> All the things I want, they don't have. Noodle cup.
Am I good with all this? Yeah. Well, these will be fine. Okay, no chocolate milk. No. Kimbap. Oven fresh. Our streamers are in Asia and nowhere else. Our streamers follow seasons. No one wants to be in Europe in winter, because it's winter. But then in the summer, there's TwitchCon, and then there's it's summer in, in Europe, so you go there. And then uh, it was the same for most of NA in the winter. But you'll notice a ton of people go to Southeast Asia in like December through February. That's the dry season. <laughs> That's when you want to be in Southeast Asia. So they go there when it's nice to be there. UK summer is also winter. <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. Yeah, we get this type of ramen in Canada too, so I know I, I like it. Now probably all of these I like. Varying levels of like, but I know this one's good. Spicy and crude. The same noodle? Same brand? Why would they do that? They make a domestic and an export version? But yeah, as far as seasons, I'd say like. From what I've heard of Korea, I wouldn't want to be here like midsummer. It's too hot and humid. Um, I think this is a great time of year to be here. And we just had the cherry blossoms. There's still a little bit around, but they're definitely falling off now. Are you, are you cooked? I need a little bit more. Use my empty battery. Hold you shut. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just wait for that. I got, otherwise I got two Snickers bars, I got some gummy candies. <laughs> I got a little beef jerky left. I dig into that. We're right by the, a nice uh, condenser, compressor. What are they doing? Hmm. Probably looking for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. How do you plan for laundry and shower? Uh, I don't shower very much. Uh, oh, room every so often. Yeah, like just from how the natural trip progresses, uh, usually I either end up with a motel or something every so often, or like, especially when hitchhiking, a lot of times I just go until someone invites me over who picks me up, which happens depending on the country and how the trip's going, sometimes super frequently and sometimes uh, not so frequently. Um, but if I am going a longer amount of time and I feel a little un, you know, you know, not so fresh, we use wet wipes to get the hot spots. And then my clothes are mostly merino wool and the merino wool doesn't hold an odor like, like cotton or polyester might. Okay, well now I want to move because we're right by this freaking thing. It's loud but I'm comfortable. An anonymous 
Sound is fine. All right. Uh, anonymous. Thank you for gifting a sub to DeSoto. Sure, I got you. Thank you. My JBL speaker is now just a JB speaker. We've lost the L at some point. Probably fine now. Here's how he's gonna eat the noodles with chopsticks. Yeah, no chocolate milk. No kimbap, so we went for <laughs> instant noodles instead. Oh yeah, all these places have like hot water dispensers, so. Hey, it's off. So you're carrying the emergency ration of chocolate milk power to add milk if needed. Um, didn't we do that somewhere? <laughs> I think we might have. Or was it like, oh, we had, it kind of looks like chocolate milk powder, but it's not. What is it? Some Swiss guys gave me some packages of it. They did have the heating tray of um, like hot coffee. After this, I'll probably buy a hot coffee. I just I didn't want to, you know, buy the hot coffee. They wouldn't go with the spicy noodles, so I was gonna have it after having the noodles. But then it would just be cold at that point. So of chopsticks as you go there yeah so one of the things I found fun when I was hitchhiking in Japan is like you know quite often people would invite me up for like a lunch or a dinner or over to their place and like I'd eat with them and then I, yeah I think they have it in their mind that most foreigners can't use hashi like chopsticks um, but I can and like reasonably well like not not as adept as someone that grew up using chopsticks, like, they got some sick skills, but I, I can get by just fine. Um, and it's a very common <laughs> reaction to me just using chopsticks normally with them being, like, very impressed with that. They're just like, wow, <laughs> look at that guy use chopsticks. Very impressive. Uh, it made me feel good, you know. It's not that hard to win chopsticks. No, like I agree. Like it didn't take me long to pick it up. 
finally know how to do it because like my stepdad and my family like sushi so when I was fairly young we'd go out very occasionally for sushi and um, you know at first I just had the most simple rules because uh, the raw fish was scary to me but I occasionally try some of my stepdad's rolls because he's like all the salmon and tuna and stuff like that. And then uh, eventually uh, I decided, hey, that, that stuff's good. What do you get copyright struck for? Any number of songs that play as we're at the media share or just like when you're at restaurants and stuff like that, there's me music playing. Outside media share, like, the sounds of civilization is copyrighted. There's always music, there's always stuff going on. Spoon's best for noodles. I feel like a spoon is not great when you have like longer noodles that wouldn't fit in a spoon. Like soup is good for broth, but it's not good for picking up noodles. How much was instant noodles cost? Um, I think it was 2700 uh, won, so like Biting all the way back to Seoul. Probably. It's gonna be a long trip. Yeah. I've toured like 30,000 kilometers. Doing 400 kilometers to just get to Seoul is not really a big deal. Okay. Um. I don't know, I might drink, should I drink the broth? Maybe, probably. Calories, um. That's what I want, so the coffee. We got Snickers, which has protein. <laughs> and calories. Hmm. <coughs> well, I do have some like, yeah, I'll have the rest of the beef jerky. I'll have, um... If I can get it. The whole bike's leaning on here, so hopefully this doesn't knock it over. Ooh, it wants to knock. Oh, I have spam, too. <laughs> spam singles. I about that. Get sports drink. I have some from yesterday. Brand of those noodles, uh, Shin Ramyun. I'm gonna go get a coffee though. You guys are leaning over more now than before because I, I took the whole bike's just leaning on the panniers and I took stuff out of one of them so the pannier compressed and now we're leaning more. Hey, anyway, uh, this way.
고맙습니다. We can handle shin ramen together with coffee. I just have an iron bladder. I'll drink an entire liter of chocolate milk and then ride my bicycle. Which I think that one in particular gets uh, people's brains a little confused. I don't think I want the broth. Sorry? Country? Country? USA? Canada. Canada? Yeah. English teacher job? Am I? No. <laughs> my, my job, uh, cameraman. Mashi soyo is good. <laughs> we, in in Canada, they have this too. Canada, Vancouver. From Vancouver. Changing the garbage is over. Canada, how you doing? Bike, bike. I, I did bike across Canada. Yeah. yeah. From Vancouver to Halifax, west, east, bicycle. Uh, and then I've done Europe on bicycle. Korea on bicycle. <laughs> Baseball. Yeah. Major league. Major league. Is from Korea? Yeah. Because, so, when people historically ask me where I'm from, I'd be like, I'm from Vancouver, and I'm about to say island, and before I even say island, they cut me off, and they're like, oh, Vancouver, Vancouver's a nice day, or a nice city. And eventually, I kind of just stopped saying Vancouver Island, and I just say Vancouver. Toronto Blue Light Trader is from Korea. Okay. Because, yeah, in, in J Japan, they had... Bye-bye! Um, it was only one of the best players... Uh, what's his name? When I was last in Japan in... in uh, what was that? End of 2022. We'd end up, like, talking sports sometimes. And... Everyone's sport was always baseball, and they always wanted to... Otani, yeah. And they always freaking loved Otani. Um, bike four miles out of day was dead. Well, I don't know, you're here right now bike another four miles it, after you've recovered and do that for a couple weeks and then uh, four miles won't so, seem so bad after that if you do it a few times mm. 
You might tonight? Oh, yesterday. So, like, do you still feel sore? Also, when you say dead, was it just like overall exhaustion? Was it muscle? Was it butt pain? There's different ways to feel dead on a bike. Put more air in my tires. <laughs> yeah, if you had low tire pressure, you feel so sluggish on a bike. And so, like, me and Sarah did a race. We were both coming in to visit um, one of my mods, and he was going to help with some stuff in uh, Belgium. And I was coming from a different direction. But Sarah just flew into Belgium, and we were going to meet at their place in Belgium. And when she landed and was about to go, we were about the same distance. <clears throat> so we decided to, you know, race there and see who could get there first. But when, Sarah, when you fly with a bike, you're supposed to partially deflate your tires. And then Sarah put her bike back together, but didn't reinflate her tires. An anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to the go. Hey! Anonymous individual, thank you for gifting us up to Demco. Our, um, <laughs> person who died on a bike yesterday. We're back about to get groceries, so my lower back, um, hurts from that. Oh, okay. Well, this time, are you just biking with just the bike? Do you like mocha coffee? Sometimes. I kind of like, if I can find a mocha that is just like lightly sweetened, it's just like has a little chocolatey flavor to it, but without being like excessive. Just most mochas are like super, super sweet. Probably some used panniers or something found any. Yeah. New panniers can get really expensive. So used would make sense. Find a used pair or leaps, that would be nice. Because they last forever. Like these back rollers have yeah, like thirty thousand kilometers on them. And they're still fine. Well actually I broke a, a clip once, but we just swapped it to a a, a different one on a bike shop. Post mount rear bag doesn't hold much. Yeah, unless you have like a large one made for like bike packing. Those seat post bags don't really hold much. Coffee wake you up yet? I wasn't feeling too bad before, but I, you know, it's just nice to have coffee in the morning. Um, there's probably a washroom in this building. Before we ride away, I'll try and use it. Oh, so who won the race? Sorry, I was mid-story and then I got distracted. <clears throat> anyway, so, like, while we were racing, I felt confident in my ability to win. Because I was just trying to, I was kind of feeling the vibe from the chat. Because people could be watching both streams and kind of figuring out how far. When the vibe from the chat was, was I was, like, you know, outperforming Sarah. So... I had a beer in my pannier, and in Belgium you can drink in public. So I just like stopped, grabbed my beer, and like was riding my bike and racing and drinking my beer as I went. And then I heard an ice cream truck. So I chased down the ice cream truck and I got an ice cream. Then I was riding my bike racing against Sarah, eating a thing of ice cream. 
Um, but anyway, I won the race. But Sarah was only a couple minutes behind. If Sarah had just inflated her tires before she started, I bet she would have won. Because over a few hours of riding, like, low tire pressure is going to add so much extra resistance that uh, it would have made up for more than just a few minutes. Well, she just actually flew with her bike to Greece, so <clears throat> maybe I should remind her, pump up your tires, <laughs> please. Too sad, you run. Um, like mine pretty much like gaps from in ten psi segments, and I just go to essentially seventy. As soon as it ticks above sixty, I consider it fine, but it's in the sixty to seventy range. Sixty is fine. Like, past a certain point, you don't really get any, like, added rolling resistance benefits from running a really high pressure, but what you will get is um, a reduced ride quality, where it's just a very rigid tire, so feel the bumps and vibrations more. Did you ever overinflate your tires? Uh... I don't see any reason to go up that high for, for mine personally, so I don't think I've ever gone really higher than what I do right now. Jen Ray 004 just subscribed. Thank you. Uh, Jen Ray with the sub. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Twitch Bikers. Appreciate it. Um, what else do I want? Snickers? Sure. Mm -hmm. I've, I've probably gone out to 80 before on the pressure. That's four miles round trip. I'm not too worried about bumps. Well, then I'm sure if it's only four miles, then you shouldn't be too concerned about marginal, marginally reduced rolling resistance from running a high inflation tire or an overinflated tire. It does depend on the type of bike and tire. Like, I'm kind of saying, got a roadie, run them thin and high. All right, some of the pressures on um, some road tires, like over 100. But your tire will actually have a recommended PSI to run at, but yeah. I think mine say up to 80. These will take you finish the trip. So uh, we should get our final stamps today. But that doesn't mean this trip is finished. It just means we've 
accomplish the passport part. But we have to then take the passport back to Seoul to get it verified. So it's probably like 70, 80 kilometers to get our final stamps. And then another like 400 to actually get to Seoul. Stop eating your drink after mute. So loud <coughs> eating and drinking. Yeah, a lot of people say that. And then when I'm drinking a lot, like if I'm gulping a whole thing of chocolate milk, I quite often take the mic off because I know people complain all the time. I can take it off. I just forget about it. So, yeah, the plan is, like, I could get my last stamp and then find the closest place that has a bus and bus back to Seoul, but that sounds boring. So I'll probably ride the bike. Ain't Train to Busan. I have seen that movie. I enjoyed it. It was a good film. What are South Korean films? I saw Parasite. That's South Korean, huh? Mm, I think that's it. Squid Game. That's Korean? If so, yes. I'm afraid that your large glasses increase the wind resistance unnecessarily. Is that the opposite case? These glasses have nothing to do with aerodynamics and everything to do with just the full coverage. I used to wear casual sunglasses, but like, there's so much room around at the side that lets light and dust and dirt and stuff like that in. <laughs> pretty much every time I, um, is when, when I started cycling, like, across Canada, pretty much everything I owned outside of the bike was, like, not cycling specific. I just rode in very, like, casual gear. And I very slowly, like, accumulated cycling specific things. And every time I got a cycling specific piece of gear, I'm like, oh, that's really nice. I see why people wear them or use them, um, and cycling sunglasses were one of them. It's just, my entire vision is taken up by the lens. I don't remember I'm wearing sunglasses because I can't even see them. I can if I like really look to the edge, but like my entire field of view is just sunglasses. Uh, but no, this, this wouldn't change my aerodynamic profile. And they do kind of like wrap around your face. So like, if they were just like completely straight, then maybe some technically measurable amount. That's the first time I've heard that though. But also in general, I'm not usually too worried about aero because I'm on a fully loaded touring bike, which is like by definition, the least aerodynamic setup you could have. lights don't have lower frame yeah well <clears throat> Sarah says she really wants my bike like the same year model but she should get a smaller frame size so I keep an eye out for a used example um, and then you know she started wearing like cycling specific glasses and stuff like that too I could get her like don't they make sutras in a small too I could get her some small sutras maybe even the same color 
and then she'd be like a mini me. Same bike, same glasses. We just have to work on her enjoyment of climbing hills. How tall is your frame? 54 centimeters. Or your bike online? Um, I got it by, this is early pandemic, like 2020 spring. Um, I went online and Kona, Kona's distribution like warehouse in Vancouver had Sutros in this frame size, something like that, available. Um, and then I contacted a bike shop, and since that was available at Kona's warehouse, the bike shop could just order an inventory from Kona's distribution warehouse and sell it to me for MSRP. Um, I don't know how much money they make from that because they just sell it at MSRP. I'm, gu I'm guessing there's some margin there, but anyway. It, it, it's kind of hard to find a lot of bike shops in, in a lot of places that actually just have touring models on in stock, like in the store, because I don't think they sell that many of them if you're just a random bike shop in town. How many people are looking for a touring bike? We got hit in the eye by a bug while well, riding appreciate sports classes. That's true. Uh, but even, I, th I think it was supposed to be with these ones. Was it these ones? Maybe it wasn't. When I was finishing up my Canada trip, I was in Newfoundland and riding down the highway and a bee smacked the gap between my helmet and sunglasses, like, like smacked into it, bounced off my forehead and underneath the sunglasses. Uh, so stuck between my face and my sunglasses and of course freaked out and stung me. But you know, it's like an inch from my eyeball. Have agency for Twitch if show they find you a sponsor for your bike. Um, yeah, <laughs> I agree. The issue with if I have an agent, them finding like say bike sponsors is when my agent contacts. I have a Kona, Kona bike, so let's say Kona. They're like, okay, um, that's cool, but we have never worked with Twitch. We don't know if it provides any value, so we're not going to like pay you to advertise on a platform that we don't understand. If this stream was the same size and I streamed exclusively video games, I would probably at least half of my income would be sponsorship revenue. But it's really hard to find IRL relevant sponsors on Twitch because IRL brands don't deal with Twitch. It's a video game website. At least that's what they think. This is those glasses look good. Don't believe them. Well, I, I'm, I'm not wearing these glasses to attract you. Don't worry. I ride my bike thousands of kilometers. These are for riding a bike. Not to seduce you. I'll just check the building here. I've seen people walk in and out. I'm guessing that's where the bathroom is. Um, and throw up my garbage here. And then we can continue on. What's the background home? It's like an air conditioner or something like that. The compressor, whatever you call it. Sunscreen check? Oh, yeah. And then we can do sunscreen. Um, Not 
this breakfast is a lot less satisfying than the big one we had uh, yesterday with like two McGriddles and the whole breakfast, the McDonald's uh, pancake breakfast combo. And yesterday's VOD, it'll get posted eventually, but we have issues with Twitch's VODs just not posting until like some amount of intervention. I think the mod that will probably do it is sleeping right now, so that's an issue. Um, okay. My girls are tiny now. I haven't noticed the change in size. In, in size, rather. Yeah, I'm leaving the mic here, and I'll be right back.
We are back in business. Let's put some sunscreen on and get riding. So I got National Health Service to sponsor her UK tour. She did a sponsored stream with, yeah, with the UK's National Health Service. That is true. That's because, I don't know, some representative from them ended up watching her stream and they emailed her directly being like, hey, can we sponsor a stream? <laughs> so, that was a very obscure sponsor. She wasn't like emailing. 
the National Health Services of the United Kingdom being like, hey, <laughs> can you pay me money to promote the uh, MMR vaccine? <laughs> And as predicted, we talked about it beforehand, and I'm like, and then there's gonna be some like anti-vaxxer person that's gonna be pissed off that was part of our community or something like that. Or there was. Military operations or in training stuff. They don't put on their like ADS. Is it ADSB? What's the transponder called? is ADSB. Okay. okay. That's dead, so put that away. That's commercial. That one's not a gem. Okay. This, this. <laughs> it, I did, but then it, the video is, <laughs> this is stable. He said stuff, I don't know what he said, but he said things. Actually, let's probably switch my jackets. It's 
sound friendly. Oh no, I absolutely was just curious about the camera mount. Which, fair enough, it's a weird system I've got here. Camera fixed that camp moving. Oh, like he thought it was uh, like on a ball head joint that could gimbal and move. It is fixed. Like to, uh, I'll be heading back to Canada and prepping for my next trip, which will probably be a hitchhiking trip. I'm gonna overheat in this pretty quickly too. It's quite nice out. Days to finish. It depends what you mean by finish. So. Uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, from Canada. Huh? I'm from Canada. So, <laughs> Korean. Yeah. If that's what he was asking, but I could understand him, and I could break out the uh, translator, but I'm about to leave. The, the dike or whatever up here. And then we switch side to the river and follow that for a long time. Should be a nice ride. Summer quest up? They should be. I 
I haven't turned them on. <laughs> Almost master Korean. Yeah, pretty much. Wait. Oh, it's just. Yeah, okay. It's not quiet. For you tip $12. Thank you. You truly are the best. The wee links for the $12. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down in the place. <laughs> wow, it's a very nice meteor shark. I appreciate it. That's real nice. Off we go. With a fast enough <laughs> media shirt sure song, maybe I can. What's the uh, cruising speed of an F-35? Oh, what a nice, positive, <laughs> supportive media shirt sure to start the day that you believe. I appreciate it. Should be left. That look oh right, I see. To get down to that level and then yeah. Okay. Or we can stay up on here. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Nothing's gonna ever keep it down the best around. I think. Could just stay on top of the dike. Anyway, we'll do this. This is the Sung Chong Weir. So, yeah, it was. I had like 3 a.m. Randomly, a loudspeaker came on in around where I was on the banks of the river here, just saying things in Korean. And I'm like, I don't know what they could be warning about. But it sounded like some kind of warning. They weren't like playing full sirens, which I feel like they would if there was like an emergency emergency. Even if it was like blah, blah, blah. 
So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna inspect this. I feel like I'm pretty high above the river, but I am just above a weir. Um, I looked at high, how high I was above the water level in case they were warning of them releasing water from up the river. Um, and I was way above the water level, so I then went back to bed. What camera for live? Yeah, this is a Sony AS, uh, I guess 300 action camera. Should be left turns, right? Well, the sign said, you know, damn young, dang, dang, damn young, damn, or whatever where I'm going was right, which I thought was weird. And it was left by taking, you know, two rights. Keep you down. Soy tipped eleven dollars and fifty cents. Thank you. Let's go. I wanna run. <laughs> I wanna run. I can say eleven fifty. The weave. Setting the pace for this morning. Speaking on like live streaming cameras, this, you know, well, Sony hasn't really put up more action cameras, but other companies have, but they haven't really gotten better than what these Sony action cameras can provide. The optical image stabilization in these is solid, the image quality is good. It's just got clean mic reach to my output. GoPro likes to make it really hard to actually get video output from your camera. Than the little Sony camera. Uh, there's, there's two cameras that we use. It's either a Sony AS300 or a Sony FDR-X3000. The same camera, just one's a 1080p, one's a 4K model. And since we don't live stream in 4K, there's no reason to, you know, get the 4K camera outside of availability because they're all discontinued now. Actually, really hard to find these days. You're riding past people blasting tunes. You know, this is actually really common in Korea. Lots of people just go out for a bike ride and play tunes. Now, mostly they're not playing music like this. It's like an old guy playing like <laughs> classical music or something like that. But you know, sometimes there's some bangers going on. But yeah, there's like some cool cameras and one of the limitations is a lot of modern cameras don't have an actual way to get the video and audio signal out of the camera like cleanly via cable. And the built-in live streaming capabilities of most, most action cameras is like, like just really bad. So what we can do is use like these cameras live streaming functionality to rather than stream through the internet to our servers directly from the camera and its app, is we can do a local live stream to actual broadcasting hardware, in this case like a bell box. It can take an RTMP ingest and then stream from there. But there's you know annoyances and challenges with that as well.
so it doesn't make an extra cam. I don't know. Like, for how popular these cameras are for us, I have no idea if they actually sold well at all. Just because they're the best for, like, outdoor IRL live streaming. It's a very niche market. They probably just got slaughtered by GoPro and then Sony decided to focus more on their more profitable segments of their camera market. With headphones more often. In Korea, a lot of, it's usually old guys just playing with speakers. Sure you have some Sony camera, some smartphone application. Smartphone application. It's called real time IRL. That was a pain to get the signal out. Yeah. So like you can't even get a wired signal out of the GoPro without buying a separate media mod kit um, for the GoPro. And then there's there's issues with, um, I think it's overheating and low light performance, which is really bad. Now low light performance on most action cameras is quite bad because, well, very small image sensor, but. No, it won't software stabilize. I think on newer models, they've sorted that out. The stabilization at least. Oh, because I had it, I have, I just haven't used it. Well, I tried using it, but, well, here's my experience using it. The GoPro Hero 8 Black when they first came out. Boy, you tip $12.55. Thank you, okay, last from me for a while. They're a pretty busy bike trail. Add the weave with another 12.55. We got all the tunes this morning. Hey, I like this song. Now I gotta ride faster. Bridge I don't trust though. That's a little bumpy. It looks like it's gonna be good, but oh, on the rough side. this part of the trail so far as that boardwalk bridge. Full suspension sounds nice right about now. 
Yeah, at least out here at front suspension bike, they actually feel pretty, all ni pretty nice. All right, the Wii, thanks for the, uh, the free song donations. One more. One, there we go. <laughs> I appreciate it. I can slow down. Thank you. Um, so I was telling a story, like I have a GoPro Hero 8 Black, and I got it for hitchhiking streams back in like 2019. Um, so I wanted to test the wireless live streaming. But as soon as you started live streaming with the uh, Hero 8 Black, it just disabled every single bit of um, image stabilization. Which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> so I'm like, it's a freaking action camera. Why would, <laughs> why would you disable both OIS and EIS just because someone's using the live streaming function? <laughs> Turn a shot clip. How do you do that? Uh, so DJI Mini 4 Pro drone. I connected the DJI Fly app. Um, and then it has its own broadcast functionality built in. It's really crap live streaming functionality if you're trying to live stream via the internet to a server or directly to a live streaming platform's ingest so rather than doing that we did a local live stream connection uh rtmp connection to my broadcasting device a bella box so it'd be more stable and it was we just had issues with the audio it was forcing us to use both my mic and the microphone built into the drone situation, which is coming from the controller that you control the drone with, um, which made the sound quite bad whenever we got moving because we, then we got a bunch of wind noise. I guess in the meantime, we can essentially do a, a sketchy windscreen over, if I can find the camera or the microphone on the remote, then we can at least cut the wind noise. There'll still be bad audio from it. I should be able to pick and choose the audio source through my bell box, but it wouldn't let me. So just get a medal for doing all three routes. You can get a medal for doing less than the Grand Slam Tour, but the Grand Slam Tour is like, you know, the peak medal of doing everything. Seymour, it was awesome. Yeah, uh, I'll probably try and use it today again. Um, we have a few things to sort out. Maybe uh, when I stop for lunch or something, I'll see if I can research it. Unfortunately, a lot of the settings, I can't even adjust them until the drone is flying, like the re return to home settings. Best routes there. Yeah, Korea has some amazing bike routes. And they usually just like really like chill, enjoyable riding. Uh, Korea is a very hilly country, but most of the bike routes follow river valleys. So with that, you're just kind of following, you know, rivers which don't go over mountains. I mean, it's free pro drone. Like, the live stream I was doing, you can do that with the Mini 3 Pro. You just have to be cognizant of... The Mini 3 Pro only has... I forget which angles it's missing. It has obstacle avoidance, but only from a couple different directions. It doesn't have it in every direction. If it's flying backwards, I don't think it has backwards sensors. And it might be missing some above and below or something. So, if you're not really paying attention, it'll just smack into something. That's the reason why I went for the Mini 4 Pro. It has omnidirectional, so in theory, every direction has obstacle avoidance. But, the issue is that is with like really thin things, like tree branches without leaves on them. Those really thin, spindly, uh, it's very active airspace right now. It's just 
chat after chat. Um, the senses struggle to pick up really like thin things, and that could also be a, a power line too. So. Thanks, it was the last one. Oh my god, that... <laughs> Who's on the drums with the double kick there? I haven't heard this forever. Is something like Tony Hawk Pro Skate or something? Is this on a video game? made me immediately think of my childhood. Do a kickflip. Well, I can do a kickflip, but I can do some cool tricks. Watch this wheelie. You see that? You see that? This section up here is actually pretty smooth. Oh, what a jam. <laughs> the Wii Mix for the fourth song of the morning. You got some tunes. All right. Thank you very much, Louis. A little nostalgia on that one, too. Ah. Yeah, it's been a very long time since I heard that song. The jets start coming and they don't stop coming. I feel like they're just like practicing takeoff and landing, so just like they take off, this is what we hear them doing. Where's that coming from? <laughs> And then it stopped. Where is that? That's weird. What a 
We're back to the rougher paths again. Didn't even go fast if I wanted to. Oh, won't you please be mine, be mine, be my little baby, baby, my darling. Ah. Blame Hannibal again? I think Hannibal's sleeping, so I don't think I can blame him. Unless he's sleep trolling, but. I keep, like, we're talking about something and then there's a song and then I get distracted by the song because I'm just like, whoa, this, this is a jam. And then I forget what we were talking about. Is there a couch under this bridge? No. That's disappointing. There's a surprising amount of bridges with couches under them in Korea. Be my, be my girl. Talking about ham sandwiches? Are we, were we now? I don't think so. I do like a good ham sandwich though. Beef and melted jack. That sounds pretty good. I can get behind that. Still planning to get a pilot's license? Hopefully, eventually. My plan was to try and stream the flight training, but I did find a pilot that wanted to do it, and then uh, he lost his medical certification to fly. As a commercial pilot, he had to get checked out every year, and, and I said he wasn't fit to fly, so once I lost that, I hit up a bunch of flight schools around the area where I was, and none of them wanted the, the stream, which is honestly fair. Like, there's a lot of liability in flying. It's quite a controlled it, uh, industry, so yeah, that pretty much canceled that for the time being. Now I could go outside my area and just essentially move somewhere while I do the flight training, but I just have to find a place that's down with it. Palisa 61 tipped $15. Thank you. In honor of the last stamp day. <laughs> Galita, thank you for the $15. Bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I like. <laughs> and I don't like Star Wars. <laughs> Thank you very much. Got the remaining stamps, so we got four more to go. We should get them all today. So this will probably be the final day of stamping today. It's kind of a big thing. We still have to ride back to Seoul after that to get my gold medal, but. Bicycle 
<laughs> this guy's like, why is this guy ringing his bell? Politely ignore weirdness. Yeah, <laughs> someone was saying that yesterday from watching like EXPC. And I learned that Koreans, uh, <laughs> in general, will politely ignore you if you're being weird and give you a wide berth. Did you know that <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Definitely one of the uh, the classics from our the bicycle era of Hitch. Again, Toledo, thanks for the banger. Thanks for the team, I uh, appreciate it. And thanks for the $15. Oh my lord, all right. Oh, uh, the red trail. <laughs> the red trails are always rough. Oh, uh, Especially when they're like going up or down, I don't know why, but whenever they like pave them, if there's, if there's any angle to the path, it's just, it gives up. Can you clearly see the jets? Uh, yeah, I can see them. They're just kind of like passing me straight on my left, it's going uh, parallel to my direction the opposite way. It's nice to see the blue sky. Okay, I have seen a lot of bikes out today. And it must be because we're like just south of Guangzhou now. Which is, I think people said a million, or a city of like 1.5 million or something like that. So that would make sense. Oh, two jets taking off in formation. That's kind of cool. in my head. 
by an event of your helmet. I think these are, um, like jet trainers. I don't know what Korea uses. I don't think those are like, like active, um, like operations military. I don't, yeah. Blue Angels. Uh, I, I don't think the Blue Angels are here. Some cyclists here. Yeah, we're just outside a big city, so if that makes sense. Hey, we can learn to ride our bike here. Let's take a little stop. All right, guys, we gotta keep it between the white lines on this course. This is the direction of, of flow. Let's go. Tight 90 degree. Tight 90 degree. Tight 90 degree. Tight 90 degree. <laughs> We have to hit the finish line. There actually is a finish line. We just took the way that gives us a whole circuit. <laughs> okay, let's go. Masuk just resubscribed for seven months. Type 90 and thank you for streaming. We got Miss Mouse with the seven month resub. Type 90, thanks for streaming. <laughs> thanks for subbing. Thanks for traveling with me. Thanks for the seven month resub. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, on the road again. Well, bike path again. I'm guessing those Pops or uh, bird control at the airport. Up. 
So that's from one side, and I'm just like, what's this weird shiny ball thing? But on this side, it's a, it's it, it's a, a bench. Does anyone see Men in Black? Twenty-five dollars. Thank you. Okay, really, last one this time. You know, like the uh, the test scene they do to like see if they're gonna be uh, led into Men in Black, and they all sit in these really awkward egg-shaped chairs. <laughs> Yeah, they're as awkward as they seem. No, oh, it spins. <laughs> the ones in Men in Black didn't spin like this. I wasn't expecting the spin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, the weave. Thank you for the $25. Sorry, I got distracted by a chair. I ah, appreciate it. Let's keep her riding with the guitar tunes. sat in the spinny, shiny egg chair. Uh, T50, TA50, Golden Eagle, South Korea, trainer deck. Okay. I feel like that's what they were using. Five subs to the community. Whoa. We got Migukin with the five gifted subs. Thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate it if you give the sub up to Twitch Bikers. It's very kind of you. There's another one of what we think are the trainer jets. Might have actually been able to ever so slightly see that one. <laughs> Or this one. One's coming in right in front of us. Rainbow pants. I was just talking about you the other day. <laughs> I think yesterday. There's that red shirt that you patched a hole in. It's got two more holes. <laughs> I need to come back to Winnipeg. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Cool scene, we got this narrow bridge, we got cherry blossoms there, we got a jet flying right in front of us. <laughs> nice.
Yeah, let me check on that, make sure I'm actually, yeah. Uh, this is correct. Yeah, it is. All right. No rails, and there wasn't even, was not even a sign to tell me to not fall into the water on my bike. Uh, but the weave thanks again for the, uh, all the, uh, the tunes this morning. Anonymous just gifted five subs Whoa. to the community. You know, <laughs> a minute we have as much subs as I got in the entirety of yesterday. Uh, Anonymous, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. You were gifted a sub up to the Twitch bikers. Holy. That's 10, 10 dingers. For 10 subs. Thank you very much. Wodang 13 shared 100 bits. And we got Wodang with the 100 bits. Thank you very much for the bits. <laughs> <laughs> the things are back. I only use them when I'm like on more open trails and stuff like that. If I'm in city infrastructure with a bunch of people around, you know, ringing your bike bell is, is an actual, it means something. It's like honking your horn. <laughs> if you're doing a driving stream and you honk for every sub, it would be like, well, if you're in India, it's probably fine. Oh. Right over top of us. Oh yeah. And non, with a fifteen dollar donation. We got an anonymous donation as well. I was going crazy this morning. Gamer music. Coming to the jet noise. Well, I'm guessing the airport's been here a very long time, probably before most people lived here. But you get used to it. Oh yeah. I'm from a an Air Force town in Canada, and like the flight operations usually aren't as active as they are here. But yeah, you know, got lots of military operations around. But uh, there's a lot of places where people have a tendency to like, they move somewhere already knowing that there's some kind of noise pollution. Like, I think it was like in, it was in like Austin, Texas or something like that. There's like some like popular like bar area where there's lots of live music playing and stuff like that. And then when Austin became like expensive, a lot of like rich people moved in there and then started complaining about the sound of live music being played. Once it got dark in the evening, suddenly so started lobbying to like cancel live music. It's like, well, when you moved into that area, <laughs> it had already been the live music district for decades. And then you're gonna complain about it? You shouldn't have moved there then. It'd be the same concept with the airport. If you don't want to hear planes, don't live next to an airport.
Comes background sound, not noise. Yeah, exactly. Anything around all the time just becomes normalized. Like when we go into like a, a busy McDonald's and there's all these alarms going off for like timers for the deep fryers and stuff like that. Um, everyone's just like, wow, this is so annoying. How could you work here? Well, <laughs> if you're there 40 hours a week, you will stop to not even, you're stuck to not even hear them. Trains pass by place several times a day. I didn't notice them anymore. See, exactly. Now that's a freight train. <laughs> freight trains are freaking loud. High pitch noise like small dog or baby cries are hard. Yeah, actually, I'm the same. I find dog barks just really grating in general because it's like it's fairly constant, but it's at like a different tone. And you know, like a dripping faucet usually has like the same kind of frequency, it's like dun dun dun. But it's something that's just like like a cacophony of just different barks at different times at different levels and then yeah baby baby's crying is well don't send me that <laughs> i feel that that way sometimes too kid all right Now you tell me to not fall in the water. I guess you are getting rid of the railing this time, actually. That's the time they only put um, the railing, or those signs that are like, don't ride your bike into the water, in places with like a big five foot high metal railing that makes it like extremely difficult to ride your bike into the water. light cyclist. Oh, this is a multi-use path, so it's meant to be used by pedestrians and cyclists. I don't think it is uh, necessary to be all angry. Like, we'll make fun of, like, how, like, the lack of situational awareness that some people have, but still. It's for bikes and pedestrians. It's my responsibility as the faster traffic here to do so responsibly. So I will do that. It's very see any Koreans like using a bike bell though. They don't really seem to do that. I think I've only seen one guy who was using it very like, he was using it a lot. Guy liked his bell. Where are you, Gwangju, South Korea? I think it's gonna be a nice night. Yeah, I had a good camp spot. It was quiet, it's nice. Actually, it was quiet and nice until around 3 a.m. Some very serious sounding Korean man was playing like an automated, sounded like a warning message over a loudspeaker. And I was camped like just downstream from a, a weir, like a dam. Um, I didn't recall how high like how close to the, the river flow levels I was where I was camping. So I'm like, well, I better go like at least check and make sure I'm not at risk for getting washed away if they're releasing 
water from the dam. Um, so I got up and I was way, 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 way high above the river level. So I'm like, no, I'm going back to bed. And I didn't get washed away by a flood, so that was good. That's why that was a good night. <laughs> Caliter 61 tipped $20. Whoa. Thank you. Galita. Thanks for another $20. I appreciate it. What's it going to be? Where's the tunes? Got to be here somewhere. There we go. Da ding, ding, ding. Usually it plays a little faster than that, so I'm like, where is it? That's the best When the lady down to die Going up to the spirit in the sky <laughs> Going up to the spirit in the sky Spirit in the sky When I die Ugh, you're off road This got to be my favorite objectively like religious song. <laughs> oh, I lost my internet. This might be sure might crash a little bit. Internet for my phone. Oh my god, this <laughs> just <sighs> Oh no, it's back. All right.
All right, well, Kalita, thank you very much. For the $20 in the tunes. Good tunes, lots of tunes this morning. Thank you. Gold medal, real gold. I'm very surprised at how many people are asking about the gold content of the gold medal. <laughs> Even Olympic gold medals aren't, well, they're plated. They have a heavy, heavy plating of gold, but they're actually silver. You don't really get gold medals made out of gold anymore. I don't know what the metal composition is, but it's not going to be made of pure gold. Spend for damn food and drinks. It's pretty much my main expense, my only expense, unless we're taking a motel day. Um, but it varies greatly. I just kind of eat snacks from convenience stores throughout the day, but I don't know how much that usually costs. Um, and then we do a restaurant at the end of the day to charge and then also eat. Um, I, I, I couldn't really give you a good number though. Like last night's dinner was more expensive because we had eel, grilled eel. Grilled eel is more expensive. If we go out for something more simple like fried chicken, then that'll be a little cheaper. I sell medals for profit. Well, people sell their like Olympic medals sometimes. They have value. This one is not bad. Ah. Only for Bitcoin. I think when Bitcoin was a lot cheaper, like someone like custom made a few Bitcoin coins. Each one was one Bitcoin. Day thirteen of our Korean bike tour wrecking with oh, some great tunes for sure. If these tunes can't motivate you, then don't know what you're into. Just join <laughs> in the daily miles grind. Each day something new we each find. Ah, oh, those are hot. It's good to see. You. I like that one. That was a good one. Ah. <sighs> You just keep it so relevant to what's going on. I know that's the point, but <laughs> I'm not clever enough to do that. Thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you for the daily poetry. Uh, we're probably not... I think just on the north end of Guangzhou is where our next stamp is, so we're probably not too, too far from that. I have a little look-see here. Mm, we're not too far. Probably. No, it's probably still like six, seven kilometers or something like that. Maybe even eight. I don't know. Just eyeballing it. No, not the middle. Looks like a bike lane is in the legal in these parts. Uh, on these actual bike paths, there'll be signs that have like a no motorcycle sign. So you're not supposed to. People ride mopeds on here occasionally. I don't think they're supposed to, but they do. 
Although you don't see it all the time. Things where some part of the roads are ate up because of a moped? No, a moped wouldn't shoot asphalt that much. Lost my chat again. So we'll see if it comes back. No, I'll pull over in a little bit here. Uh -oh, so it's going. All right. They were in the Roaring Twenties. I don't know if we've yet to see if these are Roaring Twenties or not. They've been really freaking weird though. Music death dropped heart. Like you like the music? I don't know if we're using slang. Two have been through on the strip. I've only had one flat, so just one. Hours you sleep. Oh, I try to get my eight in. Like I ended the stream at um, what was it? Close to nine, just before nine-ish. Um, I was trying to sleep by like ten thirty. It was up just after six. Started the stream at seven. It all works out, but pretty much all my waking hours are are live, and anytime I'm not live, I'm pretty much sleeping. to retire actually it'll make it more puncture resistant but like i get a puncture once every like 2,000 kilometers like it's not really a, a huge deterrent like we get them and you know they're annoying but it just doesn't happen much Thor Eve cheered 200 bits. This Justin Us 4 HWKS is an old poet and he don't know it. <laughs> this Osrox is an old poet and he don't know it. I think he's come to accept his status of uh, the official channel poet. I 
I think it started pretty spontaneously. He just ran with did some poetry and we all liked it. And then it became a daily thing. But he know it now. <laughs> we all want that poetry. Thank you for the 200 bits. Chairs. Now, compared to yesterday, most of the bike paths we were on had like no one on them. For most of the day, once we left Mokpo. And there's some good trails out there too. Like when we were trying to set up the drone, I think like one bike rode past, and we were just like standing there for 30 minutes <laughs> trying to get the drone set up. I'm feeling excited with meeting people at travel. I'm probably excited myself. I didn't leave my hometown without feeling home drawn. Power anxiety kicking in. Uh, like, yeah, and especially when I started traveling. I was a pretty quiet kid growing up, so. Uh, like hitchhiking, standing on the side of the road and getting in a stranger's car was socially a, a stressful thing for me. But uh, I got pretty used to it. We say it's like exposure therapy. It was good practice just practicing having conversations with people as that's what I was doing all day when hitchhiking. Um, so yes, but like now after 10 years of traveling, that's the main thing I've been doing with my adult life. It's not so much, you yeah. Just cause it's all I'm doing. Humans are adaptable, we adapt to our environment. My environment is that of someone on the go meeting random people, never staying still. Look at that tent. I don't think they slept there. It's probably just a day tent. Maybe they did though. <laughs> that would be that'd be pretty uh, blatant camping in public. Right in front of all these block apartments. This path is pretty nice. A little drink. Hold on. I have the clearance for this. <laughs> Am I gonna like high center on these? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm big to get. Am I gonna like, hit my. No, I think we're good. I only scuffed my pedal once. 
Sorry, I had to test it. It's important. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not sure it's too warm. I'm going to take my jacket off. Oh, this was open. I don't know if there's anything in there that I could have lost. That was the actual bike shot. Now it's a little like obstacle y mogul course thing for bikes. Alright, get a little snack bag going. Which one do I want? Peach squares, grapefruits, or kiwis. Oh, these little kiwis, they're good. What, writing a book? Uh, it comes up occasionally. I'm a very poor writer. It's not to say it's not like it's a learnable skill that um, doesn't come naturally to me. Or you could, you know, have a someone who is good at writing help. But like, I, don't, I just don't know when this does come up. I'm like, I don't know what I'd write about. Like clearly, you'd be like, oh, of course, about the hitchhiking and the traveling and stuff. I'm like, but what about it? What am I trying to say? What is the point of it? Ghost Rider? Well, it's only a Ghost Rider if they're not named, right? It would just be Rider if they are named. Talk about the times around them. So it's just a collection of stories. And it can be that, I just don't know, like. <laughs> also, I don't take very many pictures, so. We mostly screen grabs in the stream, which doesn't look good on a book. Last new stamp day? Yeah, it should be. We'll have our first one coming up here pretty soon. 
Well, why'd you tell me to get off the trail? No, no, it has damn young dang on the trail. That's silly. I guess I'll get back on the trail then. Oh no, I'll stay up here for a bit. Let's try the... It's kind of getting an elevated view from these dike roads. Doesn't look busy. Get the metal hitch before going home. That's the plan. I think if you... Like you can mail in your passport and they'll verify it and then mail the award to you. But I think... I think it's only for Korea though. They won't mail it internationally. But I think if you go there in person... You can, uh, we'll get it ready for you on site. The driving range. Do some golf. That's some ch I don't think I've swung a golf club since I was a kid. Well, mini golf, yes. Actual golf, no. See the eclipse? Eclipse didn't exist in Korea. Eclipse followed a very specific, fairly narrow path. Narrow when you're looking at the entirety of the world, so. It's, one of the, it's three floors of driving range. Boardwalks. I like boardwalks. Never mind. We're going on there. You're the first international person to complete Grand Slam. I'm not. <laughs> In fact, where I got a lot of my information from, a website called KoreaByBike.com. I'm pretty sure it's, I think it's a foreigner that has toured extensively in Korea and made a whole website about it. So. It's really hard to be the first to do something. Um, you know, it's all been done before. Which is all, you know, it's a good song. Uh, also, it's pretty true. What you can do for the first time is the first person to like live stream it. So, I'll probably have been the first person to live stream the whole Grand Slam bike tour. But definitely not the first person to do it. Or it's foreigner person to do it. But I, I do think it's a little, like, a little bit, it, it's somehow like, kind of unknown in the touring world but it's like it's really nice it's, it's good touring it's fun touring um the infrastructure is nice and then when you're touring food is an important thing food in korea is amazing Yeah, there's another driving range. Another one. All right. Must be... Yeah, we're getting a bit closer to our first stamp of the day. 85th in total. Just a few more kilometers. Remember the oil machine? I haven't yet. Maybe I will when I get my stamp. Couches. Don't see any couches.
lost my chat. It's back. Well, I seem to be getting out of the busier Guangzhou area, so probably not too long before we can test out the drone again, but we're going to have that annoying audio system unless I can find a fix for it. But we won't find a total fix without doing some, like, server-side stuff, or it might even have to be, like, a Bellabox side fix. But I only something I can do, the server or Bellabox one. for a bit. I saw him uh, <laughs> like two weeks ago in Seoul. I'm gonna see if he's still in town and maybe see if we can meet up when I'm back in Seoul in a few days here. Oh, they're flying an RC plane up there. Guys are ready to go fast. Put the afterburner on, guys. <laughs> Give her. Not race. Could be. Can make a race. Oh my god, transition. Las Vegas is an RC airport. That would be cool to hang out at. Ah. What song was that? This actor on going through has like some of the roughest bridge transitions anywhere we've had in Korea. Backwards on the trail back to Seoul, take a different route back. Well, kind of where we get our last stamp today, we'll be able to follow a path for like a little bit further, but then we're kind of off route for a while. Um, I'll have to look at my options for how to get back to Seoul. Like, what would be a good bike route? So I'm not exactly sure yet. You know, we can just like easily get back on the, the main Seoul de Busan main bike route, or we will be taking the alternative route. Like someone using their bath. Oh, you got some orderly pannier there too. Very nice. Any couches? It's my new thing. I'm looking, looking for chairs or couches under bridges in Korea. They seem to like to do that.
Stage for sub gear, short while to finish bike for today. Well, I still have like 400 kilometers of riding to get back to Seoul from where I got my final stamp. So technically the, you know, all the stamping will be done today, but the touring won't be because I'll just be randomly in the kind of southeastern South Korea and I can't technically finish until I get my passport all certified and get my gold medal, so. Hello from Finland. Hello from South Korea. I've been meaning to go to Finland for years and I haven't been yet. Hopefully soon. I've got some uh, equipment in Tromsø, Norway, so I might pick up my, it's a, a bicycle trailer with a solar panel on it. Might pick that up from uh, Tromsø and then maybe ride down through Finland or something. I don't know why, but I just, I like hanging out in northern places, it seems. I'm from Canada. Some of my favorite places to be in Europe are, like, I've been, like, Norway and Sweden and stuff like that. Scotland. I'm working in Shetland Island and stuff like that. So we gotta do Finland at some point, too. Alright, we're almost at certification time. I was pretty excited to make this look animated right now. Maybe it is. It's all just been a big ruse and illusion. I don't even know how to ride a bicycle. It's all a studio. A whole team of VFX artists. Creating live scenes. All right, somewhere up here is our stamp, our certification center. Okay, still another couple hundred meters. Bump, bump, bump. Appears to be snowing cherry blossoms. So I'm pretty sure SD the baby paid actor can do it, say that they're legit. 
feel like I'd be a really bad actor. Whenever I've tried to like record something for a video, rather than just doing everything live, I feel like I really struggle to not be all stiff and wooden in my delivery. Anyway, here it is. It's occupied. I'll do this, show the stamp passport here. Okay. So, for the past 13 days on this trip and in total between the two kind of parts of this trip, what was it 32 days in total? We've been filling out this bicycle passport, Korea's cross-country cycling road tour passport, which has been issued to me by the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Interior Safety. This is a government sanctioned bike tour. In order to get this passport, I had to go to a government office, give them my passport, and this is connected to it. There's like a serial number and a barcode in there. That's all connected to my passport. It's very official. Anyway, how this works is spread throughout the entire country here are these red phone booth looking things. Here's one right there. Well, we're saying there's 88 of them, but a couple of them are duplicates on this passport. So there's like probably 85 or something like that of these uh, bike certification centers. And on each one, there's a custom stamp and each of those custom stamps correlates to a specific spot in this passport. This is the page we're on right now. This page to start on. Each of these page, pages filled with stamps from all over the country. From north, west to southeast, up the east coast, northeast, southwest coast, and Jeju. Been around. Right, this should be Damyang Bamboo Forest. Where's the bamboo? Hopefully this is the right one. <laughs> Yeah, Damyang Bamboo Forest. There's a distinct lack of bamboo at this bamboo forest. Kind of want a refund. I'm going to see if the, the ink pad works in there. Or if I have to get my own ink pad. It's quite warm out today. I think I'm going to go down to shorts and take my socks off. Okay. Theoretically, it's self-inking. Legible. Also, yeah. Dam Yang Gang Bamboo Forest, Four Rivers. Nice. Couldn't get it right on the standpoint because it's right at the kind of center of the passport. But anyway, next one is Meta Sequoia Road. Sequoia. They got sequoia trees. Anyway, I'm so excited about this stamp, I'm going to go take my pants off.
It's your favorite stamp. Um, there's this big one I got at one of the moderate size climbs here that isn't even official on the thing. Like it's, you don't have to have it to complete the passport, but it's just this big circle one and it makes that one page look cool. Actually, I can show you. There, let's find her. Yeah. This one, this big one. So we got all these like small stamps on here and this one just has like this nice punk and it's got a nice mountain and river scene on there. So, I think I like it. Title updated? Uh, probably not. Do we have a mod here that can do titles? How many stamps do you have left? Three to fill out that entire passport. Technically, two new ones, but then we have to do um, redo one because for some reason they put it on two pages, even though it, there's no logical reason to have it on both those pages, but eh, it's fine. Oh, I should probably, I'm taking my pants off, I should put sunscreen on. UV's probably pretty high today. shorts on. <laughs> What's up with that? As soon as I took my pants off, the dude walks away. I thought we were friends. <laughs> That's what friends do, right? Screen. Yeah. So I got pasty legs. If I was riding all summer, then I'd be all super dark and tan. I should still wear it every day, but I just, you know, I don't burn very quickly if I've been riding all day. Or riding all summer, rather. It's like, I still have my foot tan lines, but they're not super strong right now, which is sad. So definitely got a sunscreen up the, the feet. I think when I checked my phone today, it said the high was gonna be 22 or something. That's toasty. Thanks, Steve. Just think I'm gonna leave. On the contrary, I actually don't get that super sweaty feet because I'm <laughs> wearing sandals, so my feet are actually like not locked into sweaty shoes all day. They get good breathability.
Au contraire. shirtless. I wonder if I'd get in trouble from Twitch if I had like my camera angle and I was just shirtless all day. There's been times where I've been tempted, where it's been hot enough, where I'm just like, <laughs> could really use all the airflow just whisking all the sweat away, but I haven't. Nineteen Z warm? It is. It's room temperature out. That's warm. Oh, recumbent. I've seen a few recumbents. Maybe it's the same recumbent. I'll try and show you. I'll probably be here a moment while he's stamping. This thing looks fast, too. Yeah, I'm sure this is fine. Well, I think you can get in trouble, like if you're just a dude and you're streaming shirtless behind your computer, which is determined that that's not a context where it makes sense to be shirtless. Or I think Twitch calls it like in swimming attire kind of thing. So you can only really wear like less clothes situations if you're in a situation where it makes sense to wear less clothes, like you're actually at a beach. Hence the entire pools, beaches, and hot tub category. Um, Good company. Well, didn't they just get rid of the butt cams? Those are now a thing of the past, technically. What are you doing? Taking a break? Uh, putting sunscreen. But I stopped here because this is one of my bike certification centers where we can uh, fill out my bicycle passport here in Korea. We're almost done. Just got three more stamps. And we're done. Is this dead too? No, there's just no nothing plugged into it. What do you got? Thirty-three. Okay. chain on it. Let's do that real quick. Uh, that's in that pan here. Thanks for the reminder. Chain's starting to sound a little rough. Just a smidge. I can check those shirtless momentarily. But I, but I guess like, you know, it's not like a feature of the stream is him just hanging out shirtless. It's just like he rips his shirt. What's the trigger? Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. $100 donation or something like that? Wipe down. He's a little crusty looking. Okay. 
So we're gonna use like a brush to kind of like properly brush it out, but I don't have one. it up enough and then let's put some oil on it. Just run it for a little bit. Get the oil all up in that business. I think I need a new chain here pretty soon. wipe off some of the excess. Okay. Should be good. That should sound a lot better now. It's just basic bike maintenance. Chain needs oil. Chain is now oiled. Oh, we're The last four stamps. We actually only have three left because we just got stamped here. Yeah, that's the checkpoint here. Mm. Does the title still say um, 84? I'm going to change the title real quick here. Where are we at? On the title. Yeah. <laughs> A cherry blossom flew into my snack bag of gummy candies. <laughs> so I ate one. Yes? Okay, I'll change the title. 
So three more. Um, I actually don't know. It's not that far. We'll finish it today. 85. Save. Okay. Carrying on. Well, I'm sunscreened up. I'm wearing bike shorts. I don't really... Maybe I got down to shorts like one other time since I've been back. I must have been wearing pants. All right. Chain sounds much better now. Oh, so smooth, so quiet. We are, we're at the last of the cherry blossoms. Most of the petals are falling off now, so. Still pretty though, and it's like snowing cherry blossoms, which is nice. A nice trail. Dogs taking a poop. This is lovely. <laughs> this is a 32 in Uh Because I was here doing the Grand Slam bike tour in December, but we called it off just before Christmas time so I could go home for Christmas. And because the weather was crap, I was going to do it through Christmas and just push through to the new year and finish it. But uh, the weather got really bad. So in, in total, so the 13 days of this trip plus the 19 days um, that we did in November, December, uh, up to 32 days total of doing this Grand Slam tour. Oh, that is much better. Yeah. I guess today it was actually fairly warm, but yeah, it was very much overcast and kind of gloomy looking. It's looking good today. Yeah, I forecast the high is like 22 or something. Oh, you're right today. Well, we'll get all the four stamps. I think I'll put us in the 70-ish to 80-ish range. Um, I don't know exactly though. And then we'll see, because um, I, I, once I get all the stamps, I still have to ride back to Seoul, which is, we're pretty much far south and we need to go, well, northeast. To get there, so, and it's like several hundred kilometers. Yeah, we're just outside Gwangju, so that'll be our our weather station. What does it say right now? 14? I think it's more than 14. Huh? I don't know. It feels like more than 14. I mean, it's just because the sun's out.
Dude's actually got a saxophone and is gonna <laughs> play it under the bridge. Impromptu sax concert. Underneath bridges are an interesting place in Korea. They do lots of things. Mostly they put couches and hang out there apparently, but apparently they play the saxophone too. Until the next camp. Um, I forgot to read how far between this, these two. I think it's in the 20 ish kilometer range. We just had left our last stop, stamp checkpoint. So, depends on my pace and if we're stopping. Or if we like stop and pull up the drone or something like that. This location will be difficult with uh, all these bare trees. The uh, drone would be very interested in smashing into one of them. Stamps yet? We just got one. First of the day, three to go. Like two new ones, and then one that we just have to redo for completionist sake. Short one to the next, and then 15 kilometers to the last. Yeah, look at us go. Yeah, we'll finish for sure in a reasonable amount of time. Nice. Is knee feeling? Uh, today it's feeling good. No issues today, knee wise. It's the drone location. These trees on the left here are going to be annoying, but. Potentially soon here, actually. These elevated dikes are good spots to use them, but it can be trees, it's just the ones without leaves on them. It's really hard for the uh, obstacle avoidance on the drone to, to notice, to pick up. And when it's in follow me mode, it kind of like is flying based on its own interpretation. Uh, oh, my speaker turned off. Let me replay it. Os 4 HWKS cheered 100 bits. Hey, do you know where Moose Joy is? About eight feet from Moose Butt. <laughs> A Canadian joke. I like it. Moose Jaw is a city in Canada. So, that wouldn't make any sense if you didn't know what Moose Jaw was. Alright, <laughs> thank you for the 100 bits. Odds for Hogs are going from poetry to comedy. You been to Moose Jaw? What do you think? <laughs> Was it thrilling? Canadian joke? You mean poutine? Canadian gravy is too water for my opinion. Where do you have your poutine? Who's your poutine guy? I gotta hook you up with my poutine guy. A and W? I hope not. 
It was sad. Sometimes I end up, you know, upgrading my McDonald's fries to McDonald's poutine. Good time for biking in Japan. Have you done before? Well, it's spring, so it's a very popular season for all kinds of travel in Japan. It's Sakura season. Sakura? Sakura? Anyway, cherry blossom season. Well, now it's kind of probably past. Well, maybe in like Hokkaido and stuff like that. It's still coming in. Actually, I don't know. Anyone know what the current state of the cherry blossoms in uh, Japan are? Yeah, Japan, like Korea, is really hot and humid in the summer. So spring and fall are probably like the best times to one travel if you bits. I was away don't like melting. One night. I went to find some accommodation. I knocked on the door of a bed and breakfast. A lady opened the window and said, what do you want? I said, I want to stay here. She said, well, stay there then. And shut the window. Hold up. Young Shengang Bicycle Path. I have to check this. Kosher bacon jam and cheered 100 oh, bits. Sorry. Hook me up with your poop. <laughs> I'll your home ten day. I'm down to be corrected. I've had poutine across the providences and not had a good one yet. Please help. Have you been in Quebec? <laughs> That's where it's from, right? Um, I had lots of good poutine when I was cycling across Canada. So I gotta re-listen to, I assume there's a joke there, but I was missing it because I was trying to navigate. That's cool. Yeah, we might almost be in drone time, hopefully. It's all about the gravy. Oh, the cheese curds are very important. Fresh cheese curds really, yeah, are critical to the to the poutine. And cheese curds are like like a young, fresh treat cheese, and uh, they don't stay fresh for very long. I think that's the hardest part of poutine. Actually, is sourcing like proper fresh cheese curds. Um, okay, one second, let me get up here and I'll look at the other bits. Combination knocking door, bed, breakfast. I went and said, What do you want? I said, I want to stay here. She said, Well, stay there then. I shut the window. Okay, yeah, okay, I like it. This is the comedy hour. Oh, we go, wait, yeah, this way. Yeah, okay. Ooh, bamboo. Is this the bamboo forest that was foretold? Our last stamp checkpoint was something bamboo forest, and I couldn't see any bamboo anywhere around. Uh, that trip was envious. Yeah, but it was like, I wasn't like, well, I did in like Montreal and stuff like that. I, I tried like one of the famous poutine places, but I didn't think it really hit any harder than the uh, random roadside poutineries on the side of the road spread out throughout Quebec. So those ones are pretty stellar. But yeah, if you're talking my hometown, like Comox Valley hometown, I don't know of any good poutine places there. BC isn't really the best poutine place. Like, then when I went to college, the only like poutine place around was like 
a chain called like Smoke Spoutinery. It was mostly used as the drunk eating spot because, you know, <laughs> some boutine after a night of drinking was, uh, well, hit the spot. I, I can't think of anywhere on Vancouver Island, even in like Victoria, where I'd be like, you've got to try their poutine. Not really a poutine place. I wonder how the drum would handle this kind of path. It's probably not well, like this is a lot of tree cover. We get it out on my left side, it could be tracking me facing in. a high risk of it smacking something. Damien Bamboo is 14 kilometers more though. Well, why was that checkpoint called Dam... Was it Damien something? Bamboo thing? I even checked on my map to double confirm because I'm like, <laughs> it's called Bamboo Forest, but there's a distinct lack of bamboo visible from here. There's lots of like caterpillars all on the path, roaming around, risking life and limb to walk somewhere. Last checkpoint Damien Bam before? Oh, is it? Okay. Ooh, some rough looking red path. Actually, it wasn't even particularly rough, it just looks beat up. You don't see many cars on here, but I guess they do exist. Got thumbs up from them. This could be a cool one. Joan should be able to handle this channel. Although it would be beeping like crazy. I'm pretty sure there's a way to turn the beeps off though for obstacle avoidance. What do we got for paths coming up through here? I'll just follow this river for a bit. Eventually cross a bridge. Because I could have it up like close behind me, but if I put it to the far destination, it might be high enough that you can see both sides plus the kind of bamboo forest valley. Yeah, it doesn't look like it goes on for very long. Right.
Kalita 61 tip $25. Thank you. Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> We're road tripping now. Go eat it. Thanks for the $25. I appreciate it. There's one day and the next day gone. Sometimes you bend, sometimes you stand, sometimes you turn your back to the wind. With the world outside the dark and door, where blues won't harm you anymore. With the brave I free and love your soul, come ride with me to the distant show. We won't be here as a team. Break down the garden gate. There's not much time for today. Life is a highway, I want to ride it all night long. If you're going my way, I want to drive it all night long. I wanna ride it all night long. If you're going my way, I wanna drive it all night long. Maybe the old classic split, but. <laughs> Which way? You can go either way, but... Oh my god. She's bumpy, ladies and gentlemen. Good camping out here too. I see those like steep climbs, the bike that was in front of me, he had to walk up because it's like a lot of people aren't ready for those random short steep climbs. Again, Kalita, thank you very much for the, the tunes, the jams. It's a good one. one. They have given 52 gift subs in the channel. Mitchie, thanks for the gifted sub. I appreciate it. Let's get 
I was leaving streaming. So thanks for traveling with me. Let's go. There's a nice path too. Let's see. Oh, we crossed a bridge here soon. I'm like, this would be a good spot to fly. Could have it out on my side, facing the river across. This is we got like, you know, 20 minutes of decent droneism. But since we're crossing a bridge, it'll be, you know, with car traffic and all that jazz. Flat. I can only dream of that. Hey, <laughs> I like climbing though. I'm a fan. It just so happens that even though Korea is very hilly, most of the paths follow uh, river valleys, and you know, since it's following the river valley, it stays relatively flat. We just random like short sleep climbs to get on and off of these little bikes. Seems to be staying up here. I guess I'll stay up here. Wait, we're not crossing a bridge? No, I guess we weren't. We're heading through a town relatively soon. In any of your channel travels, wild animals. Like, have I seen wild animals? Yeah. I have much problems with them? Not usually. Except for one bear in Ontario, Canada, stole a cherry strudel from my pioneer when I was camped out there. Still annoyed about that. Here's the best cycling routes in the world. As far as just like completed cycling infrastructure, it's gonna be hard to beat somewhere like the Netherlands. If you're following an official route in Korea, it can be like beautiful infrastructure. But once you get off the official route, it like, yeah. There aren't bike paths everywhere. And the Netherlands like, no matter where you're going, no matter what road you're on, there's pretty much gonna be a separated bike path that you can ride on, so it's just, the infrastructure there is constant. that little machine. It's 
two bike paths. Yeah, it seems to be. So one down there will be like bikes only. This one is a bike path, as you see by the like the yellow line in the middle. It's separated bike directions. But this will also be used by vehicles as a, like a farm access road. So you'll occasionally see a vehicle on here. There won't be much, but it'll be the occasional car. Gorgeous views. Yeah, these elevated dike roads are, are nice. You kind of get a good view of like kind of both sides of how things, this kind of river valleys work. There's like an elevated dike protecting on the farmland, and then beyond the farmland, the towns and stuff like that off to the side. So you can see the river on one side, farmland on the other, and uh, the towns that we are passing through them over there as well. I wish I was down there. They got a nice boardwalk. So now we can go down. Is it worth it at this point? We can try it out. Stop? Why are you telling me to stop? Where's our music? Well, I don't think anyone did media share. Why would I stop? Twitches? Twitches what? Hmm. What's that? Oh, I should have maybe tried to film, but now we're about to head into town here. 
along the river, but maybe after this next town will be a good spot. Ooh, more driving ranges, more golf. We seem to be in the golfing region, or at least the driving rain, range region of Korea. I feel like I haven't seen too many. We drove past two earlier. Here's another one. That's a soccer field. Uh, Well, the big like green netting is a, a driving range for golf. Um, but I don't know if there's some more sports fields around here. An anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to Edgin. Anonymous individual, thank you for the gifted sub. I had quite a few anonymous uh, gifted subs today. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of people just walk their bikes up the hills here. They're short, so and if you're not on a loaded touring bike, it feels fine to push a bike up a hill. There's a mountain bike, should have the gearing for it. You're a rad dude, thank you, Gorks. Uh, end of the bridge, so we're gonna pass through town now. Um, if we ride past the convenience store, I might just like get some chocolate. Well, actually, we haven't even eaten much today. I should get some kimbap and um, some chocolate milk and stuff, regardless. We just had the instant noodles of Snickers bar. I know piece of beef jerky. So yeah, maybe in town here. Forgot we didn't have a good breakfast. We'll see. Some expert in this. Maybe it is. What batteries could she use to support? Uh, I have like five like 100 watt hour batteries, but they're, they're different brands. There's two Anchor 737 batteries. Well, I guess those are like 88 watt hours. Um, there's into your super tank. Uh, I forget what the other, there's another anchor battery. I forget the model of it. Six 
this thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a mishmash. I try different batteries out all the time. And, yeah, I like some and others, but right now I'm noticing most of these batteries are a bit older and they're degrading and their capacity has uh, decreased a lot since when they were newer. Okay, potentially up here I'll pull over and see what we have for this convenience store close by. There's a Seventh Day Adventist church. That doesn't help me right now. Dog. Look at how it goes faster when you run them below 20%. Yeah, like the, the, the hard power cycles, like up to 100, down to zero. That's, that's really hard wear and tear. It's running them low, but also running them up to 100%. Like if we were protecting them, we'd run it between like, yeah, 80 and 20%. But that ain't happening. We use full power cycles. I'm gonna pull over behind this vehicle. And look at what we got around here. And also look at my rear. Are we staying on this other river? We are, we're just following this river path. Let's see if there's what we got. Convenience store. Oh yeah, this doesn't really show me all the places. Yeah, I'll use like Naver maps or something. Mickey Space just gifted one subscription to the community. One second, who is that? No, I don't want to go down there. Searching for businesses in Korea's. I feel like all the map, like Google Maps doesn't work, so you can use like Naver Maps or Kakao Maps, but like they just don't really work very <laughs> well. I'm trying to look for something. Okay, who was that? That was Mickey. Um, Mick is space. Wait, M Mickey space. Mickey space with the gift of sub. Thank you for the gift of sub. So, Naver Map says there aren't convenience stores here, but there definitely are. I could probably search specific chains of convenience stores. You have a brown something going in your butt. It's there for a reason. I'm saving it for later. Um, cacao. Let's see. I right, could just ride through the streets and we'd inevitably find something. But I want to see. Uh, yeah, if we turn around to this more major street, we just go a couple blocks, there's 
Definitely one, but there might be one before that too. Okay, that's weird. Were they just talking about my bike seat, which is brown leather? Anyway. I thought maybe it was like a leaf or something like that. It was like stuck onto my butt. No, just <laughs> my entire saddle. So this is off route Burger Bear. We go to Burger Bear. Scouting, scouting, scouting. You want some gimba? And chocolate milk. But mostly gimba. Life is a highway. I want to ride it all night long. on a cookie. I could go for a cookie. We'll see if there's a good like pastry baked good section. Well there's a lot of bakery and cafes all over the place. Like Korea loves bakeries and cafes. Um, usually their bakery selection at the bakery cafes are very limited though. There's a lot of ones I've been to. I'm sure there's just some with lots of selection. I really liked when I was like touring in like Europe. I'd go to like Little and they have their whole like bakery. It's really cheap and like pretty decent. Just load up on pastries, donuts, just pastel bananas, croissant, pan au chocolat. Okay, maybe on this corner. There is a CU on one of these corners. Oh. For <laughs> Ferocious dog. How have we not seen a convenience store yet? This is like super major business district. The heck? Is it this corner? Yeah, it is. See you. stamp is it that one and then I have to redo one because they randomly put it on this page as well as another page so I could probably still get like the Grand Slam because I have technically stamped at that one but I haven't stamped that specific spot on this specific page I don't know why they, they've done that a couple times for stamps they'll put them on two pages like there's two spots to do it This has the things I want in my life. We'll find out. Put the parking brake on. Stops the bike from falling over. Okay, stay here. Oh, 
Oh yeah, we got the gimbal. We'll get a pork. I'll we'll get a This pork, a butter cream bread. What is that? I like butter. I like cream. Put it together. It must be good. Is there a cookie? Someone said cookie. Jammy soft cookies. Got it. Cookie acquired. Um. Oh, I left my wallet out there. It's usually in my pocket, but I took my pants off, so I don't have a pocket. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> gonna have to go get that. Um, oh, shop on them. Wait, no, that's chocolate coffee milk. That's not. It has both chocolate pieces and coffee pieces on it. That's different. Guess we'll try it. Got it. I might quickly sit here and eat one thing, or maybe some things. <laughs> I got, I got stuff. See the goodies? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so. So, so. so we got some strawberry milk, but then we also got, I couldn't find this chocolate milk, but it looks like coffee and chocolate, like a mocha milk, I don't know. I'm sure it's good. That'd be good. Uh, so, two coffee chocolate ones, one strawberry. I got two, Bops, one triangle variety and one not burrito variety. I got they just looks like basic buns, but it says butter cream bread. And these two butter cream breads have almost 500 calories, so it must be loaded with fat, which is great. Um, and Someone said cookie, so we got a cookie. We got a jammies soft cookies. Can we get some jammies in chat?
Oh. So let's try one of these mocha milks. No hot coffee? It's hot out. I don't want it. Look at me, I'm in, I'm in my shorts. I got no socks on. I'm just wearing my base layer. Got the sleeves rolled up. Two calories in the cookie? Let's see. They are usually good about showing the calorie. 298 calories, so just 300 calories in that little cookie. Wow, that is good. It's real good. Drink iced coffee in the dead of winter. You sound Korean. <laughs> Koreans drink iced coffee no matter the time of the year. They seem to prefer the cold. Okay, like, I, yeah, I, I can dig the, uh, okay, this is kind of nice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> now we're talking. Super comfy. <coughs> Actually, <coughs> yeah. I inhaled chocolate milk into my lungs. These plastic chairs are comfier than I thought they'd be. The backs have a little bit of give to it, so it's like, yeah. Drive my room to give up for 15, 20 seconds, so good one. You know, I never have. I haven't done that yet. I should give it a try. the food in Korea? Yeah, like, oh, the dinners are just, like, so good, and then compared to, like, my food options when I'm back home in Canada, like, how much it costs to go out and eat, and then how much stuff I get, and just the, the process of it, it's really nice eating in Korea. I think, including my drinks and stuff, like, I spent, like, $45 US or something like that. But it was like a really good dinner. Had a few beers. I even got like, you know, bought a, a stew at the end. But that's like a like a a very expensive dinner in Korea. Most of the time my dinners will be in like twenty thousand for a decent sized meal and a beer. Uh, one, so like $15. Three food price reasonable compared to Canada? Oh, for sure. This is 500 calories, nice. Uh, it was expensive to ship your bike. With Air Canada, it just costs $50 Canadian to bring your bike anywhere where you're flying with, uh, if your first carrier is Air Canada. So, very reasonable, actually. Uh, different airlines will have different prices and policies. Most airlines will take bikes, it's just a matter of um, cost, and then some are more picky about the dimensions of the bike box uh, and potentially the weight.
surprised when we're using Mothership Light. Yeah, no. It's a common question here. That's a good question. A lot of people assume that bringing your bike on a plane with you would cost a lot, or maybe you're not even allowed to, but it's a bit of a pain. Like, so what we have to do is like, we have to get the bike in something because we can't just have it loose. So I'll be going to like bike shops. Well, actually, flying out of Seoul is actually really nice. I don't have to go to a bike shop. All I have to do is show up to uh, Seoul Incheon International Airport and there's essentially a, a packing service and they'll make a box right on site that fits my bike perfectly and like wrap everything up with um, bubble wrap and stuff like that and put it all together for you. And it costs like the equivalent of like, I think 40 bucks Canadian, which you can do it cheaper if you find your own bike box for free. But that means I can just show up at the airport and give her. It's the only airport I've been to that has like custom boxing services like that. Size tires you're running? Uh, I'm usually like 40 mil, and I am on the front. The rears are actually 38 right now, because it's all I could find locally. Did you say the shipping cost with the airline? With Air Canada, $50 Canadian, so like 40 bucks US. And then, so for airlines I know, I think like American Airlines was just the price of a regular check bag. So there's no extra fee, just if you had included check baggage, it was covered. If you had to pay for an extra check bag, you paid standard rate, which I think was 40 something dollars US or something. Um, And the outlier I've flown with was um, Swiss Airlines. They wanted, the price depended on how far the total flight routing was, but they wanted like, I think it was like 300 Swiss francs because I was flying from Europe back to Canada, so that was like a long haul flight. But now we're talking like $450 Canadian or something like that. Anyway, I complained. Because... <laughs> The only Swiss flight I was catching was from um, from Barcelona to Zurich, which is a short, like, I don't know, within two hours, hour and a half, hour. Um, and then I was getting on an Air Canada flight in Zurich to Toronto, and then an Air Canada flight from Toronto to Vancouver, and then an Air Canada flight from Vancouver to Victoria. Um, but, you know. So most of it was with Air Canada, but because Swiss is your first carrier, they get to set the baggage fees, and they wanted to set the 300 Swiss francs baggage fees. Anyway, I negotiated down to like 100 Swiss francs, 100 euros-ish price point, which is good. It, like, it, it, at the end of the day, like that's my fault for not confirming. But yeah, yeah I haven't opened the butter bread yet. Oh, jeez. How much do you put into retirement funds? Not very much. I, uh, I went to school for accounting and finance, but I haven't really had the accounting or financial... Uh, I feel like when I started hitchhiking, that was me just like... I call it my early life crisis, where I'm like, I don't want to finish my bachelor's degree, get a job in accounting, and then feel like my entire life is planned. Like, I get a, my first real job, and then I get like car payments, a mortgage, a girlfriend becomes a wife, then I get kids and I can't do anything. This is how my brain was thinking. Um, so hitchhiking was like rejecting that lifestyle. Um, so including now, even though this is a, a business that I run essentially, I just don't really think of it from a business perspective to my own detriment.
but for fun I bought like a little bit of Bitcoin last fall and that's like doubled so that's cool <laughs> A small amount. Got any tans in this trip? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, not too much because I've been mostly covered up because it's been usually on the cooler side. But uh, a little bit. And like, I think this is only the second time I've gone down to full shorts. Uh, so my legs really have not gotten tan. But like, I essentially have a permanent foot tan from, from the cycling sandals I use. It just never goes away. Um, but it's at its most minimal. So the tan lines are still there, but they're faint. camping traveling around the country when I was little it's, it, it's it's really tough though like it really depends on the job like how much flexibility there is on to like take time to go on trips and then do you have enough income from that job to then take your family on these trips I feel like place where I'm from, how much you need to earn to have like the classic family of like mother, father, two kind of kids, a house, and take like a couple, you know, getaway vacations per year and not be stressed financially. It's like your income needs to be really freaking high. But he pays 2k a month for daycare? Jeez. It's a freaking lot. Jeez. Um. Oh. Just subscribe with Twitch Prime. Say, OZPC? OzPC? With the Prime, thank you very much. Welcome to the Twitch Baggers. Yeah, I just feel like so many things are just so expensive right now. Like, me and Sarah are like. I think we'd both really like to own a place rather than rent a place because at least when you own the place, when you're paying your, your rent, or once you own, in that case, a mortgage every month, you're at least paying into the principal on the property of which you own. When you're just paying rent, you're just throwing money into a void. And you get a place to live, but you <laughs> we travel, so we don't even live there very much. Um, but I think for our uses, we'd end up probably buying like a townhouse because uh, they're much lower maintenance and since we do travel a lot we wouldn't have to worry about like you know so much like property maintenance and stuff
Anyone else in storage unit when you went there rent it out? I like head. In my head what would be nice is like... So we buy a house with a proper legal suite. And maybe me and Sarah just leave in like the legal suite, like the basement or something like that, and then rent out the main floor or something. And that covers a good chunk of our mortgage. And then whoever we find for renters could do like just basic cut the grass, shovel the driveway kind of thing. But like that's four hundred thousand plus. Like and like a house with a with a proper like legal suite separate from the the main floor or something like that is a is a premium thing. So unless I renovate a place myself with zero renovation skills, so <laughs> probably not happening. I'd have to buy one. And the only reason I can say 400k is because, like, I live in the city that's, like, the cheapest city to live in, at least real estate-wise, in, Can in Canada, in Edmonton. Um, that same kind of house we're talking about in Victoria would be well over a million dollars. Lawns for living, 80 bucks per lawn per week here in Colorado. That's good money. See, my landlord, when I lived in Calgary back in 2016, 2017, he owned a, uh, a lawn care business. Just like a small lawn care business, and he'd hire like college students to go door to door selling lawn care services and then do the lawn care. And yeah, the margins are great. Yeah. Travel often is impossible to get a suburb a little further away. It's not possible or any cheaper. So our issue is we kind of need to be nearish a city, specifically an airport, that is like reasonable. It doesn't have to be the best airport in Canada. It just can't be like a real crappy one because uh, we got to fly out of there a lot. And if you're far away from the airport, it's, it's tough for us to get there. Um, there's a lot of times, even now, like I'll have to get, I had to get a taxi to the airport from where I live in, in South Edmonton. And the reason I live in South Edmonton is because it's close to the airport. So proximity to the airport is important for us. It's an efficient airport? Edmonton International Airport is okay. Yeah, well, it's an easy airport. Like, It never seems to be particularly busy. It's not particularly large, so you, you know, you're never far away from your gate. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm essentially always connecting through Calgary, Vancouver, or Toronto. A lot of taxes the mortgage is cheaper. Like I'm already in part of Edmonton, that's a bit cheaper. And it just so happens it's south of Edmonton. Which is where the airport is. So. so we we kinda did that because so what me and Sarah pay for our we own a whole townhouse, well, don't own, we rent a whole townhouse, three bedroom, two and a half bath, and it's 1500 Canadian, which is almost as much as it costs for me to uh, rent my tiny studio apartment in Victoria, um, which is why I moved there. But like most of the townhouses were like 1800. Um, 
or more in the uh, different parts of Edmonton. So there, it was like one of the cheapest townhouses available in the entire greater Edmonton area. Hustling works for this two of you. Oh yeah, for sure. And like, I wouldn't want or need a three-bedroom townhouse if there weren't the two of us. And the only reason we want it is because I want to be able to actually, when I'm home, like, be more productive at home. So we have our master bedroom and then two other bedrooms, but each of those will be our office. And yeah, Bryce, now I'm part of the U.S. That's cheap for Canada, but 1,500 Canadian is like 1,100 U.S. For a three-bedroom townhouse, which for most American cities is probably really cheap. Now, if you're in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky, then that's probably not very much. But or, sorry, that is a lot. That would be a lot for a place in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky. Pay 1800 for a four bed, two and a half bath in Calgary. That's a good price. My first choice for places to move to was actually Calgary. I lived there for a year in 2016, 2017, and I liked Calgary, and the airport's better than Edmonton. So that was actually my first choice. But like you said, the uh, places are pretty expensive. Like, our, I, I couldn't have. When I was looking at townhouses, they were all over $2,000 in Calgary. And like, most of them are a good chunk over 2000 Three bedroom, two bath townhouse in my town, Eastern Washington State, 1500. So then for me as a Canadian, that would be. We're getting close to two grand, probably just under 1900. Okay, I'll keep one kimbap for later. I want to try one of these breads. So it's. Butter cream bread. He's cream filled. Nice. All right, probably after this. I'll pack up the rest and we'll have that as a snack a bit later. We'll get back on the trail. Have we find gloves on longer rides? When I first started bike touring, it was in Western Canada, so I was, I was going over, like, uh, the first mountain ranges in Western Canada. Like, I was doing the Coquihalla. And then, after I got into, well, no. I hadn't even finished any major climbs. I got to Hope, BC. And I had lost um, the ability to, like, pinch my thumb and index or, like, any fingers together. Like, I could make this motion, 
but when I pushed my fingers together, I couldn't squeeze. So like any kind of like buckles I had to do or any like kind of like screwing things on or off or fine motor work with your hands, I lost all the use of like actually being able to clamp my fingers together. And I think it was just one, I was still pretty green riding a bike, especially in traffic. And I think I was um, like death gripping it, essentially just gripping on real hard because, you know, you want to stay in control, so you got to grab hard. And then I had no gloves or anything either. But um, I picked up gloves in Hope. And then once I took a couple of days off, once I got to Kelowna, I had some neck pains. Once I got rid of the neck pain and my hands got the sensation back, I was using gloves and I never had that come back again. I don't know if that's just technique and not death gripping the bars, help from the gloves or what, but um, I find it more comfortable wearing gloves. But yeah, a lot of people don't use gloves while cycling, and it's really not necessary. Well, maybe for certain people it is, and I, I just prefer it a lot more. I kind of feel naked when I'm not wearing my cycling gloves, and I put <laughs> as soon as I put my hands on the handlebars and I don't have my gloves on, it feels like weird. Why would you not use gloves riding a bike? Yeah. Like when you just see most people just casually riding a bike around, they're not wearing gloves. Because you got handlebars, they got grip tape, like why would they wear gloves? I don't know. Nice oak, please. Thanks. There's sutros for when I ride my sutra. The bike is a Kona Sutra. The glasses are Oakley Sutros. The book we read is Kama Sutra. experience picking road rocks out of their skin that's why they don't wear gloves I guess but I don't really think about wearing these gloves for actual like protection from us like should I fall and slide it's just there's nice gel padding on the palms of my hands and I find it comfortable What's our uptime? I might swap the mic over to our other mic. Five thirty-two. Yeah, it's a good time to swap the mic over. We'll pack up the remaining food, throw out the garbage that we have, and we'll be off. If I can find the mic. I switched over.
Okay. Break over any milk left? I have one left, so if I need a little pick-me-up, I got one more. Bear back. Oh, he's he gave me chopsticks, and I didn't really need chopsticks, but I guess I'll put those in there, too. Good to go. Shop called See You? Yeah, and quite often like the sign says, nice to see you, like in English. It's kind of a cute play on words, I like it. Strap this to the pannier, we're good to go. Awesome pit stop. Yeah, it worked out well. And then, very conveniently, a lot of these convenience stores have, you know, picnic tables, or in this case, just tables and chairs out in front. Very nice, especially on a sunny day like today. Okay. Let's get out of here after this guy. beautiful day uh yeah i'd say this is our nicest day yet in like the full 32 days or whatever we're on of this whole trip Solar eclipse today, it wasn't on this side of the world at all. So, probably population wise, like how many, how many are we at? Eight billion, nine billion people, or like maybe one billion of those people were within any visible line of sight to the eclipse. Most people didn't see it, including me. Worldwide? What? Mr. Worldwide? Not even, it was like 200 million? Yeah. <laughs> so, the vast, vast majority of people in the world were nowhere near being able to see it. 37 million live in its direct path. <laughs> That's it? Huh. That's not even a Canada. Less than one Canada worth of people.
right, we turn right just before this bridge and then we should be back on our official bike route. I am the traffic now. <laughs> The classic uh, Koreans park everywhere, anywhere. Let's get down to the path. I think there's a, an entrance over here. We can get to it. It's not under construction. See, in that little spot, they got a couch out. Weird. too far to our next scamper. Let's go see. Eh, yeah, not too far. Like 5k. And you're running on chocolate milk? Yeah, we are chocolate milk powered. This looks nice. Look <laughs> at little paddle boat. The Guangzhou. Uh, we are just north of that. So, a, a town. We're along the same river, but just north. I actually don't know what this town's called. Someone might know in chat. says we stay on this side. Their thing says we
the official signage. Because our, our next stamp is on this side of the river, but I'm, I assume there'll be lots of bridges. There's a, there's a blue line upper or a tree line lower. Which one is it? Is it either? What do you guys want? Up or down? They both have like, you know, bike lines on it. Up or down? Okay, we got one up, down, two ups, another down, up, <laughs> down. It's real split. Another up, down. Wow, it's it's really split. Up, both, down, up. It, I don't think there's actually been like two ups in a row or two downs in a row. Oh, now there's two ups in a row. Down, up. <laughs> More energy. <laughs> up, down, up, down. <laughs> More energy. <laughs> okay. Uh, <poo. laughs> it's pretty split. <laughs> now I need to listen to that song. Let me just take a little peek. What you look like. Okay, pretty nice. Asphalt. Up. Alright. Someone paid actual money. Hundred bits. We can always go back down later on. This is kinda cool. What type of trees are these? There's currently not much going on with them. They're chilling pretty dormant. But uh I feel like I haven't been through a a tree -y area like this yet. Is your GPS on? My GPS is on. I think this is nice. Good choice, good choice. Ooh. Can still go right? Uh, yeah, I, I, there'll be along this path, there'll be different ways where you can go down to the right path. So. Maybe at some point we'll switch to the down path and we can kind of, you know, compare and contrast. <laughs> what is the superior path? He's pretty though. Cherry blossoms are still Got a bit of blossom. They're mostly falling now, but there's still some. And there's a path down there. I see signs. Let's see. One's a biking the Great Wall of <laughs> China. Why not? Let's do it. The whole thing. Ah, yeah, we just intersect up here anyway. If I if they'll let me through one of these <laughs> pylons, well, that's a really tight concentration of pylon. The heck, guys. Why would you put them so tight? I'm thick. 
we're for sure going to brush up. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm getting not wanting like cars on here, but like. <laughs> oh, wrong gear. Ah, here we go. This is real nice. Wow. Now down is up. This is true. <laughs> this was the down path, but now it's up. All downers are now uppers. And uppers are now downers. Oh, that's the down path. Oh, that was the up path. It's now the low path. We have the high ground. Don't try it. It's of course all on the river. Most of the official bike routes follow uh, a river valley. So it's, you know, things similar to this, which is beautiful. Now there's exceptions to that. And like, we were just on Jeju, that's an exception because we're just going around the uh, coastal route around an island rather than a valley. Dog. Bonjour. Dog didn't know French. And she going in here? Oh. <laughs> oh, he's getting out of the way. There's a little truck behind me. Because these are like farm access roads and he was just cruising behind me. He wasn't honking or anything. And I pulled over there to let him by and that's where he was turning. View, yeah, I'm considering pulling out here soon, just once we get to a spot that seems appropriately safe for drone flying. Here's those signs I was talking about, like this sign up here is like, no motorcycles. Or till next stamp, uh, just a few kilometers now, not too far. The issue with like here is, I think the drone would be okay with these trees with like leaves on them now. Um, it's these ones here. They're really thin branches that stick out. Like this one has a branch sticking out into the middle of the trail. The uh, uh, like the obstacle avoidance, like the sensors on the drone that just automatically avoid stuff, struggle with really thin, spindly branches like that. One option that it did okay, just <laughs> if it screws up, it would be bad. Is I can actually have it like straight out to my side a good distance, like over top of the river facing this way, and it should be out far enough where it's not interacting with these trees at all on this side. But if, it is, if there is a tree that sticks out further and it doesn't notice that, it's going to hit the branch and like get stuck in the tree or fall into the river or just into that marshy ground over there, which may be difficult to go fetch.
That's a nice day today. What a nice day to finish up and get our final stampage. Doing a lot of construction on this river here. Are they building like another weir? I think so. That's what it looks like. Sleep in that gazebo. That's nice. Nice view as well. So you get the last step. Gotta go to sleep. Congrats in advance. Well, thank you very much. Have a good sleep. Time zones. Sometimes they're rude. Taking a train to Solo Fly Home? No, I'm probably biking back. You know, this feel more satisfying to bike back into Seoul to then go to like the bike certification center, bringing my passport to it and getting my gold medal. First ever gold medal for me in my life. Starting trip, my first stamp, uh, where we're finishing. It's like the Ara Bike Certification Center. It's like on the coast, on the east, there's a, the west side of Seoul. And it's where the main bike certification center is. I think it's ARA, -R -A, something. Bring your efforts to them aromatically. Wow, that's a <laughs> wonderful way to put it. I'll have you know I smell not too bad. I didn't shower today, but I showered yesterday morning. So by my standards, I'm pretty fresh. Wait, bike certification center, 20 meters. Is it up here? 20 meters, oh, I think it's down and around. Okay, we're gonna, oops. gonna hit that bowler. I think it's just on the other side of this bridge. Well, that's more than 20 meters. Is that Ali? Or was it there? No, uh, it's probably there. Ah, here we go. Certification center around 10 meters. All right. Spin around. Make sure there's no one here. Right. There it is. Hey. This is 86. Second of the day. We're spinning around again. It's stamping time. Ah, nice. There's bamboo here. Okay, if you're new here, you might be like, why are we talking about stamps? What does that mean? What do you mean stamps? This is what we mean. Spread all throughout Korea are these official certification centers. 
for the official Korea's Cross Country Cycling Road Tour Passport. So, I'm saying there's 88, but a couple of these are like doubled up, so it's probably like 85-ish of, of these certification centers all over Korea. And within them is a custom stamp, and within this passport are spots to put all these custom stamps. And if you fill out this entire passport with all the stamps at all of these certification centers, you get a gold medal. It's called completing the Grand Slam Bike Tour of Korea. There's little certificates you can get for doing like specific sections. Like you can do that, get this for doing the Hangang Bicycle Park from Ara Hanging Locks to Chengdu Gam. Damn. All right, there's a few of these. We don't care about these. These are fine. Whatever. That's great. We don't want those. A certificate? No, I want a freaking gold medal. It's important. <laughs> anyway, uh, where are we? So we're on the Yansung Sangang bicycle path here, and this should be the uh, Meta Sequoia Road stamp. Let's see if that is correct. Yeah, Meta Sequoia Road. All right, Let's see if this stamp has ink. No. I gotta get my ink pad. Getting both medals and certificates. So the issue is like, there's quite a few like small individual uh, sections and every time we finish a section, you have to go to a certification center just for that section and then get the certificate. But a lot of times there's only one for a specific route which means you'd only get it if you go in a specific direction. Because if you go in the wrong direction when you finish that route, there's no certification center for that route, if that makes sense. We're doing it all in one. Maybe they'll give me certificates for the other ones at the same time, I don't know. Uh, where's my ink? There it is. We'll do a test stamp. Paper that's in there, I don't mind. All right. But the sequoia, pretty, pretty clean. Well inked. Nice. Uh, so next one is Dam Yang Dam, which is, uh, I think it only said it was like nine kilometers or something like that from here. So we're actually very close. And then this last one is actually um, Hayanga Park. We did on another page. I just don't know why they included it on this one. It, it's on, on this page too, and we already stamped it or been there. But whatever. We're gonna do it again because I don't want to leave a blank spot. Completionist. So we'll have to update the stamp total. Um, wait, where am I going now? Do I cross this bridge? Hey. Uh, oh, no. No, we stay on this side, I think. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I just saw a bike sign that's like, bikes turn left onto the bridge. But I don't think so.
Is that 86? Um, what was that, our second today? Yeah, it should be 86, I think. Is there 84 today? Question, you know that big stamp you like? What's the question? I do know the stamp, the one I showed earlier. I don't know if there'll be a clean way from where we get this last one from the Damyang Dam to get over to that last stamp that we've already kind of <laughs> gotten but got to do again. Enough ink from the last, yeah, so actually there's probably potentially enough ink from what I just stamped because a lot of people don't carry their own ink pads, but as an alternative to stamping, you can uh, take a picture. Oh, that would've been a lovely spot to camp too. Oh, this is nice. More people biking. On a beautiful day like to this, like this, if you, if you can get out, it's a nice day to get out. Oh, and spring has sprung. It smells like flowers. Whatever these plants are, smell good. What of stamping on the wrong page? Well, like the thing is, like I can just check the name of each one of these, and then check the name on the passport, and like we technically kind of screwed up stamping because like there's one more we have to get today that we actually technically have already gotten on a different page, and we stamped it in the right location and everything. The issue was, um, for some reason, they put it again on a different page, even though it's on a completely not connected bike route. Wonder what that notification is for. Tracy must have a nicer bike pass in the UK. They do have very nice bike pass. Can confirm. If you're following the official routes, I have yet to do a bike tour in the UK. I would like to in the not too distant future. This one seems especially chill. Big stamp's supposed to be on the back certificate page? I don't think so. It's just a bonus stamp. It's not a certificate, it's just a stamp. Like, the certificates are actually like, like foil stickers that they stick into those pages. They're not an actual stamp on the certification pages. You don't self-certify. It's you're actually at an office with a government employee certifying you. UK bike tour. Surprised how much you ride and travel. Yeah, I'd like to. I want to do a lands in the John O'Groats. I've hitchhiked that route. Um, I'm curious what the cycling would be like. So, in the not too distant future. So I can really see all the uh, cherry blossoms contrasting on this uh, fresh asphalt path. Does ever get worried from moving a repetition for something like that? Uh, yeah, I actually do have, I never used to, but past two tours I've done, only my right knee starts to complain occasionally. So, right now it feels fine, but 
sometimes whines. Left knee seems fine. Right knee sometimes complains. Is this an airstrip? <laughs> Damyang Tour. It's a little like. Huh. You do a tour flight around here, that'd be cool. This is a tiny little airstrip. That's cute. Looks pretty quiet. <laughs> probably something I can't just show up and do. It's something probably have to book. Damyang Airport. That's a small airport. <laughs> hitch plane part three. There have to be people to ask in order to hitch a plane. Do some minor bellage up here. Have you ever hitched a plane? Uh, seven planes now. I think we're at seven. Is that the count? Have to go through them again. It's a long, it has been a long time since I've hitched a plane. How about one of them? Uh, hmm, which one have you heard about? Like, I got kind of taught how to hitchhike on planes when I was hitchhiking through California in 2018. This guy picked me up, this is pickup truck, and we just got chatting, and anyway, it turns out he's like, a private pilot, he owns like, there's like a dozen airplanes or something like that. And a Ferrari. <laughs> anyway, the guy's doing pretty well for himself. Anyway, we get chatting about planes because I just like planes and flying. Um, I kind of told him how like, you know, I'm on this hitchhiking trip, it'd be really cool to try and hitchhike on an airplane. And then he's like, oh, well, where we're driving, we're driving past this airport, my friend is usually hanging out there and quite often going for flights. Maybe he can take you somewhere in his plane. So go there, friend's not there, there's fine. But he invites me to where he lives in Bakersfield. He's got a hangar there. So he invites me to go check out his airplanes. And then uh, invites me to you know go up for a flight on his plane. I just assess the money too. Which we do, and then his friend was flying from Bakersfield to, uh, to Van Nuys Airport. I 
um, the next night. So I stayed with him uh, one night and then Kyle ride on his friend's airplane the next day from Bakersfield to Nice. And then his friend gave me another ride on his plane to John Wayne Airport later that the next day because he's going to some air show thing. Anyway, they essentially taught me how to, they would hitchhike on airplanes if they were going to do it. Um, which is like go to general aviation airports where you find pi like people that own their own airplanes, essentially pilots that have the ability to actually take you on. Like you can't go to JFK International Airport in New York City, go to the American Airlines ticket counter and be like, hi, can I have a free ride on your airplane? Once it's like used for commercial operation, it's much harder to do. With like that said, we did flight one, hitch one commercial flight, but it was a chartered flight. Um, when I was in New Orleans, we went to an airport and I was just networking with people. And I approached this one couple and did my spiel, asking if they were flying anywhere, if they could, if they could take a hitchhiker. And he's like, well, we're flying to Monroe, Louisiana. I don't think you'd want to go there. I'm like, man, I'll, t I'll take a flight anywhere. I don't have anywhere else to be. And he's like, oh, okay. Let me ask the pilot. So he's like, hey, pilot, can we take a hitchhiker? And the pilot's like, uh, I don't see why not. <laughs> he just has to call the company. So he called the company, asked the company if they could take an extra person. And they could, just as long as they checked my ID and made sure I wasn't on the no-fly list. Because now it's a commercial thing, so... Actually, has some checks and balances in place. Um, but yeah, like the couple were paying for an entire airplane to be there for them. So, as long as there's capacity on the plane, they can add as many passengers as there are capacity for the plane. So, anyway, the company's like, yeah, that's fine. So, we hitched that commercial charter flight on a King Air 250 from uh, New Orleans to Monroe. And then when they, uh, they got dropped off in Monroe, like there's like thunderstorms in the area, uh, and they just like stopped, got some money out, gave me a hundred bucks, and they're like, okay, <laughs> have a good day. Um, anyway, that was a good time. <laughs> Where is Monroe? Exactly. <laughs> That's why they were like, I don't think you'd want to go there. Yeah, they lived in Monroe and they were flying back and forth uh, to New Orleans a couple times because they were looking at buying a house there. And I, I think there's no like direct flights to Monroe or something, or to New Orleans from Monroe or something. So they'd have to do some awkward things. So they'd just pay a few thousand dollars and have a plane and pilot waiting for them. Which I don't know how much a charter is from, uh, from there to there. Where do you go from Monroe? Oh, I just stayed the night there and then I hitchhiked. I, don't, I think I was going east at that point. Must have had money. Uh, well, I think the, um, the husband, there's a, there's a couple, was a CFO at a, some kind of manufacturing company. I forget, it was like a very specific component or material. the CFO being like chief financial officer. So, a high up executive. But yeah, I've uh, through hitchhiking met some very wealthy people, some very off so that people, you kind of get the full spectrum of different lifestyles. I will say, on average, you 
meet people with a bit less than a bit more. But you will get all different kinds. Um, I think this is technically the path. That bike's just hanging out on the road though, but it's not a busy road, so I, I don't feel like we even need a separate bike path. We could just go on that road. Yeah. Finishing today. Uh, we will get our final stamp today. We've got one more here, Damien Dam. Um, and then technically on my passport, there's one spot missing because we had to do technically the same stamp in two different pages, but I didn't realize that. So we're going to go back and get that one. But it's, it's pretty much on my route back, so it's fine. Um, so we should get both of those today. And then we just got to race back to Seoul to get my gold medal. I'm kind of assuming it's not updated. Our title, yeah, we're probably one behind. Should be at 86. You stream all your plane hitching? Yeah. Um, yeah, every flight was streamed. Like that uh, New Orleans to Monroe flight, we're kind of flying over like the middle of freaking nowhere. Ooh, really only 500 meters to our certification center? Huh. I think there's a good chance we'll have to backtrack here to get, then go east and get to the uh, the last actual stamp I have to get. But yeah, that, that flight was pretty much through the backwoods of Louisiana. So um, very shortly after we took off from New Orleans, we, we lost signal and didn't get back till we were like landing in Monroe. So we're just fine. But like some of the flights we had networked the whole time for, like when we flew from Bakersfield to Van Nuys, it pretty much followed like I-5, I think, um, or some interstate. And we were at a pretty low flight level, so we had decent cell service the whole time. So that worked fine. And I was only 90 minutes from Dallas. Really? Hmm. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> when I'm up there, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. But 90 minutes from Dallas is not that far. Certification center. So this is like technically the last real new stamp. We have to like go to another one again because it was on two pages and I only saw it on the initial page. So this one coming up here at apparently 100 meters is the last <laughs> unique new stamp that we haven't been to yet. Dam Yang Dam. That is it. The final. New one, but then we got everything, you know, get one more that we missed. But anyway. Sad music playing from this place. <laughs> what the heck? Reverse. All right. That was fast. I know there's like barely any distance between these two. I'm gonna have to navigate to figure out where to go from here, but because now we're going like off official easy routes. Okay. Stamp 87 out of 88. Well, probably most of the people that saw me stamp, the last stamp are probably still here because it was only, that was not far at all. Um, but anyway, this is another bicycle certification center for our Korea's cross country cycling road tour passport where we filled out most of these pages. And when I fill out every single one of these, we qualify for a gold medal. Look how completed we are. Oh, this 
this Damien Dam up here, and then we just have to get this Hyanga Park one, which we have got right here, but for some reason they decided to put it on two pages. Jeju. That's it. Okay, let's get it. Is the ink working here? Okay, well, apparently my shoes sound loud on this one. Dam Yang Dam. Now we just have to re-get Hyanga Park. And it'll be completed, completed. Fully completed. But yeah, last unique stamp of someone just said. Because the only one left we have to do, we've already done, and we just kind of have to do again to complete this. Pretty exciting. Okay, now I have to navigate to our next one. So we have to go from this dam location <laughs> to Hyanga Park. So there's probably no real clean way to do this. I might have to go back a bit close to the last one we went to. Hyanga Park, which is on that river. This is Cacao Map, see if it works. Route from current to destination on map. Maybe not. Pretty sure it's not. Okay, I think it's there. Okay, so yeah, we pretty much have to go back. It says 23k. We have to go back close to where the last one was. And then we mostly have to ride on roads to get to it, which is fine. I don't know what classification of roads they are, but it's not the busiest ones. It's not the biggest ones, so it should be fine. Well, one of them might be busy. We'll see. Going to get it certified inside, or they have another one elsewhere? Uh, in Seoul, we're getting it certified. Yeah. Back we go.
Look at this, it's like sticking out really far. All right, so we just have to get the one more, 23K away on a variety of paths and roads. And then we got to ride back to Seoul from there, which is going to be several hundred kilometers, like three to 400 or something like that. So, but we'll get our last stamp today. And then um, we'll, we'll plan out a little bit more about how to get back to Seoul because it's a, you know, it's a good quest. the last stamp it's like Hyenga Park or something like that it's on a completely different bike or yeah you know, bike route and when I did that bike route I stamped it it's just <laughs> it went on the page but for some reason it's also on this page so there's just like a missing stamp in my book and I feel like if I went to get this verified like I have proof that I went to this place because I stamped it on one page I just didn't stamp it on the other page but I don't like it <laughs> I that that missing stamp spot is gonna drive me crazy so we got to get it we're completing this passport anyway like I don't I think the Getting back to that other bike path where I get the stamp anyway is probably a, the start of a logical way to start heading back to Seoul anyway. So we'd probably be heading in that direction regardless. So it's not a big deal. Now stamps until two behind. Right, I can fix it. You drive me crazy. I just can't sing. I'm so excited. I'm in too deep. Eh. Eh. Nope. Nope. Okay, whatever. 87. Save. Okay, it should be 87 out of 88. Do 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 It's pretty though. Love these uh, cherry blossom like lined roads. And right now they're all falling so it's like snowing. Alright, um So I don't think we go all the way back to the last stamp, so I just have to pay attention to how far. Yeah, only another 1.9 kilometers, so. This part of the way, I'm gonna turn into some roads, do some road riding. Next adventure, <laughs> Corning, California. We'll see. I, I want to do a hitchhiking trip. I have some ideas for it that are not you know, completely settled yet. But um, yeah, the, the hope is once I finish this trip and head back to Canada, I'll have a very short turnaround in Canada where I just stop at home for a couple of days, swap my gear out from biking, like drop my bike off to a hitchhiking setup and then fly out um, to another location and start what I think will be a pretty interesting hitchhiking trip. Are you sure it's a duplicate? Yeah. Because it's the exact same place on the right, very next page. Now, I think there's another one or two in this booklet that randomly have are on two pages. I just happened to catch those ones while I was stamping them. What? 32 day tour, I've watched 30 days. I've been watching Hitch Tour in South Korea. That's pretty good. Has, has anyone caught every day? 
Yeah, it's also weird because it's been spread out with like a three month gap in the middle. <laughs> Going back and watching those as a count, I, I'd say it counts, yeah. Make me want to do the same. Yeah, if you can, you should. Korea's great for bike touring. It's been a very enjoyable trip. Most days, that would be 30, maybe 26. That's still some good dedication. Devotion. Dedication. Devotion. Turning on that time in the day. Taxes people got to pay it. Yeah, I, I do actually have to file my taxes when I go home. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Drive anywhere at all. Do you have your own car? I just actually bought my own car. Um, like a month and a half ago or something, a month ago. Um, but for the 10 years prior to that, I had not had my own car. I actually really like driving. <laughs> Find it quite relaxing. We moved uh, to a city where cars are much more necessary than where we lived before. I buy a Tesla? I bought a Mazda hatchback. Passport really fully stamped. Well, as the title says, we're 87 out of 88. So there's one spot missing. Mazda Speed 3? No, no Mazda Speed. Mazda 3 um, Sport. Sport means hatchback. If you just say Mazda 3, it's second way a sedan, but yeah. All right. Pretty soon here, we turn off this path. What year? A 2019. Five years old. Me and Sarah both kind of wanted a hatchback. Okay, for the bike. Um, it just fits a standard size bike box with the seats fold down the back. But like, so I, I could have driven myself to the airport this time, but the issue is then like when I'm gone for weeks or especially months, like long-term parking in an airport isn't actually <laughs> cheap. So I'm better off just paying for a taxi and then paying for a taxi on the way back as well. It's kind of annoying. And cost-wise rather than parking my car there. Hatchbacks and wagons are top tier. Yeah, what I really wanted was, yeah, a proper wagon. It's like a car, but with, you know, a lot of space in the back for adventures. Um, but we don't really have much for wagons in North America. Like in the North, North, American, North American car market is short on wagons. You good? You stuck? Can't get over that little curve. Okay, she got it. Did you get it?
bunch of Volvo station wagons. Yeah, Volvos are like the only ones, but, and Volvos are nice. Um, they're apparently, when I was looking it up, cost to maintain a Volvo is, is quite a bit higher, and also the cost to purchase one for a, like a newer one is quite a bit higher. Yeah, I think we're crossing this bridge. Yeah. We're on a road. Hey, this looks actually busy. What the heck? It's the way she goes. When we have to connect between bike routes. Let's just start on that. Let's see if it continues. But it's probably just for pedestrians and we're just using it for the time being. An 80s Volvo and probably outlive us all. I do like some of those really old Volvo station wagons, like the Volvo. Got the model number. They're just so blocky and long. <laughs> checkpoint, are you on? I just got Dam Yang Dam checkpoint, and now we're getting one more stamp that I missed, but it's kind of on my route back to Seoul. Um, Hyanga Park, I think. Thousand USD Volvo station wagon, station wagon recent issue. Oh, well, that's that's decent. But I've, I've heard like the the newer ones, like just the maintenance items that arise naturally, like they're not not reliable cars. They're just all cars need maintenance. When you do have to repair them, it's on the pricier side. Guess that's what I read. All right, we gotta go on the road now. That's fine. Busy and narrow. What are we on this road for? A ways. But yeah, doesn't look like this way. Super easy alternative, so we'd be on that, which is fine. But yeah, when I was getting a car, I wanted one that was like nice and safe and had like a few of modern car features, like a, like a backup camera and uh, like blind spot monitoring. Not that you should 100% rely on blind spot monitoring and stuff like that. Not for myself, particularly. My first car and the car I really loved driving was a 1990 Toyota Corolla. <laughs> I freaking love that thing. Um, but Sarah's a fairly anxious driver. So I just wanted her in a car that has some safety amenities and then if there is an accident, has a good crash safety rating. And like 2019 is the most current generation of Mazda 3. So it has all those nice safety features. Um, but it's still five years old, so it's done some depreciation. There's a sidewalk to your right? I don't see one. Does that actually go along my route? Like it zips out to the, uh, onto a farmer field. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I did it. Maybe it connected. You gonna finish it today? Well, we'll get the final stamp today. It's about 20 kilometers from here. Um, it's somewhere we've actually already been, but it's a missing spot on our stamp because it was on two pages. Um, and then from there, all we have to do is ride back to Seoul. Now, all we have to do is ride back to Seoul is a bit more complicated. <laughs> it's, I think it's gonna be like 
around 400 kilometers from where we get our last stamp in our passport. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, for the safety wise, it's just like, it makes me feel better. Like I'm buying a car for both me and Sarah to use and for it to be safe while you are driving it. But if something goes wrong and there is an accident, regardless of whose fault it is, the driver of said vehicle is safe. So I just, I, part of me really want to get an older car, but now I've always cared less about my safety than other people's safety. And if I'm buying something that Sarah's going to use, I now care about safety all of a sudden. There it's me getting older. Yeah, the uh, crossover market, crossover SUV is definitely, if you're not buying a, like a pickup truck, which a lot of people are, F-150 is the top selling car in both the US and Canada. And pretty much everyone wants an SUV. So, I did test drive some. But uh, what I kind of want to do is I want to put roof racks on my, my Mazda and put uh, like bike racks up there so we can strap bikes on top of her. I was, <laughs> you should not an aesthetics person, but I think cars just look cool with bikes strapped on top. I don't know. <laughs> Rather than a, a, like a hitch mount or something. This road has actually been pretty nice to ride on. I like super busy when I first got on it, but it's been pretty chill. That is tree lined, which gives a nice aesthetic. What type of trees are these? Yeah, they're all just, it's so symmetrical. Any tree experts? It's nice little blooming. Like, they've got little bits of green on the tip, so I don't know if these like actually bloom with flowers or if they just like start growing leaves. I think it might be the latter.
<clears throat> Drive Sangro as we see it. Do you miss all the <laughs> the cherry blossom roads we rode along? We've had some beautiful scenery. I think I'd rather get the cherry blossoms than these trees. section up here. But I think we're going to end up being on a much busier road coming up here. Let's see how it is. What's with the random spam? From like multiple people. What the heck? You think you're watching XQC? Mister, <sighs> gotta ride on this road, which probably won't be particularly fun. The like one we were just on goes on for a little bit more. But, no, it does intersect. Okay, why don't we, yeah, let's ride this one at least to the next intersection. more chip. It's like no traffic on there. Do, 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 do. I know you're mad about that. That's fine. You can be mad. See bike route ahead? What bike route? My Korean navigation app starts telling me I'm going to be on the road for most of this to get to connect from a, one bike route to another bike route. This is where your Korean cycling infrastructure fails, is if you're not just specifically following one specific bike route then you run out of infrastructure because um, bike routes do not connect up cleanly this is pine road this one Oh, this is a good road. Yeah, it's like no traffic and it's in good shape. And we got our trees still. It's actually quite hot, so it's nice to have the partial shading provided by them. Um, we'll have to get it on this main road to the right there. Looks like it's got an acceptable shoulder though. And traffic isn't even that fast for how big the road is. I actually don't know what the speed limit is.
is all in the extended gradual climb. A woo woo, woo woo woo. Goodbye, damn Yang. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. What's the plan right now? We're connecting from bike route to bike route to one I actually have already done and I've already stamped on. But there's one stamp on that route in uh, less than 20K from here that we stamped on one page, but it was also supposed to be stamped on another page. So we're going to go get it on that page and that'll be every single stamping checkpoint completed in my Korea's cross-country cycling passport. So we're going to get that. And then we're going to figure out how to get back to Seoul. The plan is to cycle back. It's going to be like 400 kilometers or something. Sign something all over Korea. I haven't really seen it, I just thought it was quite cute. So. <laughs> At some point, I believe this was the main road, hence the sign saying goodbye, because most people leaving Damyang would be on this larger road to our right. Start to sold it there tomorrow. Um, so we should be at, what, just under 80 or something like that kilometers when we get our last stamp. So we'll have a look at the time of the day and uh, how I'm feeling and everything and then we'll make our judgment call if we want to push starting today or rest up and push start tomorrow. Okay. This road doesn't connect up to the main road. Just goes under, but there's no way on. But soon we do get a road that we can take. Because you know, that's the way we gotta go. Um, I think. Because yeah, this road splits off going in the wrong direction. We do really back. We're not taking the main road. We could do a circuitous back roads cycling. It's super inefficient. But it'd get us there and it'd probably be pretty chill. Well, I guess we're not in too much of a rush to get this last one. We got uh, five hours till it's dark today. We'll probably do that. What do you think? Should we ride on the. It's a highway, but slow speed highway? with an okay-ish shoulder, or should we take some back roads? At least what look like back roads. Probably some climbs in there. It looks kind of windy, which means probably up and down. It's more fun. Usually, yeah. When I'm riding on like highway shoulders, a lot of time it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I still like riding the bike, but it's just like not particularly exciting. Stand by for all uh, plan after all stamps have been collected. We have to get back to Seoul to bring my bicycle passport into a bicycle certification center, the official big one, and uh, 
you know, get all my stamps certified and get my gold medal. So we got to get back to Seoul to do that though. Classic Korean parking. A Chevy Malibu. Turbo. I think a Turbo Malibu. Only one stamp left? Yeah. And it's technically one we've already gotten before, but they had the same stamp on two pages and I didn't realize it. So we gotta get it anyway. Again. It's okay, it's kind of on their way back to Seoul, so it ain't the end of the world. Okay, so my back road route is straight, my on highway route is left. There's no sign that says I can't take the highway. It's an actual on-ramp though. Let me look at my map here and then we'll make a decision. So this would be the back road route if I just stay straight this way. So yeah, this just takes us to, well, it's all like a river valley, we go out and around. Hmm. So sorry, right now I'm just deciding on which way to take. Ow. Pokey grass. Can we back? Oh, I think we backwoods it like the whole way. It could be fun, actually. Let's try that. Well, that I'm a little different. I was really definitely get backwards. Like it's only supposed to be like from here, I don't know, twenty less than twenty, probably like sixteen kilometers, something like that. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer by going this way. But like if I'm taking the highway, I'm pretty much taking the highway. Well, part way and then there's bike paths to finish it. Better seem nice on the map. Yeah, no, we kinda of follow River Valley from a a less busy road, so I think um, I think we're gonna do that. I think it'll be fun. I'll check my charge on my other phone here. So we gotta plug her in. I might have to do that. Yeah, shit. Switch batteries. Switch. There you go. There. Right. Have a little drink. For just front stamp, well, it should be like 16 or something like that, or you know, less than 20, 15 to 20, probably. When we take the high, but we're gonna take this um, more back road and follows River Valley because it sounds more nice. So, I ride a bike because I like riding a bike. Sometimes we're going for speed, but uh, not right this second. Uh, I'm feeling good. Yeah. It's feeling quite good. Um, let's get a little energy in me, I guess. So if I chuck down the Snickers bar, bar singular. Hold yourself for the victory lap down the soul. Take it easy.
Let's go get the next stamp. I'm going to pull up my map. We're going to see how far it is, the route it takes us on. It says how I feel physically, mentally, emotionally. <laughs> and then uh, go from there. See whether I want to take it easy or um, challenge myself. So we'll probably make that plan a bit later today once we get our last stamp. Mongo trucks 30,000 miles, 2030s. 5k, that's a good deal. You can barely get something that's running in Canada for 5 gram. I think the era of the $1,000 beater car has ended. Oh. Are you ready, Steve? Andy, Rick, all right, fellas, let's go. I think this will be a good route. Oh, yeah. It's like lightning. Everybody was frightening. And the music was soothing as they all started grooving. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the man in the back said, everyone attack going to turn into a ballroom. But Reminds me of Chilliwack. I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. I go around. Oh no! <laughs> Going around made me find a, a separate, even bigger obstacle. My speed, my momentum. Weird. Thirteen out of thirty-two. Me. So it's actually thirty-two days in total. We were here for nineteen days, November, December last year. I was supposed to do it all in one go, but I ended up flying home for Christmas, and only resuming the trip, you know, three months later. And it's day thirteen of part two. If you had thirteen to nineteen from last trip, you get thirty-two days total. So thirty-two days means in total this has been thirty-two days because, like. The total distance on this trip has been like 2,600 kilometers or something like that. And people are like, you did 2,600 kilometers in 13 days? It's pretty crazy. It's totally doable. Uh, maybe not for me, but for some people it is.
I bet they don't get too many tours through this, these parts. We are, uh, we are off the main routes, I think, here. It's like a Y. I want to make sure we're on the right side of the Y. Final step today? Yeah, we will be. That cat, be careful on the road. That was not the most efficient cross. Should have gone straight across. Anyway, I guess he crossed that exit time. There's no cars. Turn coming up. What am I doing? Am I doing this one? I'm gonna stop at this point. I have to go that way. No, I think we're just following the river valley way. Oh, that way. Yeah, no. We're just gonna follow the river valley. If we were left here, we could reconnect up, but we'd end up just on the highway again. I think. I don't know. Anyway. This one in general will follow River Valley for a lot of it. And it should be pretty chill. Racing Cowboy with the 100 bits, thank you very much. I appreciate the bits. River flows out to the river, where the stamp is. Yeah, polymers will work out eventually. It's just a bit of a circuitous rooting. That's fine. Across America, you have seen? Uh, I've been considering it. Like, I've done Canada, so if I went across America, <laughs> I probably wouldn't do like one of the further north in America routes. I'm thinking like southern tier, from San Diego to Florida. We do a lot of desert and stuff like that. I think that could be just different. Because you do a route across America and you stay northish, it'll look rather similar to when I rode across Canada. Never be good enough? Depends. How aggressive are your speed bump? That's okay. Yeah, a lot of it stays like, sometimes you have to be on the interstate, sometimes you'll be on like a century service road for the interstate. Anything on that should be fine for streaming. 
because interstates have that cellular infrastructure. There's times where we're following smaller roads far away, and that's where it'd get more difficult. And if you're across America's way more scenic than southern, right? Try humid desert land there. I know I've never toured through a desert though, so. I've toured across Canada. I've, I've toured across what would be a very, very similar landscape to a more northern route across America. So, like, it would be like doing the same trip twice. And it was a beautiful trip. Not to say I won't do another trip like that again, but I feel I might as well do something different. But like, you guys, like, I know what the southern route looks like. I've hitchhiked across <laughs> those interstates a few times. I've been there. Nowhere to camp in desert? What do you mean nowhere to camp in the desert? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> The whole desert is camp. Exactly. There's more places to camp than anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, you could say it's like boring and empty and desert, but like no camping is <laughs> it's a bold claim. Do I go this way or do I go right? I keep, I keep having these whys and I'm like... They both reconnect up in a second, but I think. <laughs> the famous deserts of Germany, exactly. Is there anything in Germany that would like count as a desert? Like can't, technically, well, Arctic tundra is, is, a, is a type of desert. Because actually in a lot of Arctic parts of Canada, precipitation levels are actually low enough that it counts as a desert. I think the only one is like around a Soyuz in BC. It's like a, an actual, what we think of a desert desert. Okanagan Desert. Well, that's what I meant by a soy use. But like, Kelowna doesn't count, quite count as a desert. But if you head further south, yeah. I've heard of soy uses are close as we got. Anyway, here's our little river on it right here. Fjord. I think that was one of the fjords that would have been a fairly large detour when I was uh, cycling up the west coast of Norway last year. So I don't think I actually went to that fjord. Are you from the final destination? I actually have no idea because we're going like off what my navigator, my app was saying because it just had me going up a, honestly not even a bad highway. But I saw like this back road route which just follows a river and it's much less efficient, but it uh, looks more enjoyable. So I decided to add a bit of distance in exchange for increased enjoyment.
it's pretty, I like this. It's been good. I'm happy with this choice. Road's mostly in good shape too. six miles uh, added so like 10k in added distance so I think we had like 23 was what it said from our last stamp that we got uh, to get this next stamp point so that'll put us at like 33 kilometers to 23 that's fine yeah this is great It's a great shape. Dunes, dunes, kind of like mini desert. Oh uh, yeah, I cycled through there. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, I, I'd consider that desert. Like now, it looks like a desert, but like part of the definition of a desert has to do with precipitation totals, I, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think anywhere in the node meets <laughs> that standard. It does look like a desert though. I'll give you that. Svalbard's desert? It totally could be, yeah. A lot of northern places actually just don't end up with that much precipitation. They look like cold and frigid and stuff like that. But like, there just isn't much precipitation, whether it's snow or rain or otherwise. Just when it does snow, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> At least for the whole winter. Turn right one kilometer, or just keep going around the loop. Uh, I think initially I was just gonna go around the loop. Let's check. Yeah, yeah, the word someone said in chat is tundra. As much as you can, I'm just like falling rivers is is a lovely thing. Um actually I do have to decide navigationally what we're gonna do in not too long here. But I think we'll follow finish this loop and then once we reconnect with this other road we can decide if we want to do more back roads to get to our path or stay along the valleys anyway we got a little bit so i'm going to follow this loop out and finish it off it connects up with a bigger road at some point here that's where i'll decide where to go next Hmm. 
most common car you've been seeing? Hyundai. <laughs> Variety of different ver uh, models. Followed by Kia. And uh, yeah, it's <laughs> not too much noticeable. But yeah, Hyundai and Kia are the, the big South Korean auto manufacturers, so it is logical. But Western ones, for NA brands, Chevy. It's about the only one I see, I think. I think I've seen like two Dodge pickup trucks and it, it breaks my brain every time. Like Dodge Ram <laughs> 1500. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing here? Um, but like actually Chevy cars aren't that uncommon here, I think. We just rode past the Malibu a couple minutes ago. I mean, Japanese brands, I haven't seen much for like Toyota or definitely no Mazdas or anything like that. Uh, I think we're still going. Can she think she's the passionate one? Oh, I'm gonna see what my thing says now. Oh, it wants me to go that way. That could be fun. Take that back road. <sighs> straight there, straight across that road. There. Yeah, let's go that way. I wonder if there's a nice climb in there. Actually, it'll probably tell me. Uh, oh, no, not really. Okay, well, how far is that? 6.4 kilometers, that's nothing. Easy, we're pretty much done. Cool, cool. Everybody was frightened. Hey, there's a blue line on that path. There is some kind of official bike route through there. Almost done? Yeah, we're apparently 6.4 kilometers from uh, our final stamp that we have to get on our passport to be like fully completionist done. Sunchang Parrot Farm? What does that mean? Is it actually parrots? Oh, I hear parrots. <laughs> Just like buy parrots here. Oh, all right, it's a parrot farm. That's not what I expected to find out here in farmland. <laughs> That's strange. All right. Yeah, like if you want to buy a parrot, <laughs> go there, I guess. All right, here's a more major road. We go right underneath it and carry on straight, I believe.
thing. Where do they go? What do I have? Do I have flashing red? Who's, who's got, I think this is uncontrolled. He's giver. Here's one of those giver intersections. Um, so I'm on here for a bit. You have to make one turn, so try to not miss it. In 3.5 kilometers. All right. Little climb. Ah, right on. Now we're into the hills, but I only have too much climbing to do. Yeah, if I could define the terrain you cycle over, most likely in Korea is like, Korea is a very hilly country, but most of the bike routes don't really go over the hills. They follow the river valleys, which are notably quite flat. It's the blue line, we're off route. Finished one route and we gotta get back to another. So we are on a road. We'll find it soon though. Like four kilometers or something. Where we get our final stamp of our passport. And then we'll decide how to get back to Seoul. To uh, verify our passport and get a freaking gold medal. Like the soul. I got a whole touring bike with me. Like, <laughs> you could. There's lots of utility trucks and stuff like that here. But uh, it's a bike tour. <laughs> We're probably gonna bike tour that. before we have to turn 2.5 kilometers. I actually do really like riding on these uh, 
small back rows in Korea. Traffic's usually really sparse. Speed limits are really low, so traffic's usually not ripping along here, so. It's a good time. Did you ever do road biking? I'm on a bike on a road. Actually, I, like, I have a, a road bike with the intention of uh, like joining group rides when I'm back in Canada. It was the initial thought when I got it, to have some kind of social life when I go back to Canada. I haven't used it for that yet, though. How aggressive are you going to be? That's fine. Speed bumps are like sometimes barely anything here, and sometimes they're like, they just rattle you to your core. Rearrange my back and butt and everything. Where in Canada are you from? Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Far west coast. Well, I guess actually the east coast of Vancouver Island, so. You could be further west coast than that, but. <laughs> An island off the west coast of Canada. Use bullhorn bar? Well, like, they wouldn't really make sense to use on a drop bar bike like that. Like this. Um, what do you mean, arrow bars? Bullhorn bars are usually on flat bars. Like, if you have a flat bar, you can have bullhorns coming out like that. But like arrow bars are more attached to your, uh, close to the center of your handlebars. These pads I have here, I don't know if you can actually see it. <laughs> These, those are arrow bar pads. I don't use them as arrow bars. I just use them as a upright cycling position so I can stretch out my back and rest my hands on them. Or sometimes I'll ride like this <laughs> in the thinking position. If the road's smooth and stuff like that. And kind of like relax your core and stuff like that and just spin your legs. Oh god. <laughs> but don't hit a bump like that while you're, cause you're just gonna punch yourself in the jaw. Um, so yeah, save that one for the real smooth roads. Say Lincoln? That's a Western car. Kilometer left? No, 400 meters till I turn right. All right. Let's leave the map up for a second. I don't miss my turn. So I don't know if it's like a proper road or like a little farm road. We'll see. Meters. Ah, okay, I think that's where that car is. That's a normal road. Looks like we get some uh, blossoms, so that's nice. And a roundabout premium. Alright, 
we do split left here. No, I think it's just a straight shot. Yeah, yeah. To the left, to the left. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> Get going. But look at all the cherry blossoms, guys. That ain't K Kona. They're pretty. Sing something more fitting. Now, I'm usually uh, all about some John Denver. Gimme, gimme. Yeah, and we're almost at our final actual stamp in our passport, and then, uh, then, we're, then we're done the passport. We just got to get it verified. Then we're gonna verify. We gotta go to Seoul. Then we're gonna Seoul. We gotta like ride 400 kilometers north. We're done the whole trip and string. Maybe, maybe. regret starting in November? No, I wanted to try like winter bike touring. It was, it was like an actual curiosity of mine to see how I handle riding in sub zero temperatures. And I did fine until like it rained a ton, which was again fine, but then it snowed, which became less fine. And then it froze it was down to like minus 10, <laughs> which without proper like studded tires and stuff like that was not really passable. No, it was fine until it wasn't fine. So that was an interesting experience. But yeah, like like many places, if you're going in the winter, like things aren't really alive. The trees were all bare. The grass is all brown. <clears throat> Car just like picks up a ton of the cherry blossom petals and they like just fly behind them from the, <clears throat> from the drafts. So I hope I put the correct location. Oh. It's this one. Oh, that's a cool thing. All right, I remember this. Uh, it's this cool tunnel. I very much remember this checkpoint. All right, Sunny's off because I can't see. That's the last one, it'll be the last one. As soon as we come out of this tunnel, we see it. Air conditioning in this tunnel, it's nice.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've been here before, but apparently had to stamp in two different pages of the passport. <laughs> but we came back as we're going full completionist. Hello. Hmm? What's up? Alone, yeah. Where did you start? Eh? Seoul. But uh, I've, uh, I've finished. Seoul. This is destination? Last one. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Wow. Come, sorry, now. No problem. Do this again. Put brake on. Parking brake. Oh, where do you start? Good idea. Seoul. From Seoul? From Canada. Oh, Canada. But well, this is my final stamp mm. oh, the, uh, for a whole passport. Oh, yeah. Why? Why final? Final, yeah. You can go more. Good. Hmm? You can go more, further. No, I've, like, I've done uh, every single one. Oh, already. From Seoul. You took all in Oh. Oh. <laughs> This is the last one. That's fine. <laughs> oh, 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 but actually, I, I came here before. Um, yeah. it's, it's on two pages, but I, I didn't put it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's all done. East Coast, Jeju. Mm. Whoa, <laughs> oh, yeah. how, all how, done. How long, how many days? Uh, 32. 32. Yeah. And then I go to Seoul, and then you get a, a medal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm excited. Mm. <laughs> oh. And you? Where are you riding from? Uh, from, you know the Sanjinggang Dam? Yeah. The, the starting point, this, uh, this river. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to, the, to the harbor. To the harbor, okay. Where do you stay or uh, try? Uh, camping. Tent. Camping. Oh. Tent. Also camping over there? Oh, not over there. Okay. Uh, this area or another one? All Korea oh, <laughs> camping. Okay. Yeah, any, any place. Yeah, any place. Yeah. You can drive. That is your home. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> so I uh, I charge my batteries in uh, restaurants, and then I sleep. I sleep in parks, uh, in grass, wherever. <laughs> I finish the from Seattle to San Diego out to the, the, the border. Seattle to San Diego? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm from uh, Vancouver, Vancouver Island. Oh, Vancouver, you are. So close to Seattle. Mm, I didn't go to Vancouver at that time. Yeah. Was it a I good ride? The, oh, yeah. It yeah? Good ride. Uh, different than Korea, you're on a, a road the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like totally. with cars like, yeah. <laughs> right next to you. I wrote a book about that. Oh, you did? Yeah. You published? Yeah. Published. Just right to too many countries. Have you? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Austria. Oh, you did? <laughs> no way. So I've done like Canada, across Canada, and then uh, from east to west, from Vancouver west. Island to uh, Newfoundland, New east coast. Island. Yeah. And then uh, a bunch of Europe. Last summer I rode to Nord Cap, Norway, the Arctic Circle. I, I did uh, uh, the. The harbor, the, the, you know, the, from there to or Sweden to Denmark to uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, oh, you started in Norway? Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. And from there to this uh, France, Euro 15, you know, Euro 15, Rhine River. Oh, Rhine River, yeah, Valley, yeah, okay. There. Yeah. And from Rome to San Diego, Santiago, uh, Compostela. Oh, yeah, Santiago, the Compostela, yeah, uh, okay. And uh, from Rufiongle, France. Okay. To Santiago, the Compostela, and the. Uh, what is it? Finisterre? Yeah. Finisterre. Okay. The, the, the last. Uh, Whew, many places. How was uh, Australia uh, for cycling? Like, where did you go? Uh, the, there is no sidewalk. I, I, I heard. And the uh, trailer. Two, three, four, five, six. Very long oh, the the ah, totally yeah, good. the road trains. Yeah, road trains. And the, the final trailer, like. Yeah. I did a non-biking trip in Australia, and seeing those uh, big trucks was. It looked like they were flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Video camera? Yeah, I make a live video. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, 
so as I go, people travel with me and then can watch what it's like to, to bike tour. You in different very countries. young. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am uh, almost 30. Almost 30. Yeah, like in two months. In two months. Yeah, yeah. Don't get old more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. I'll try. <laughs> okay, you go start now. You go start? Yeah. All right. Sounds okay. good. Well, enjoy your ride. Yeah, have a nice day. Nice to talk yeah. with you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Are we high fiving? All right, high five. <laughs> Wait, what's your book called? Can we can we look it up? Uh, in Korean, do you know Korean? <laughs> no. In English, from Seattle to uh, from Seattle to San to San, uh, San Diego. Diego. Uh, wrong all the way to the uh, wrong all the way. Uh, Pacific Coast. Okay. You can say it in Korean, some people that watch are Korean, so they can understand it, yeah. if it's easier. I'm just curious, I might look it up later. But that's cool. Okay, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Because I want to do that, uh, that trip at some point, because I'm from the West Coast but I uh, haven't done it yet. Mm. Oh, it is all went to the, the neighbor, the, the neighbor site. Mm. So. No, no, no. This is my second book. Your second book? Okay. Uh, my second book is uh, KGB Spy Yuri. KGB Spy? Spy Yuri. Like a spy uh, fiction novel? Yeah, fiction novel. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is my second book. Yeah. The third book will come out someday later. Oh, okay. And my first book. That's cool. Uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, near the uh, oh, San Barbara, Los Angeles. Oh, Highway 101. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is near the uh, at the time. Uh. Uh, no fall from from after no fall. Uh, no, no, no fall. No fall to the Norfolk. Is that what you It's Virginia. The 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 day near no no fog the 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 American Air Force base there there is a near there this is the 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 president who ex president the the Reagan Reagan lived there the the city uh huh then oh naval base I'm seeing what people are saying. This is by by KGB spy Yuri. Yeah. This is the uh, photo at that time. Yeah. No. Oh, let me let me. It's okay. That's cool. But it's it's like a published book that people can buy in Korea. Yes. yes oh, that's cool. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to say it, like? Your name, like people can look it up uh, that are watching. If you if you say, because mm, oh, <laughs> I'm just curious, so they might be they, maybe someone wants to read your book. Yes. What, what's it called? Uh, my uh, bike riding uh, yeah. book, uh, which I started from uh, Seattle to uh, Mexico border yeah. along the American. Uh, Pacific Sea Coast, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, was uh, about thirty two uh, hundred uh, kilometers yeah. at the time. Uh, I wrote that about that. I wrote the book 
published uh, in 19, or uh, no, no, 2018. Okay. 2018. That book in Korean, uh, call, uh, name is uh, Mi Taepyongyang을 달리다. Okay. Uh, People which, can look that up. Yes, uh, it is uh, uh, on, uh, in the uh, bookstores. Okay. <laughs> <actually. laughs> yeah. Because some people that watch are Korean, so they can probably look it up and find yes, it. Yes. And, and what about your KGB one? And my second book is uh, novel. Uh, name is KGB Spy Yuri, which is uh, uh, about a uh, 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 student, uh, middle school student, uh, mm. who was uh, captured by. Uh, Soviet uh, 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 intelligence uh, officers uh, okay. from uh, Korean the East Sea Coast uh, mm -hmm. while he was uh, uh, playing uh, rocket, rockets uh, which he made handmade mm -hmm. and uh, they made some problem and he was uh, captured to uh, Vladivostok yeah. at that time he was uh, uh, in middle school and uh, later from that time he was uh, uh, educated as a KGB spy. Oh, okay, and, uh, that sounds yeah, cool, he, man. <laughs> yeah, he then uh, uh, graduated the KGB uh, uh, spy school. Yeah, and uh, uh, he was sent uh, as a uh, TASS communication mm. reporter. Uh, that was his uh, his uh, hidden uh, his his uh, uh, another title for mm. his uh, uh, covert uh, activity in uh, in the world. So he then uh, dispatched to Pyongyang. There he made a great success, mm. and after that he then came into Korea too. Yeah, and uh, shouldn't give the whole book away. People got to read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's too long. Anyway, what do you mean it's too long? That's the point of a book. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, some people would have heard that and understand it. So maybe they'll look it up and read uh, your please, book. That's uh, cool. <laughs> get some uh, interest and uh, research. <laughs> Internet. And buy it. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a? Any other bike tours you have coming up in the future, in Korea did, or did, other countries? I did quite many. Ah, two years ago, uh, yes, two, three years ago, no, no, three years ago, I started from uh, Venice. Yeah, Italy. I started from yeah. Venice. Uh, I made a circle, uh, Balkan Peninsula. I Iberian Peninsula. Like Balkan, Balkan Peninsula. Oh, Balkan Peninsula. Oh, down Balkan. to Greece? Yes, yeah. I mean uh, from Venice, Italy. Yeah. Oh, oh, you, you followed Venice Italy around. To, uh, no, uh, to, uh, to Venice, Ven from Italy, uh, Slovenia, Slovenia, Croatia. Slovenia, Croatia. Ah, okay, okay. Adriatic coast. Croatia, yeah. Albania. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Montenegro, Albania, Greece. Yeah, my, my girlfriend just uh, flew to Greece. She's riding her bicycle mm. from Greece up uh, Greece, Albania, oh, up Croatia. The, 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 yeah, 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 she's yeah, doing yeah. that right now. <laughs> oh, now? Yeah, yeah. He, she's doing. She just flew, landed in Greece yesterday. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, great, yeah. great. Was it a good ride? The terrible one was, uh, the, it was too hilly. In Greece? The, the sea coast, I mean. The, uh, or the whole Croatia. Adriatic, yeah. Oh, Sarah's gonna hit and, that. <laughs> and uh, from Athens to uh -oh. to uh, the the Turkey. The, Athens to Turkey. The, 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 oh, you went to Turkey. Yes, the, yeah. the, the, the big city, the the old Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a, that was a oh, down very very big big wave. It yeah. was like and at that time. The wind was so strong. Oh yeah. East wind. Yeah. Uh, blowing from the uh, Black Sea. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was killing. Yeah. I was totally. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the bike, the wind is our number one enemy. Uh, <laughs> it was too strong. Yeah. I even started at, at four o'clock, four thirty. To beat like the wind. Yeah. 
even that early morning. Yeah, still this, too much. Yeah. That time, so the wind was no stop. Mm. There was no stop. Yeah. Oh, it was a hell. It was a real hell. I had that around when I was doing like uh, Portugal and Spain near the very southern tip of, of Portugal. Oh, 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 oh. There's a bunch of winds coming off the Atlantic. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And like one time I got fully blown off the road yeah, into yeah. a ditch. Because <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just, mm. oh, it's, it's hard to handle. And then on a, a big touring bike, the mm. panniers, the oh, bags, yeah, 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 yeah. give a wider surface area for the wind mm. to push. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I did uh, the same, I had the same experience. Uh, the, 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 from, it's okay. What is the mountain? Uh, the, the Pyrenees. Pyrenees, yeah. yeah. Pyrenees. From, from the, the Pyrenees to Rome de Valleso, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, Camino de Santiago. Yeah. From Sengang Piet Pol, Piet Pol to Rome de Valles, we, we have to go up. The mm. That time, oh, it was blowing. I was too sick. I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. no. Yeah, no, no fun. No fun. Oh, it was at the time. Yeah. Makes a good story though. Yeah. But that was <laughs> Only <not>. after. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, nice to talk to you. You as well. Mm. Well, enjoy your ride today. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have only 12, 12 kilometers left. Oh, to, oh almost done. Today. Okay. Because yeah. uh, after this, I have to ride back to Seoul. Because oh. I got to go and uh, yes, yes, yes. get my medal. Mm. <laughs> How do you go to Seoul? On a bike. Uh, uh, I'll ride. On bike? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've already rode like 2,600 kilometers in Korea. Mm. What's another 400? <laughs> From here to Seoul. Yeah. Is like 400, 300? Do you know? But to do the whole book was like 2,600. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even Koreans, there are not many. Yeah, that it's have done. Yeah. 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 yeah very good. Yeah. Anyway, okay. enjoy the ride. Find 12 kilometers. Oh, I, I don't know your name. Ah, my name is Trevor. I got, yeah, we can write down. Do you uh, use Facebook or something? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Facebook, uh, Facebook. Right. Okay. this is just, uh, search. search. Hmm? Oh, that was your book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you this, want me? Uh, do you know here? Uh, no, where is it? That? Oh, that's the, uh, I, I've heard of that. Uh, mm. uh, canal, canal for uh, ships. <laughs> yes, yes. It it's like uh, ancient, isn't it? Like uh, yes, ancient. Peloponnesos, uh, mm. Corinthos, mm -hmm. Corinthos, Corinthos, Canal Corinthos. Mm. This is my Facebook. Can I photo, photo, take photo. Wait, I can just add me from here. Wait, if we go okay, okay. back here, search. Uh, can you switch to? Uh, yeah, there. My name is Trevor. Mm -hmm. Dan, look, search. This is me. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm and then, if you want want to see my filming, it's this link here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, friends. Okay. <laughs> All right, friends. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Gotcha. Enjoy the ride. Gotcha. Okay. All right. How we going, man? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I learned this one I need to use my own ink for because we've been here before. Okay, let's not have the bike fall over again. <laughs> I got distracted. I parked the bike when I first got here and I'm just like, oh, I'm chatting with these guys. Put it on kickstand and the wheel just ran away. That's why we use the parking brake. All right, guys. So. <laughs> so, this is a big one. This is my Korea's cross-country cycling road tour passport. issued to me by the Ministry of the Environment and the Ministry of the Interior and Safety. 
We've been doing this for, well, between two trips, 32 days. We started here in Seoul. We did this page. We kept going. We kept going. We kept going. And going. And going. And going. And going. Here we are here. This is Hyanga Park. This is the one we have to get. All these. All these. All these. Jeju we were just for. That's it. So we just have this one final spot to fill. One final one. And once this is there, and we take this back to Seoul, and the Korean government verifies all these stamps, I get a gold medal. Gold medal. Grand Slam. Officially completed in one second. Okay, a couple seconds. Let's get it. I'm gonna leave my ink pad here actually, because this one's dry. And I don't need another one. Hi. Hello. Hello. There it is, the final one, Hyanga Park. That one came out relatively clean, legible at least. The stamp was a little bit worn out. That's it. Grand Slam completed. We've done it. It's gold medal time, guys. I think these, I think this cafe might actually be open. Let's go check. We can get like a cold drink and talk about it. We have to uh, plan how to get back to Seoul. It's like 400 kilometers from here. Uh, thanks for uh, all the bits and the uh, six month resub and the. <laughs> hey, scam train. All right, let's get out of the way. There's a bunch of cyclists showing up. Hi. YouTube and uh, live. <laughs> I just finished. Final stamp. Grand Slam. Grand Slam. Mm. Yeah. Where are you from? Canada. Canada? Yeah. <laughs> have some, have some boy. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Where are you going? Suncheon. Uh, uh, Suncheon. Suncheon. Oh, Suncheon. Mm. How far? Uh, mm. Yongin. Uh, Yongin city. Ah, uh, okay. Now I have to ride back to Seoul. <laughs> Hmm? Brooks. Brooks, yeah. <laughs> I do lots of bike riding, like I cross Canada. Bike weight. Oh, <laughs> like 45 kilo. Oh, strong man. Wow. But I have like all my uh, camping, like tent and everything. Yeah. 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 Mm. Single? Oh, single rider? It, like by myself? Oh. Or? It was like 32 days to do all stamps. Wow. Yeah. And then I think 2,600 2, kilometers. <laughs> yeah, live. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. You can be on live. We are from Korea. Hello. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye-bye. We're just going over here. I'm not even going far. We met some nice people though. Wait, coffee, hot, iced tea, hand, handmade tea? Get some handmade tea. Our drinks in there. We got Cass. Let's have a beer. Cider. A peach drink. Powerade, Gatorade. Iced coffee, tea. I'm curious about these teas. Celebratory beer? Okay, actually, yeah, we probably should have a beer. All right, let's get a beer. You guys, <laughs> you didn't have to try very hard, but you convinced me. All right. Uh, anonymous with the five gift subs. Thank you very much. Actually, let's, let's pay cash. Come like that. All right, let's have a little sit down. Mm. Yeah, on that picnic table. One moment, please. I, I hear alerts and I just need to get my beer and get settled. Okay. There we go. We're settled. Okay. Um, we got Trixie with the tenor. That's near it. Korea, South Korea Grand Slam, and Creekside with a fiver as well. Congrats, beer time. It is beer time. Uh, usually I don't have one at three because I get I get tired after having a beer, but I guess I don't really have to be energetic because we've done what we have to do. Well, it's gonna drop us again, probably, probably. But um, yes, it is the ass beer. <laughs> so. Like, let me go back through this because it, it's not actually 88 in the some of these are repeats uh, I don't actually know <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you Felix Dogbert thank you so much for that um, can I get my other phone out let's look through this book a little bit more a little more thoroughly here. This camera's not the best for that. Okay. I'm gonna switch scenes to this. Okay. Okay, so I, I want to kind of walk through this with you guys. Uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. I don't have the mic on this, but you should be able to hopefully maybe hear me. Okay, so here it is. First few pages are just like information. Ah, sorry. Okay, how do I do this with one hand? <laughs> Let's go wide angle. 
Alright. Okay, this way. Okay. Well, I guess we could count them on these ones, because these should all be... They shouldn't repeat these, right? Or do they repeat these? Because there's a few that showed up on two different pages, which is why we ended up here again. Here's the map of the whole routes, all the places we have to go, and Jeju. So we've been to all these, all over Korea. So like Korea isn't a particularly large country, but um, <laughs> if you're gonna do all these routes and get every checkpoint, like you gotta go all over the freaking country, and but. Because, like, you can tell some of these are completely disconnected. Like, this East Coast route, it's not connected to anything. But, like, we went to Busan and then we just rode up the East Coast anyway, even though we weren't getting stamps. Um, so we did a whole lot of inefficiencies because I didn't feel like taking buses. Hangar Park's last stamp? Yes, we are completed. I'll just kind of take you through this a little bit more. Because I show you this through the bike camera but it's like it doesn't really show it that well um this is where we started in seoul so on this map over here the ara west sea lock and it starts heading out this way we do one that goes up here and down here up there down here over to this dam back and then there that's where we started this is the start of that Peridotrian cheered 100 bits. Uh, thank you for the 100 bits. Peridotrian. 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 Oh, was this? What was the one I screwed up on? It was this one. Right? Alright, so this train, this, this train one is not supposed to go here. <laughs> this train one is supposed to go here, but I missed one in Seoul, so I accidentally stamped it here and then had to stamp the other one there. I still have a beer to drink, but I'm kind of excited to look through this. Now that it's completionist, but you can see like some of them, you can just are quite faded, like the stamp or the ink was like not the best. So they might ask for verification for those. Luckily this is all live stream, so I have very easy verification of all this. This is a non-official one, it's just a random checkpoint in the middle of nowhere that we uh, decided to get as well. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, what is this? What is it? I'm given a snack. Oh, okay. <laughs> snack. Okay, I gotta eat this. This one's frozen, so I gotta eat this right now. This looks like a hot dog. It's a frozen hot dog. Yes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so, we don't ice cream, wrapped him. This is nougat, so. What is nougat? You get the feeling you like any food? It makes traveling a lot more enjoyable if you just like everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you.
Grand Slam Certification Center, get you to commit? I do, it's in Seoul though. I'm notably far away from Seoul. <laughs> we got a ride. I think it's close to 400 kilometers. Alright. Mm. East Coast Trailing Good North Korea border. Like close to it. About as close as you can go without going for a proper like guided DMZ tour. Two sixty seven Seoul according to Google. Can't you not even navigate via Google? Check on my phone in a second. Pick and choose your routes now, don't have to think about checkpoints. Yes, this is true. Now, it might be more enjoyable to find, like, to ride on an official route, I don't know. Well, I'll have to look. Stop and enjoy the size too? No, I'm conflicted. Well, I want to try and take it slow. But I feel like I'm in decent shape now, so I kind of want to like see how fast we can do it. If it's actually only 278 kilometers, I can probably do that in one go, it's like in a day. If I do from here on Cacao Maps to exit, exit, route from current to choose on map, I gotta go to the west coast of Seoul. Where is it? Is it kind of around here? Maybe? Rest area. Maybe? Is it there? Yeah, right, we'll just go to kind of Western Seoul. Sure, stick here. And 438.5 kilometers. <laughs> Right now, it's bright out. Uh, it does say a good chunk of that's on bike paths. Two more for our room. Yeah, so this is 25 hours, 18 minutes, you can never stop, and you probably average like 24 hours an hour for that time. Which I have to congratulate you on your accomplishment. How many Canadians can say they have accomplished the trips you have? I would say none you are one out of 39 plus million in Canada. Congrats, you deserve this and keep the trips coming. Thank you for the 100 bits, I appreciate it. I've done a very, very specific set of trips, so... I think there's just enough randomness there that I'm the only person that's completed the types of trips I've done. And done all of those. Because I, like, I just do weird things. Man's ATV won't start. Yeah, man, will be a complete trip on e-bike. I don't think they limit you to only a manual bicycle. I I, I saw someone doing all the stamps on an e-bike.
freaked out. I wasn't planning on eating this, but it's frozen, so I gotta eat it right away. One zero. Back in the wrapper. So, I was trying to go through all the pages here. Where are you left off? So some of them are really crisp and clean. You can actually see the image that it's trying to portray. And then other ones are, uh, are less so. Oh yeah, and our detour. Some of these detours are actually like took a quite a bit of riding, and then you have to do the whole thing in reverse. So this is this is the, the the stamp I said is my favorite one. It's not even an official one. It's just large, and it makes the page look good. This one's upside down, but that's okay. Your writing is much better than average American? Wait, when, where do you see my writing? It's printed? These are stamps. <laughs> you think I drew these? Oh, the names, okay. <laughs> Felt like the stamps on the... <laughs> Well, maybe we should. So, so the issue is that occasionally, like, there's a few ones that show up on two pages, which is actually why we had to come back here. But I thought I'd give you a closer look at all the stamps that we did, because you usually just kind of see them at a glance. But now that it's completed... Oh, we'd show you the whole shebang. The, this section was a bit rough. So these are legible. That's mostly legible. That's barely legible. Mang? Mango? <laughs> this I don't think is legible. I'm probably gonna have to ver verify this one. This wasn't a lack of ink or anything, just the stamp had no definition left. And then these are fine. So, it's a stamp issue. Some are more faded, some are more darker. This one I barely got on the page, at least the Sunrise Park one. Ah, and the final page, did you? Let me start this way, and went around the island this way. Page 22 bomb stamp here on the other page. One sec, I just dropped some garbage. Page 
22. They're actually numbered. Oh, okay. They, I never even noticed they had numbers on them. 21. 22. Sangpoon Bridge. You're wondering if it's shown on another page? Uh, it's the one that goes to Endong Dam. Is it before or after? Where's the one for Endong Dam? It was one of those. That's Chung Dam. Nope. Oh, okay, it was back that way. 22. Alright, that. Thank you. Uh, Sangpung Bridge. Where's the one Endong Dam? Sangpung Bridge. Ah, here we go. Uh, Sangju Sang Bridge. And then Endong Dam. Is that the same? I feel like some of the the actual things they wrote here are like not accurate. Was that the same? Yeah, it was the same. It's the same stamp. Sang Kung Bridge, and then they say this slightly differently, but it's the same one. And it goes out to Andong Dam. So, yeah, that one's a double. This one is a double. Um, so, yeah, this one. This is where we are right now. Hang apart. But it's also on this page. Yeah. yeah. What's up? So, anyway, let's have a beer. With our passport. Come by. For all those who do, this asks for you. Alright, celebratory beer. Feels good, man. Sit there all day getting some of her beer. Yeah. I'm moving in. <laughs> okay. So, um, drinking ass. Yeah, it's socially acceptable now. Um, I have to take a closer look at our route to get up to uh, to Seoul. So, yeah, 430-ish kilometers is a lot. So we'll, we'll probably do some of that today. Like, we can try and push hard and do it in two days. <laughs> That's two 200 kilometer days. If I do another, like, 30-something kilometers today. Cloudy and breezy. Beer's stamina elec elixir. I when I rode my bike across Canada, sometimes I'd have a drink with lunch when I stopped. But I found beer was bad for my like energy levels midday. I like finishing a day with a beer, but usually if I'm planning on riding more, I don't have a beer midday because it makes me feel sluggish. What I could do across Canada? A Caesar works. Yeah, 
Like this beer's only 140 calories. I need I need ass to pump those numbers up. 140 is not enough. Um, okay, so we are at... <clears throat> 340, we got three hours, so the sun's about to set. So yeah, we should get a little bit of distance down. Got all the stamps, that's hella cool. And then yeah, when you get your reward thingy. I think in theory, if I show up in person in Seoul with my passport all completed, I get it in person. Round. Also, apparently, it's like engraved with your name and stuff. But I think they do it on site, so you can get it that day. I think. We just have to ride 438 kilometers. Okay. Just so it's more casual, I'm gonna switch back. Okay, should be back on the bike camera. And I'm not like, I just had you like leaning on the umbrella post. Hey. 438 ain't no thing. Yeah, we, well we can make that easier or difficult depending on how we want to do it, the route we want to take and how fast we want to accomplish that. Knowing you, you go for a challenge. I kind of want to. Like, I feel in decent shape. I still just, like, I'm concerned I'm going to aggravate my knee again, but we'll see. Pump more and ride real fast. <laughs> uh, sorry, what was your name? I can't read your name. Well, let me get Brian to read it again. Brandon 69 shared 300 bits. Congrats. Was that Brandon 69? real fast. <laughs> I got you. Pump more ass and ride real fast. I got you. I got you. We'll do after this beer and maybe some more snacks. I'll probably have the rest of my buttercream bread. Nice. Um, and then uh, see what kind of distance we can get down. Right on. But yeah, I will see if, like, there are certificate pages in there. I never bothered to do them because they were going to be too much of a pain to get them for pretty much every, most of the different bike routes you can do for just finishing one segment. You can get a little certificate in your passport for that segment. Um, but you have to, like, go to the one verification center on that route during opening hours, and you have to do the route in a certain direction to actually finish it in the location where it makes sense to get it certified. So, yeah. Very nice little resting area. Yeah, so I, I've been here before, but like this little roadside stand was closed when I last came through here. So, um, I don't know if they just pick an opening date or because the weather's like starting to feel like nice bringing people out that they're uh, decide to open just for the nice weather. I still enjoyed the bit north of here as it was mountainous with a few climbs. So, let me look at the Wait, south here, north here. Let's see. Elevation profile. Oh yeah, just just north of here. Uh, oh no, how does this thing work? Looks like there's a good climb. Ugh. Cacao maps. How do you work? Uh, 
Anyway, yeah, potentially today even. Is that the big climb or is that just a bigger climb? I don't know. So we might have a good climb today. Which will be good. Across the large dam, about 40 kilometers north too. I'd have to <laughs> look at a map and remember. But like the route I'm taking north or this that's re recommending north, I think is different. Dreaming in dog years just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Isn't it a great day? Wow we It's a beauty. Uh, Dreaming Dog Years. Thank you for the Ooh, look at that. Forty five month resub. Forty five months, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So this has me, yeah, winding through probably, yeah, the official path along some river valleys to start with, but then it just puts me on a road, a road following in parallel to the main road. Uh, that's probably what I took before. Back. Um, Go to Jeonju, and then we head a little bit west. I think it's a different route than what we took before, which is good. Daylight's a wasting. Oh, we're gonna finish this beer, and I'm gonna have some more food to keep my calorie count up. Um, but yeah, I won't be here long, and I want to get riding because I'm actually get like we're in a cloud here, and the wind's picking up, so it's a little bit cold. Crazy also 07 cheered 100 bits. Have you now thought about the weather for the next, say, three days to get you to Seoul? That's a good question. Also, hopefully, you can get the ministry to allow you to stream the award acceptance. It's a big deal to us and you for what you have done. I, yeah, no, I very much would like to do that. Um, yeah, my concern is it's like at a, at a government office and stuff like that, so I don't know how they feel about cameras and stuff like that. Because, like, this is issued by the government. It's not like a. Like a <laughs> just cycling enthusiast set up an organization in Korea. This is the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of the Interior and Safety. Um, so, yeah, hopefully they let me film it. Um, as for the weather, today looks good, tomorrow looks good, next day looks pretty good, a little bit of precipitation chance, but just if it happens, probably sporadic. Friday looks good, Saturday looks good. Uh, Sunday, Monday, it looks like we might get some chances of rain here, but, yeah. Now, that's for this location here. We'll hopefully by that point be 438 kilometers north of here. Not accept any other bike passport later that is not government issued now. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> government issued. It's good publicity should allow to stream it. Well, I think I'd need, like, some Korean person to talk to them about it if we were going to, like, feel 100% guaranteed that they were okay with it. Want to ride along the West Coast? I don't know if there's official routes along the whole West Coast. This takes me close-ish to the West Coast. When I say official routes, I mean just, like, a developed route. Well, you know, the other thing I should check, actually, is um, I have an app called Windy. And it shows you what the winds should be doing. So let's just choose. So today, winds are blowing from the east west. Tomorrow, from the east west. Let's scroll out a bit here. So it does depend. So, generally heading north today, shouldn't have a headwind, might have some crosswind. Tomorrow looks like, for a lot of my route, it'll be crosswind, potentially a little bit of a tailwind. Nothing strong, but like, a little bit. Certainly not fighting me. And then um, Thursday, it's not particularly windy, but it shouldn't be fight. Well, that's around when I'm getting to Seoul, maybe a little headwind around Seoul. It's getting windy though. 
<clears throat> present the mail stream as PR sent so they allow streaming. I don't know how to present that. Like, <laughs> if I contact the, you know, I don't even know who to contact. Ooh, he's one of those big ass wasps. <laughs> Scary looking dude. They got big booties. All right. Time to go before you get hit by the umbrella. That's why I'm wearing my helmet. Safety first. Mm. Let's get this bread in me. It's got cream in it, so I should eat this sooner rather than later. You guys don't have a helmet? Well, we just gotta suck it up. You guys survived the drop earlier when I dropped you right before I got the stamp here. It's one of the reasons why bike touring setup's good with this third person camera because my rear panniers are so thick. When we drop the bike, the panniers hit the ground before the camera does. So. Will you keep the passport as a memento? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they will. I hope they will. They must have a garbage here. Let's see one. I'm sure there's one. I think we have to go right back through that tunnel we just rode through to get here. White barrel, blue lid behind you, Everton. The one right there. I don't think that's garbage. Looks like a planter, but it has just like a a pot. No, not a pot. A plastic tub inside. But maybe it's garbage. I'll just go over to where that the guys that sold me the, the beer, and I'll just be like, he'll point me in the right direction. Probably need to grab a new battery. Yeah, that battery's dead. Ah. New battery time. And we're good. Elizabeth, the latest put something in it? Is she? Oh. Well, there you go. Hundred percent. That's what I like to see.
You should have somewhere to put like bottles and cans though. But I'll just look confused and he'll point me in the right direction. Dogs steal any food waste? They might. Do dogs recycle aluminum? Does their digestion handle aluminum? There. Oh, that. Bins behind here. They're hiding. I still got my chocolate coffee. Milk. Okay, just put you here for a second. I gotta close this pan here. Go. I'm gonna open up a bag of gummy candies so while I'm riding I can load up. It's important. Those look like I want to fall out, so I ate them. Uh, CM Cyan. Cyan, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Twitch Baggers. I appreciate it. Congrats on collecting all the stamps. Thank you very much. We have done it. All right, zero meters, 437.8 kilometers left. Perfect. So, yeah, we go back through the tunnel, down, back along there. Okay. All right. All right. You guys ready to ride 437.8 kilometers? Go back to Seoul. All right, let's get this verified. Let's get this freaking gold medal. I have ridden so much of Korea. It will be over 3,000 kilometers of cycling Korea to complete this whole thing. And when you look at the, oh, it's so echoey.
I'm sorry, I, I can't Halo chant as good as whoever the heck first did it. Hold up. What is this thing? Who is this? This bench is weird. Sorry, just this lower one made it, it. I rode past it and I thought it was like a person on their hands and knees. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm like, <laughs> Korea's getting into some weird, freaky stuff. Uh, but that was actually really cool. <laughs> it looked sus. It did look suck, sus. So I had to go back and look at it. Another one. <laughs> Another person in the, uh, who has assumed the position. What else can we do in the tunnel? <laughs> Could do some beatboxing. Um, no, I just echoey, so I feel like I want to do stuff. Crazy horse, so 07 cheered 100 bits. Now you can take in the countryside more as you travel back and not having to concentrate on stamps and not missing a turn. Just enjoy this ride and view and thank you for allowing us to watch it and see this awesome country. Well, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, Z4 yeah, by no, 4R it's raided good. my stream with 31 viewers. All the audio changes as soon as you're out of the tunnel. Um, Oh, it's been super enjoyable. Like, I'll still kind of have to pay attention. Like, if I miss a turn, then I'm getting off route, then I'm going to be, like, on a highway or something like that. But, yeah, I don't have to pay attention to, like, where our next stamp is. Probably more just where our next resupply is. So uh, we can eat enough food to get back to, to Seoul without, you know, fading away. Uh, but we got 4x4 four four with the rate. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good stream. And everyone, welcome to South Korea. Where uh, we are on kind of a victory lap, a 437.8 kilometer victory lap. Because we just finished what's called the Grand Slam Tour of South Korea, where I filled, well, in like 26, 2700 kilometers, we uh, filled out a uh, official South Korea bicycle passport book of all these official bike tour routes in Korea and now we've just completed every single stamp in that passport which means I qualify to win a gold medal but the only way to get the gold medal is to get back to Seoul and I'm very far from Seoul well far from Seoul from a South Korean perspective I got 437.8 kilometers to get there there's a car what are you doing here Oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> you can do it as long as we're eel powered for that <laughs> masculine vitality that the eel Elysian provides. Death tipped thirteen dollars and thirty-seven cents. Thank you. Oh. Congratulations, Hitch. Epic. Thank you very much for the elite donation, Elysian Derp. Thank you for the donation and the jams. <laughs> Why are the red pass so bumpy? <laughs> Gets me every time. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Great choice, Salesian Derp. I appreciate it. Let's enjoy the ride. 437.8 kilometers. It's just a zip. Just a short tinge down the road.
I like these vibes. Feels great. Feels good. <laughs> Wait, I never... I, <laughs> I didn't realize the, <laughs> the double meaning here. We're going to Seoul. <laughs> the song Soul Man. <laughs> Let's go to Soul Man. I didn't put the pieces together until now. I was just enjoying the vibes. I got there eventually. <laughs> I'm a little slow sometimes, right? <laughs> as long as it takes get the soul. Well, it's 437.8 kilometers from where we just left from like five minutes ago. Less than five minutes ago. A while. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elysian Derp. I appreciate it. The elite donation. Get a gold medal. So I'm trying to do. <laughs> I've qualified. But I have to like finish and actually get to the place to verify that I can, I, I'm allowed to receive it. Palita 61 tipped $19. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, I got Kalita with another donation. $19. Been playing some jams for us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for setting the vibes. Thanks for the 19. Take a take a. Yeah, you can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king, calm, banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You can talk the guy, go banging on his door. You can burn your hands. Why did this went quiet for a second? Why do you get quiet sometimes for a couple seconds? <laughs> what are you doing? Is the battery getting low? And right. <laughs> 300 miles to go. Easy. Let's get it. So healthy, brother. You can be too if you do cardiovascular exercise every day. <laughs> it's a great way to stay in shape. It's a little breezy. Luckily, I'm about to do a nice turn to the left here. You'll see a speed difference in a couple seconds here. I don't know, see what my average is right now and compare it to what I'm doing in like 30 seconds a minute.
Oh, thank you very much, Kalita. Again, I really appreciate it. I like the vibes too. All right, let's get <laughs> out of the wind and, well, into the wind in a different direction. Oh, it sounds so much quieter already. All right, oh yeah, so much better. You gotta love it. All right, any speed monitors? Where are we switching to? Veilwu Aratip, $15. Thank you, thank you for being you. <laughs> Looking forward to your future adventures. Grats. Thank you for the $15, the jams, and the kind words. Uh, Vilwura. I appreciate it, we made a cow moo. <laughs> I don't know this song, but I'm digging the vibes. Okay, no, I do know the sign. <laughs> the song a little bit. The first side. Yeah, I didn't know the first verse or whatever, but I'm gonna get more to the chorus. I, I do know it. When it shows the blue line going in two different directions, I <laughs> my brain like freezes and I'm like, how do I choose which one way to go when there's two blue lines? I'm used to following the blue line. One blue line. Two blue lines is too many. Holy, look at the, is that a drone? That's a big bullet. Is that a hexacopter? Oh, my phone's about to die. Huh. I need to switch my battery over. Where? I know it's too. I'm gonna. I'll take a picture really quick and post it on Discord.
I need to get one of these for my filming. <laughs> Anyways, it'll be in my um, general Discord chat. Action cameras are really bad at picking up things from a distance. Uh, it is a, yeah, six, a heck, 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 what's six blades? Hexacopter? Behind, oh, it's behind the sign now. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. It's big. So small and strange. I know, it's actually really big though. You can see it contrasted with the sky now. And it's going down. Now it'll be back on the mountain. All right, it's cool. It's big. Probably expensive. See, that's the one. <laughs> that's definitely the type of drone that you need a drone license for. That one's not considered a toy like mine is. I had to break my, my vibes. I, I, was in, I was in the zone cycling. Oh my, that's a big drone. <laughs> I gotta look at it. Uh-oh. Got... Sorry. Describe how big. Bigger than mine. I could probably do some sick shots with that. Steep and metal. This gets wet. This, like it's got, you know, metal like grid texture on it, but it probably still would be. No cars. All right. Uh, yeah, we crossed this bridge. Let's go pick the sweet. Yeah, that's a 10x optical zoom on an S22 Ultra. Over one meter in diameter. Whew. He's a chunky boy. Okay. Um, maybe we just found the river to the left. We should turn left up here. Pretty sure. When you come to Finland, Trev. Ah, uh, good question. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, likely whenever I go and rescue my solar panel trailer. Um, cause it's in uh, Tromsø, Norway. So we could do a trip down from there. But I, I don't know, like I haven't planned my, my summer trips yet. I have a list of ideas, but nothing's decided upon. Stay good rest of no live streaming tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How many days straight have we been going? I just feel like we haven't pushed that hard. Like we had some good days on uh, Jeju. But uh, it'd be kind of premature. I think we're just gonna push to Seoul. Actually, and like the weather next, you know, tomorrow is, is decent. The next day's okay. But in a couple of days, the weather's supposed to get a little bit worse, so. We'll see. See how I feel. July, August, best to come. Okay. Hmm, yeah, I'll have to see. Bike tour is over, guys. We just <laughs> I just got to get that passport verified, which involves a few days of riding. It's 400, well, where we just set off from 
few kilometers ago. 437.8 kilometers. Count is it there? 4.22 p.m. Where are the people? Not on this dike road. Hey, except for these people. But there's a lot of houses here. There's the occasional farm, so probably not. Just hanging out at a farm. CRD is for summer. Top secret. I don't tell people my trips until we do them. Tomorrow's voting day in Korea. Is it a holiday? As in like, do people get a day off work or anything nice like that? I think that's a logical thing to do. Cows. You tried parallel, parallel 27, 25 route, and then one to Seoul. Um, I don't know, I just put it into cacao maps and uh, I'm you know, giving her. <laughs> I don't know what it's telling me. At least for the first bit, we're just following the this main route, which is good. But this will end and then we'll have to go off route. Let's get them all probably closes at 5 p.m. Well, if I get picked up by an F-18, I might be able to make it there just in time for 5 o'clock. Cross our fingers for a quick military jet pickup. Light the afterburner, and I can verify my passport before closing today. Country of similar stamp passports cycling in Korea? Uh, no, not that I know of. And before someone says Japan has a passport for train stations in Japan, that's not a bicycle. <laughs> I think I've heard you can get like some stamps or something like that doing the Santiago de Compostela kind of like pilgrimage route. I don't know if you just collect stamps or you do anything once you have the stamps, but. Yeah. Okay, so left. You're used to using hand signals. I haven't really noticed many cyclists using hand signals. I think it's pretty. So one I use and Canadians should know is like when you go to driving school, they teach you hand signals like should your turn signals or break and and or brake lights not working, you can you put your hand out your left window as you drive on the left side and use your hand to signal what you're doing. And because you can only use your left hand, obviously left is this, but what do you do for right? This, <laughs> what do you do for stop? This, but I'd use that for cycling. I just keep my dominant hand on the bar and just use my left hand to signal. And a lot of people in chat would be very confused when I do this for a right turn. 
And to me, it's super logical. <laughs> but uh, apparently, it's very confusing. But yeah, um, I feel like when I've seen like the roadies, the cyclists on the road, I haven't seen them really signaling. You're not a car? Well, in most places I'm considered a vehicle. Nice <laughs> bridge. that for biking in America? Used for a car? Really? That's how I <laughs> learned it. Cause like, like there has to be a system if, if your, your taillights aren't working in your car. How do you let people know? <laughs> but you only have one left hand out a window to be able to notify people, so. All right, it's logical to me. But I've more started like, if I'm turning right, pointing right with my right hand because I don't know. If, if you guys are getting confused, then probably some of the cars are as well. They run the drop bar, do? That's how I change gears. So this one is my front chain ring for a three by nine gearing setup. So this is one, two, three. And then the right side is one through nine. Use those hand signals on snowmobiles in Canada. Oh, do you? Hey, it's a vehicle. If a bike is a vehicle, and a snowmobile must be a vehicle. Ooh, she's breezy. When this river turns left, that'll be helpful. I think I could have stayed on the other side. I think it looks like I just follow that road and it would be a lot faster, a lot smoother. Ooh. Or can they use hand signals also? Uh, I, I think it's supposed to be the person in control of the vehicle doing the, like responsible for the operation and control of the vehicle. So I don't know if, I don't think a passenger sticking their arm out the window is supposed to mean anything. Sure, so many days. How about trip or two you want to do in the future? Oh, I want to hitchhike into space. Um, so it's a long term goal. We'll see if we can make it happen. Now we're just, uh, thumb sticking out. Yeah. As, you know, controversial as a figure as he is these days, I could definitely see Elon Musk just being like, you know, once it's more normal to take the occasional <laughs> non-astronaut up, 
the starship or whatever once it becomes more of a thing. I could see him like just finding it funny and be like, yeah, let's take a hitchhiker. I think the dude's like quoted Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy before, so. Okay, Zero Neko just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Ko Neko with the two months. Prime, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Jumping in space, okay? Yeah. First time seeing this dope, seeing the real rats. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining. Welcome to the ride. Two were completed. We've done all stamps. Now we just gotta cash them in. Dog cheered five Take our passport to Seoul and just get our gold man. medal. <laughs> I'm glad you're leaning in on that. Thanks for the 500 bits, man. I appreciate it. Like your calves by now? I wish they were bigger. Unfortunately, endurance cycling doesn't really build muscle bulk. It's an endurance exercise, so it's like, well, I have like pretty much no fat, so what muscle I do have is like visible, but I can try and show you like my muscles that are there later, but like, it's, it, you're not gonna be like, wow, look at that. <laughs> it's, uh, same with like marathon runners, you'll see them, they're, they're skinny. I am skinny. Drone time, it is kind of pretty, like it actually is getting really windy. Luckily, this direction is a good way to go. If the, when the river turns this way, we get more fighting. This was a good way to go. That would be a bad way to ride right now, uh, based on wind. I'm still scared to use the drone in any kind of gusty wind, because it weighs 249 grams. And they do have like a, a rated maximum, which seems actually quite windy, but uh, that amount of wind scares me. All right, when we were coming south to do this route, going under this bridge here, it was flooded. Is it still flooded? No, it's not. I cleaned it up. Was it this one that was flooded? I thought it was this one. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. My flat tires per stamp. <laughs> I've had one flat in the entirety of South Korea in however many kilometers, 2,700. Um, so <laughs> the ratio of flat tire to stamp is quite low. Uh, fast tag, thanks for the bits. Bug. I don't believe you. Bugs don't exist. Let's see his passport physically. Let's see. It's safely tucked into my handlebar bag. Is it secret? Is it safe? Yes. Well, it's not secret, but it's safe. Unless I fall in a river. How many bugs do you have per stamp? I don't think I've had too many bugs on this trip. Like now it's getting more buggy. We had one evening of riding along the river, closer to the sunset, where I, there was like full swarms of bugs just going over. It was a little crazy. I was scared to open my mouth because <laughs> it was just like, as I was riding, it just felt like, like my whole body was like tingling from just like smacking into these tiny little bugs the whole time. 
feel like there was a this is gonna be a weird connection in Japan in some of the onsens like the public baths where you get you know naked and just bathe with a bunch of dudes um they have these like certain dipping pools that are like electric baths with like a panel on there emitting like electrical current into the water and it like gets all tingly <laughs> as you get close <laughs> anyway it felt like like a, like a low level tingle when I was far away of just like all the bugs just like hitting me so f quickly that it felt like like kind of tickly. It was weird. Anyway, <laughs> bet you didn't expect that comparison today. Bugs hitting you to an electric bath. <laughs> I don't like that bath. <laughs> Felt wrong to be like electrocuted in uh, in water. Who scared bugs when I start mountain biking? Now I don't really care if I swallow some from time to time. Yeah, it's broken. <laughs> like uh, the worst would be something that can like sting you as you like it flies to the back of your throat. So like I've swallowed quite a few, and it's like you know if they fly into your mouth and they like hit your lips and tongue and stuff like that and you can like spit it out but sometimes like the angle is just right and it goes right into the back of your throat and it's down the hatch before like there's any <laughs> you don't have a choice about it it's already down there it literally flew into your stomach um and for the most part the little flies that end up doing that is fine you get a little extra protein but like <laughs> if you did that with like a big bumblebee like it's gonna it's, it's gonna be a bad time Uh, I haven't had like a, a bee fly into my mouth, but I did have one like fly, smack the gap between my sunglasses and helmet, bounce off my forehead, get stuck underneath my sunglasses and sting me right next to my eyeball, which I, I did not appreciate. It was, it was not my favorite thing that I've experienced while cycling. To the left. Like your trip smooth to hitchhiking for you favorite. They're just different. How I describe it is hitchhiking is more social. Like I'm in and out of cars all day, so I get to really meet people from the different places I, I travel to. And like that's really cool. And it's, it's my favorite part about hitchhiking. I like the, the spontaneity, the randomness. Don't know who I'm gonna meet, where I'm gonna go to. But like I travel by meeting people. Hitchhiking is quite different because it's much more independent, like it's just me riding a bike and i do meet people here and there but by and large it's just me riding a bike but what i do get from cycling and i get less of well hitchhiking is the natural aspect like i'm just outside all day i really experience the land of the country and uh from all my time traveling via hitchhiking in the past i've grown a big appreciation for just being outside I just like naturally beautiful places. Um, and I find most places naturally beautiful in their own way. Some are just like, there's no way you can say they aren't, but even places that look like stark and like, a lot of people might say they don't look nice. Like we're talking about cycling across America through the desert. And I'm like, to me that's cool, that's different. We don't really have deserts in Canada. So to me that's, that's something a little different than I'm used to and I think it's beautiful in its own respect. And then there's places like Norway where you, you can't fight it. It is, it's just objectively, objectively beautiful. And uh, you can't see anything <laughs> negative about the landscape in Norway. It just, it just, it is, it is spectacular. Anyway, yeah, bikes more natural, cycling's more culture, more people. They're just different. the decommissioned road this well this road will have cars on it sometimes it's just cars will usually be on a on a proper like highway rather than taking this road so this would be local tra traffic and like farming traffic so yeah 
Đấy. Oh, another thing about cycling, I love the physical aspect. Like, cycling is objectively difficult at times. Um, but I, I just really like the aspect of knowing that every bit of distance I travel that day is under my own physical power. Like, to me, it's just satisfying looking back at the day or an entire trip and being like, that was my, <laughs> that was my body that did it. Like, when I was planning to do this trip, I thought it was going to be a lot faster to do the whole Grand Slam. But, like, it'll be 3,000 kilometers. That's, uh, uh, is this right? I think that says Sim Jing Gang Gam. Okay. That's when I rode from Vancouver Island to Halifax for part one of going across Canada. That was 6,000 kilometers. It's half a Canada. That's pretty good. Ah, and then cross this bridge, yeah, okay. Jing gang dam. Do 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 do. Connor, should we do today? Uh, we're just gonna go until we feel like stopping. Uh, whether that's like physically, just being like, yeah, I feel done, or we run out of daylight. That's quite often a. Just a I'm done point as well. Um, now, as long as we ride a little bit into the night, if we end up losing the daylight between towns, but I don't know, we'll see what do we got. Uh, we'll have to start thinking about that soon because the sun will set in just over an hour. So, yeah. Can I keep all hydrated? Got two water bottles. Speaking of which, I should probably drink. Uh, one has sports drink. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Bit of a rough gear shift, but. Okay. <laughs> Timing wasn't great with the hill climb. All right. <laughs> I was focused on the drinking and not like, oh yeah, there's a hill there. I'm <laughs> gonna have to change gears, otherwise we're gonna run out of steam. Some kind of dynamo. No, I just eat dinner in restaurants and charge your batteries there. Uh, congrats again, lost the stamps. Thank you very much. We just got, wait, what's the updated amount? 422 kilometers <laughs> to get to, not even the exact like certification center, just kind of Western Seoul, close-ish to the <laughs> certification center. We got a ways to go. Are you used for chafing? Hairy legs. I don't use any of like the sham 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 wow cream that cyclists use. I just don't chafe.
sunset two days for you. I'd love to see if I can do that in two days. Like another 20 today. So we have 400 flat to finish this tour and do it 200 kilometers in two days, or 200 kilometers a day for two days to get the 400, I think would be really cool. Accomplishment, I just, I don't know if I got it in me. I guess there's only one way to find out. We can try and you know, we do it, then we do it. If we don't, then we don't. Automatic gear shifting bicycles. Like what, DI2 or whatever it's called? Uh, I haven't tried one. I heard they're really nice though. I like this road though. It's good. Four days then? Well, I don't know. I might try to do 200 kilometers a day. Just whether or not I do it is <laughs> to be determined. You said 240? Uh, well, we got 420 kilometers from here. So if we get, get to 400 flat remaining by the end of today, be 200 kilometers a day for two days. And then I'd have to like camp out by the certification center and go first thing. Well, probably at 10 a.m. They probably don't open first thing. At 469 a day for the means. It's exactly 69. No matter where it is, I gotta stop. It's right here. I just gotta oh, sleep on the railing. Two bottles of water, electrolytes, fresh my face, head, grab bottles, splash my head, wrong <laughs> bottle, just splashing sugary sports water on your head. Feels good, man. Input needed. Your system that they shift automatically? Oh. I haven't. Is that more on e bikes or what? But yeah, it's, that's electronic gear shifting. It's not automatic, though, yeah. Right, as you say, rider input needed. I just thought that's what we meant. I think it's just automatic, and it's definitely not automatic. Anyway. Bumpy. Call it nice to her. Nice, 69 kilometers a day, every day. That DIT recently has been amazing. I, I've heard. My stream with 37 views. I've heard it's really good. We got Jane. Hey, thanks for the raid. Um, all right, welcome to Hitch and welcome to South Korea, where we have completed, well, the accumulation phase of this large bike tour of South Korea. Now we just gotta ride 400 kilometers back to Seoul to cash it in and get a gold medal. Hey. Right. Bye, I appreciate the raid, hope you a good stream. How are y'all doing? Got a power meter to gear change interface. How you pedal the lower? The gear goes. Interface, like, well, it sounds like you're describing like a way to integrate automatic shifting on a bicycle. I'm guessing, is that what you're asking? Have anyone done that? Someone says that it exists. I don't know, I haven't seen it. I feel like I could see it being on e-bikes. Maybe a hiking trip. Western US. Batteries being an issue, network being an issue. Um, most like hiking specific trails like go really out there in nature and there just would be no network. Um, Here's rather than Pacific Coast Highway. What I would be interested in trying, not knowing if I could do it or not, would be the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada in Western US. It's not following the coastline, but 
and it's falling, you know, Western U.S. Um, specifically because I'm from the West Coast, so it feels of the three main south to north or north to south trails you can do, um, PCT, Continental Divide, and Appalachian Trail or Appalachian Trail, depending on who you talk to. The West Coast one is, is kind of the one that speaks to me, only because I'm from there. As Brennan Day biking, depends how far we go and how hard I have to uh, work for those miles. For example, a day where we're just, you know, doing 2,000 meters of climbing through the fjords of Norway. If we did 100 kilometers and 2,000 meters of climbing, that's just going to be a much tougher day than 100 kilometers of flat, leisurely riding. Um, but like a normal day is probably at least 2,000 kilometers. A good day is at least 5,000 kilometers, and then it can go up from there. But without a power meter pedals, it will be tough for us to give an exact answer because it really depends on my physical output. Um, so what we could do is, yeah, I could get power meter pedals. We could essentially have an overlay of my current power, use the current power times the amount of time I'm pedaling to get the average power. If we take the average power by the amount of time, you can actually convert that to calories. So from measuring how much power I'm putting to the pedal, we can convert that to calories burnt with a, a good amount of uh, accuracy to what is actually happening. And then we can actually tell you. I do have power meter pedals, I just need to figure out how to integrate them into the stream. It's be tough to navigate on the trail. Yeah, there's some pretty famous sections on the Pacific Crest Trail going through the Sierras, I think, that are uh, can be quite challenging. There's kind of like a like a, a through hiking season. You kind of start in a narrow-ish time range. Um, specifically, because it's going to take like four months to do, or I think four or five months, something like that. Uh, so you want to finish it before like winter starts to set in in the fall, but you want to start late enough so when you get to the Sierras, uh, it's passable. As if you're still there in the spring, like the snow levels will be so high that you're not hiking, you're, that you're mountaineering. And uh, most people <laughs> are not prepared for, uh, to do mountaineering, like we didn't bring crampons, fixed ropes, stuff like that. Takes so long to do Pacific Coast Trail. Yes, well, it's too forested. Like, you need line of sight to sky. If you mean Pacific Crest Trail, like the hiking trail. There's sections that would work. Like, you start in the south in the desert. Um, now, the issue there would be power, like, The standard Starlink dish right now, if you convert it to DC power only rather than using AC, um, which has to convert it and then it's a little inefficient, you can average about 50 watts of power draw to run the standard, standard Starlink dish. But if we're talking like a 12 hour day, that's 50 watt hours, that's 600 watt hours. Um, it's a lot of power. Esca up gifted a tier one sub to a slurred. They have given 13 gift subs in the channel. Doll e shop. <laughs> Our e sheep. Good to see you. Thanks for the gifted sub. I appreciate it. This, I wrote on this before, and it's very rough concrete. We're doing the asphalt instead. Three starts tomorrow. Ooh, it's exciting. Hopefully, I get to call Sarah tonight and just see what her status is. And, See if she needs any help with anything that I can do from the opposite side of the world. 
but yeah, Sarah's in Greece. It's just, yeah, just, I think they just re repainted the lines. I can smell it. Yeah. <laughs> it smells like paint. That is very fresh blue. Yeah, that is, they just did that. You, you, you'll have to see it. <laughs> A lot of the blue lines are getting pretty faded. Um, I, so funnily enough, I, at my last stamp that I was just doing the other day, I, I talked to this interesting guy who's, you know, like biked to the Pacific Coast Highway and stuff like that, Canada, Mexico, and a bunch of other things, including uh, Australia, which you don't meet too many people in the wild that have cycled across Australia. It's a tough one. Um, and he, he did verify it is a tough one. Um, but uh, I asked him... Oh, he also did Greece up. To, no, he did uh, Italy from Venice down to Greece along the Adriatic. So the opposite direction of kind of what Sarah's doing right now. And I asked him about it and he said, uh, Greece is too hilly. <laughs> and, well, the thing is, like, I like hills. Ooh, this person's fully loaded. Is that front and rear panniers? Oh, I think it is. Oh, you'll have to see it. All right. I don't see too many people like fully loaded. Like they're actually like camping and doing a longer trip here. People pack light on the bikes here and like credit card tour and stuff, which is totally fine. It's just, you know, you feel a special connection to people that are doing the fully, fully loaded stuff. After you pride yourself on some of the steep UK hills. Oh, that's good. I feel like it takes a lot for Sarah to say she's proud of herself. Ever go against Eastern Europe? Yeah, I'd like to. We're considering like if I rescue my um, solar panel trailer, in northern Norway and Tromsø and ride down through Finland. Um, we could then take a ferry from Helsinki to uh, Estonia and then ride through uh, Estonia, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, like down that way. Go for buying a bicycle that lasts for a long time. Um, you know, like, like my bike is a steel frame bike. If you buy a steel frame bike, the frame will probably last as long as you do. Um, now, there's exceptions, <laughs> but it's just burly, also heavy. Because, um, yeah, like, like a touring specific bicycle is, is built with durability and repairability in mind. That's why I, I have like the bar end shifters, which are very old school, but the mentality is they're easy to repair wherever you are in the world but they're also durable on top of that, so. Um, so essentially, you're just looking for like, probably heavier, like, kind of components that have been around for a while. Everyone knows how they work. They know how reliable they are. Here's one of our certification centers that we did on the way down, but we don't have to go to them anymore because we've done them all. So, yeah, I did. Steel frame, basic components. It's hard to go wrong. How's it feel? It'll feel a lot better when I get to Seoul, but honestly, oh, actually, this part of the ride was one of my favorite parts. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, we are about to lose the sun, though. It's already gone behind the mountain, but I should actually start to think about where I'm gonna camp. Uh, camping around here would probably be beautiful if I could find a flat spot but I also need to find a place to eat. There's a, there's a two part thing here. But no, it's quite satisfying to have filled out that whole passport. So like every single stamp spot on that thing is filled.
a town close by? I'm not sure. There's random like houses on the, uh, the other bank of the river. Um, so, I don't know, when I get to the bridge, there's a, a cool bridge up here, maybe I'll stop and uh, look at my map. Oh, could camp down there, maybe? I really think I could find somewhere to camp along this shore. And there's like nothing along here other than, well, <laughs> this road slash trail. Like, just go off on the side of the trail there, or up there. Um, I really have to pee, actually. So let's point you guys at the river. I'm gonna go pee off <laughs> out of frame. Why was this cleared? This is probably actually prickly, but... Be right back. I'm gonna look at a map real quick and see what we have around here. Because, yeah, this, well, it probably won't be like dark, dark until, um, until just after six? Wait, when does the sun set? It's 5.50 or 6.50? Time is the sun set. Is it 5.50? 6.50, 6.50? Then we have quite a bit of time actually. Do 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 yeah, close at 8.30. Okay, yeah, should be good. That's good. We're done with the stamps? We've done every single stamp in the passport, in all of Korea. They're all done. Car coming down this road. Um, okay, scout, camping, and then a restaurant on the side of the bridge. That works. Keep an eye out for a good spot to set our tent. Do, 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 do. 
I think they're uh, foraging. Oh, gazebo? <laughs> we could gazebo it again. It's war staying warm enough that we'd probably need to just set up the tent body again. That's a pretty nice one. At night, this probably, it probably won't get much traffic. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think that's a good option. It's got like a, a thatch roof on it too. That's pretty unique. Yeah, the wind's coming from this way, but the bushes behind it will shelter most of the wind. Um, yeah, all right. This is a maybe. We might be sleeping here. But we still got about a kilometer till we cross the bridge. I'm just gonna pin this. Save, favorites, done. Got it. All right. Yeah, we're overlooking the river, so that's a nice spot. This is technically a road that you can drive down. Um, I just don't think many people will be driving down it. Maybe another gazebo? Yeah, the next kilometer could be. Like, we have to do this anyway because the restaurant's on the other side of the river, and, uh, well, we, we got it go get food and um, beyond that we really need to charge batteries don't look comfy well <laughs> I feel like most of the things I do to most people don't look comfy I like them though Quite a few houses on the other bank of the river. Ah, there's the bridge, which would mean the restaurant's just to the right of it on the other side, if it is open. I like this bridge, though. Let me show ya. You oil your saddle? Yeah, like twice a year. Oh, there's another gazebo. Is this one that's well, a little more public? But it's right at the bridge and it's a lot smaller and there's no like wooden platform on there it's just like a bench around the circumference of it i like the other gazebo more <laughs> can we get it bouncing can it bounce i don't think it bounced <laughs> it is a bridge over water where is a sarah when you need her Uh, 
All right, so we go this way, but we're gonna go the other way and see if we can find some food and some power. I like that rock, it's very pointy. I think that guy likes it too. Okay. Now this first place, I got a bunch of bird houses, which is cool, I like that. It looks like it is uh, right beside me, but up those rocks. <laughs> is there another way to get there? I think there is up here. There's the wind. Now that we're exposed to it. All right, let's go check her out. Check it out. Gotta climb though. Hell's Bunniest just resubscribed for 25 months. I missed the last one. Can you go back again and <laughs> pretend to do it? Let's do Thanks, all D. 88 of them again. Just because we had so much fun. But like actually. Uh, I don't know, this isn't looking too optimistic. Uh, it is a restaurant at some point, but it is very closed looking. Hmm. There was a dog in there, but ah, no food. That means my gazebo won't work. No. I don't see much for the next while. Like quite, quite a while. I'm like, I could survive without a proper, proper dinner, but I need to charge. So we went through. Yeah, it's probably seasonal. Um, just a lot of places are reopening now, so I thought maybe they'd be open now. Okay. There's place, a couple places way down. Well, way is subjective. Mm, probably eight kilometers, nine kilometers, ten kilometers. There's a town there, we can hope to find a place to camp around there too. Okay, anyway, carrying on. No food here. And no power. open before evening well like it says right on my thing like it's open closes at 8 30 p.m um like you mean they only open at the in the evening which was really annoying in like portugal like restaurants would open at 8 p.m it's like <laughs> but i was there in november it got dark at like 5 30 i'm like what did i do for two and a half hours Well, give me sugar. Oh. 
That's not Portugal, Trevor. That's Spain. Isn't that also Portugal? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Portugal. Dang, I like that gazebo. Spain also of light because it's yes time. But it's also Portugal. And they close after lunch and they don't reopen till late. are coming out. Well, this would be easy to camp on, <laughs> but there's no food. Where's the beef? Oh. That's the best cycling pass so far. If you always want to have cycling pass everywhere and never want to have to interact with cars except for crossing roads at like proper protected intersections, Netherlands. Hello. So, ooh, another gazebo. <laughs> oh, so I wanna fly my drone around here. This would be a great spot. We're just gonna end of day. The well, sun's like reasonably high still. I think it just looks like it's about to set. So it must be 6.50 sunset, right? Did anyone ever actually look it up? I was, like, I was saying 5.50, but I'm pretty sure it's 6.50. It's just cause we're in this valley, it makes it look like it's like, about to be nighttime. In which case, 702. In which case, we should just fly the drone quickly, shouldn't we? We have the time. Let's go back to the gazebo and get it going. I should be able to do this switch over pretty quickly. I think the drone has a fresh battery in it and, uh, and all that jazz. Uh, the audio is still going to be fucked because um, we haven't figured out a way to fix it. Bike stand next to you. A loaded touring bike doesn't fit in the bike stand really because of the front panniers. And then the weight of it. Like, cause it Kind of put it in there and then the bike will just naturally lean on something, but a, a normal unloaded bike <laughs> weighs 20, 30 something pounds. Uh, this weighs a substantial amount more. Uh, so once it starts leaning, it like it's putting a ton of pressure on the side of the... Uh, the wheel, the front wheel. 
Okay, so really quickly, if I was a microphone, this, or is that just a ventilation? Because we get tons of wind noise when we're riding. Don't see anything else that looks like, I feel like I shouldn't cover that though. What's this in here, but no. Could be those, I don't think it's those. We're just going to deal with the wind. Works your spokes. Well, it's just like, it only goes up like this high on the wheel, and then you have a 100-pound bike all torquing on one side on a very small section of the wheel. I just don't think it's going to be the best for it. Have I broken a wheel that way? Does it feel horrible when I like put my bike into one of those things and I feel the entire way of the bike leaning on one side at a small part of the wheel? Yeah, it feels like shit. <laughs> I don't like it. Oops, I need to not do that. wasn't loaded be fine well yeah that's what they're designed for and it works great for that but um, yeah I don't feel comfortable putting my whole bike on there wait uh, I gotta take this off. it's gonna fly yeah we're gonna quickly yeah we're probably gonna have the wind noise but I can't figure out how to not do that. Stay. Okay, I want to see if I can change the settings so it doesn't beep at me for all the proximity sensor stuff because it's kind of annoying. I'm pretty sure there's a setting for that, but I, I've looked through them pretty extensively. I can't really figure it out. <sighs> Sit, obstacle avoidance action, bypass brake off. Yeah, we want it to bypass, bypass, showing normal display radar map. Sure, return to home. Um, try to update the home points. It gets freaky about that. Compass normal, IMU normal, battery info. So LED, unlock GeoZone, find my drone, advanced safety settings, signal lost, yet hover, press stop, emergency only, none of that is sound, control, units, no, display zoom, subject scanning, smart shop thing, gain an expo, gimbal, no. Nope. Home point updated. Yeah. Stick mode. Press. Switch. RC calibration, flight tutorial camera, resolution, like these are all just, now this is for the, the sound of, of the obstacle avoidance. I'm probably just going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Um, so I, I gotta cut the feed from my bella box and then we'll switch to the drone. So uh, you'll have clips for a second here.
So be right back. Okay, uh, are we on, are we a drone now? I don't know why I went to a black screen, it should have, yeah, feet, okay. Take off. Less obstacles, so you're not gonna beep at me so much. Cool. Uh, anyway, let's just quickly go over here real quick. All right, here's the river. Takes me over here. Hi. Back to the river. Let's go up. Let's look up a little bit so we can see the mountains. where we are. Oops, this way. Let me go down here. Let's come over here. object. I want you to follow me. Oh, I got it. Let's go for a ride. Sorry for the 
wind noise are going to be so Fucking, <laughs> you got a problem. We're working on it, but it will take some time to fix. Can't hear you. If it's windy, mute it. It forces the mic from the controller to be used, and I, I can't turn it off. Let's see how it handles these. Uh, uh, let's see how it handles this. eventually figure out the, the sound thing, but like, right now. section here. Those beeps are it detecting obstacles. I'd like to be able to figure out how to turn that off as well at some point here soon too. branches can definitely knock it. The thin spindly ones are difficult for it to see. Let's see. Let me get it right there. Less obstacles over there. in here. Let's just have it right behind me. Oh, that was close. I got drone insurance if it crashes and breaks. Like, I'm going to pay a hundred bucks and they'll fix it. Now, if it just flies away and I can't recover it, then i got to pay more. But... Right, there we go. There we go. Out again. Yeah, we'll figure out the audio thing eventually, but it's fun to incorporate on nice, quiet places like this.
I think we can actually... Well, we don't hit that. We can swing this. FTN11 just resubscribed for 58 months. Congrats to all the stamps of Hitch Hitchgasm inverted question mark one quarter. You inspired me to get a bicycle and go oh, outside. Nice. It's <laughs> awesome, but I'm usually exhausted after 18 kilometers ride lol. Hey, that's where I started too. That's where I started. Um, this truck coming. I just gotta, um, Check my map because I don't think I want to go back this way. We can't this way. I think I have to be on that side. You can see that way. Put my maps on the, <laughs> on the phone. Throw the mic port with something. I looked to find the mic port and I have no idea where it is. So I, I have to look this up independently. But then at that point, we'd probably just fix it altogether by disabling the mic entirely. Um, yeah, we're gonna go. All right. Uh, which in which case? Let's just have. Um, It's, it's gonna swing around here awkwardly. Alright. Alright. I thought the thing said turn right across the bridge. Yes, not. Sorry about the wind. We're working on it. in Michigan Lansing. So we got trees up here. Want to see how, these ones are nice and leafy though. Well, some of them are. How's it gonna do? Oh no! <laughs> 
that's what I mean by <laughs> the, <laughs> the spindly trees. It can't see them well. This one it should see. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Almost died at your first tree there, buddy. <laughs> I bought drone insurance, don't worry. <laughs> Sixty-one. <laughs> I knew we were rockers. Uh. Woo! <laughs> Chicken intense fries? That's right. Here we go. Alright. Get ready. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Sure that person pulled over for me and nearly got in an accident. Nearly. Jesus. Now I'm kind of scared about their driving. <laughs> kind of scared about the driving. <laughs> I just pulled over to have a smoke directly behind me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, so I make a live video documentary about what it's like to hitchhike in different places. So the guy that I'm with, he picked me up on the side of the road, and then he wanted to go up for lunch. So we're just going up for lunch now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, well you need to sit on the other side. No, okay, okay. You know what? I can put it that way. That'd be better. We don't want to be like that. Okay, it's okay. I'll go this way. <laughs> you look you look great today. What? No, it's great. So it, it's a <laughs> so you can see the chat there. So okay. 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 <laughs> good. Yes. All right. Hitchhiking. Okay. Sign. Very good. Yes. Very good sign. All right. Uh, we go uh, up there. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you. Oh, it's only Kimo. 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 Oh, it's only Kim
Alright, we're back, but in the wind. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's worth flying anymore, or if we just switch back to the other one. Feet, for free. Um, Take off. Home point updated. Uh, oh, I guess updates are here. It says we got 36% battery. My friend is, yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta put my backpack actually down. Strap it up. Recognize me as a person, thank you. Active shots, go. Uh, we want this. Alright. It struggles more going backwards. Oh god, what are you doing? <laughs> don't, don't do it. Uh, okay, can you try a little closer? Don't hit that branch. See, <laughs> it's struggling going backwards. Hello. Oh, there's a sign right there. Don't hit the sign. Oh, that's good. Now you're doing it. <laughs> Alright, good job. You're doing great. <laughs> now I gotta like vlog from this point of view. You just go over there. <laughs> Alright, we're on a road. Um, <laughs> be an awkward place to like land here and stuff like that, but. It'll be fine. It's the easiest place for you guys to be. It's just out over there. There's no obstacles out there. Are we in danger? Well, yeah. If you guys are on the other side. doesn't do that. Battery level is low. Yeah. Aircraft will return to the home point in 10 seconds. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me update it real quick. Update home point con controller. Okay. He just wants to fly back to where, point updated. where it took off from. So, I think just up here. I don't know if I'm crossing this bridge or not. A little lander. This was a short second flight because, oh, well, I we did the bulk of it the first time. Battery level is low. Aircraft will return to the home point in 10 seconds. Why don't you go forward? No. <laughs> forward. 
pets. Oh, because it was still trying to be around me. What is this? Next step. Oh, you got a hundred bucks? Holy cow. hundred bucks for Shelly? Is that real money? Yeah, that's real. Why do you dis- are you disconnected? No, you're fine. Another happy landing. Okay, I'm gonna switch you guys back to the actual camera. One sec. So remember the two that means it's worth it? Yeah, so one of the nice things since I've been streaming Do you? Yeah. yeah. What idea you got? You come to Seoul, my town. You don't even tell. Me. <laughs> okay. Should be on the normal camera now. <laughs> All right. We did the droney thingy. All right. Now we put this away. You're pretty good. It does a pretty good nav good job navigating this stuff. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Cute little guy. Alright. It's tiny? It has to be. So this is 249 grams. In most countries, once this is 250 grams of takeoff weight, now it, like I need a license and stuff to fly. So uh yeah. But so it has omnidirectional uh obstacle avoidance. That's what like that is, and 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 that is. So, there you can see on all sides because of that. Uh, but, yeah. Everyone's like complaining about the audio, and I agree, it sucks. Uh, it's something we're trying to figure out. Okay, we're at 5.50, okay. Mini Pro 3, it's a four. So Mini Pro 3 can do very similar to this, but the sensors are not omnidirectional. It's missing side sensors, I think, and back, maybe? Or is it just back, side? It might only have like front sensors or something like that. So like if it's in active track mode, like what it's doing when it's following me and it's going sideways, it won't pick up a tree that it's gonna fly sideways right into. But like situationally that could work absolutely just fine. Battery's limited by weight. Yeah, you can get the uh, a bigger battery size for this, but then it's over 250 gram takeoff weight, right? So like technically, you can read ultralight 249 grams. You can upsize the battery to have an extra 10 minutes of flight time or something like that. But then if you're in a country where the drone law is 250 plus is you need a license for it and you need to like just follow more regulations, you can get in a lot of trouble, so. This like blade protector holder thing is very finicky. Okay. All right. Anyway, here's the drone. It's like half an hour power. I think it's rated to about that. Yeah. DJI Mini 4 Pro, yes. Yes it is.
I've been here for so long. Oh, you're barking at someone else. Okay. <laughs> Dog wasn't even looking at me. I thought it was complaining about me. And I'm like, dude, why? Hole. Yeah, I got two holes. I got a shoulder hole and a back hole on this shirt now. So, sad. All right. Did you get the last stamp? Um, our, our last, like, new stamp was, like, damn, yang, damn. <clears throat> But then we had to redo one, which was kind of already on the way back in the general direction of Seoul-ish. Uh, to get us onto this official route here. Um, at Hyenga Park, I think? That was our actual last one to have every single stamp spot in the passport completed. Okay. Alright. I'll strap that. Alright. Air vents. Yeah, it's all ventilation. It's all ventilation. Oh, sure. All right. So yeah, now we just have to get back to Seoul to actually cash in our passport and um, get a gold medal. Let's go dinner now. I really need to. I really don't have much power right now. We're burning through my power a lot faster than I thought I would. Um, am I staying on this side? Maybe. Yeah, I'm staying on the left side. Ah. So, yeah, not too long we've got. Um, ooh, a flooded road. <laughs> no. It's Spain all over again. Careful. <laughs> it looks fine. But no sudden movements. Ah! Is that a pheasant? Is that what I ate? Is it pheasant? All the snacks in that bag. <laughs> My snack bag is preloaded right now. I'm so ready to snack. How's your, you know, logistical day going? What you got going on, sir? All right, not too long we'll again resume our uh, uh, camp scouting, because in not too long we'll be able to find a, a food place and then the preferred order of, op oh, order of operations for um, the end of the day is to scout camp pre-dinner when it's still light out. It's just easier to find a camp spot when it's light out. And then go eat, charge batteries, and then come back to the tent. Um, or come back to the place we've already pre-scouted out. That way it's just easy. Getting eel today. <laughs> Yeah, eel for the rest of the trip. Nothing but eel. Try some new dishes. I like. I don't know what. I don't think there's many options in the next little small town with. There's like I think I saw like two restaurants or something. Maybe. I'll eat what they got. Not like a camping site. Yeah, but Korean camping's weird and expensive. I could sleep on this gazebo. It's a little early, but that's a nice gazebo. And it's not really next to anyone's house, so that's nice. Just kind of in farm country here. But it's a premium one. It's very regal. You can sleep in a re. It's even got bike um, stands there. All right, it's probably a little far from food, <laughs> but it's an option. It's an option. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Been hissed at by a goose, it's terrifying. You gotta hiss back to assert dominance. Won't that hiss <laughs> Nice one. There's a nice weir. It is a beautiful road. It is a beautiful area. Yeah, so when I was coming down through there, I've already been on this route on my way south to, you know, when we were getting the stamps before we finished them all. Um, and this particular section and the one section down there uh, by that little single file red bridge that we rode across where there was that restaurant that was closed that we were going to stay at around there. It's one of my favorite spots of this uh, whole tour of Korea. It's really nice. What time for sunset now? Uh, apparently 7 o'clock is sunset. So I, I thought it, I, it looks like it's around sunset right the second, but we're in like a, a river valley with like pretty high hills slash mountains on the side. So it just looks a little bit... Um, Oh, this would be a great spot to fly a drone out over the river, too. Anyway, it just looks more like sunset than it actually is, I guess. have the one battery with you for the drone I have two but only one was charged today if you're talking drone batteries if you're talking total batteries I got I don't know like I think it's like 600 ish watt hour batteries well 100 or less like between 88 and 99 point something watt hours and then two smaller 10,000 milliamp hour batteries, so like, whatever, there's like 30 watt hours. Eh, 25? No. Ah. It's cured nearly over in Korea. Yeah, like, the, um, they already had their full bloom. Most of the petals have fallen off, and you can see, like, the green leaves coming up on them as well, so. There's a couple petals remaining, but... It's been windy a little bit the past couple days and they've been blowing off. Like they'd fall off naturally regardless of if there's wind or not. But the wind seems to expedite the process. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I hope we find a nice place to camp on here. It's just like, ah, oh, it's nice. So sometimes the issue with the river valleys of as far as finding a place to like camp and sleep is <laughs> we follow the river valley, but you're like alongside a hill that goes right into the river. So finding a flat-ish spot can be difficult at times. Guy fishing down there. You can go up that hill, but like find a place to camp up there. I think they're gonna like build something up there. So they put a lot of work developing the land. There's no buildings yet though.
feeling especially bold <laughs> just set up your tent on those small patches of grass right next to the road. Anyway, right, back to Canada. I gotta go to Seoul first. Well, I'd be flying out of Seoul anyway, too, so I guess I gotta go to Seoul for multiple reasons. One, to show my passport to the Korean government so they can tell me good job and give me a gold medal. And then two, eventually, yeah, to fly back to Canada. We're gonna see if Jay Streezy's in Seoul still. Maybe he can do something. He can uh, show me what a night out in Korea is like, maybe. So I haven't really had a night out in Korea. Book your plane ticket? I haven't yet. Sometimes to my own detriment because sometimes booking last minute flights is a, a painful hit to the wallet. Twenty days since Chase's last stream. Hey, he's on vacation. I do the same thing. He deserves it. His India trip was pretty <laughs> pretty was quite the marathon. degrees in cycling? Are you cold? Where are you from that 15 degrees is particularly cold? Now we're good. 15 degrees is a very comfortable. Like, it, like it, it is cooling off. So if I stop, I start to feel chilled. Riding, I create a lot of heat. I'm from India. That, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I'm from Canada, so the Great White North, you see? I'm going to stream an internet. Uh, Sony action camera connected to a, a Bella Box currently. I have Bella Box, Livesail Pro, cell phone, lots of different streaming tech, but right now we're running through a Bella Box. Just connected to two cellular networks here in Korea. Korea's got like really good cell network, so could run it off of one probably for the most part and be fine. But there's two for a little redundancy. plans after Korea. Enjoyed seeing this part of the world. Um, next year will probably be a hitchhiking trip. Some ideas for it. Um, and then bike touring. I also have some ideas. I don't know what's going to be next though. For sure. Um, it's kind of like I got to figure out something for uh, TwitchCon Rotterdam. That's end of June. I always build a trip out of getting there. So I got to figure out some kind of trip. Foreigner live streamer earning <laughs> See, live streaming the stuff that I do makes it really easy to be the first person to do something. I'm not the first foreigner or just person in general of any way, shape, or form to do the Grand Slam tour and get the, the medal. But I'm the first one to live stream it. <laughs> so. Not the first person to hitchhike across Canada, but I'm the first person to live stream it. <laughs> Eh? Just add more like very specificity to it and uh, we can find some things <laughs> that we're the first to do.
uh, year and cycle up with Sarah. I've talked to Sarah about the potential, like, well, for her especially to ride, like, she might have just enough time to ride from uh, Greece to Rotterdam. This is like three months. Um, you can ride pretty far in three months. But, like, that's it's a big ride. That would be really impressive. Um, and I know from when we were doing the tandem trip last year, was it last year? Year before. Year before. Um, I don't think Sarah particularly enjoyed the TwitchCon push. The, like, we have to go. There's, we have this many days and this far to get there. We need to average this amount. If we do less today, like, that's fine, but that means we have to go further on the other days in order to make up for that. Also, she was a little sick then, but like she had to take a day off and I'm just like, <laughs> if we're going to make it to the TwitchCon on time, I can't like take a train with you and like, you know, hop up along the way because then we didn't ride the tandem all the way to TwitchCon. So you can take a train to Calais. Uh, I'll ride my bike there and meet you <laughs> in a day or two. So I rode the tandem by myself. But I picked up a, a man named Muhammad, I think. No, Ali? No. Oh, now this is going to sound weird. Anyway, he only spoke Persian. Was he? I think it was Ali. <laughs> oh, God. Ali. Anyway, you see where my brain's going with that. Uh, <laughs> who, like, flagged me down and asked if I could give him some water. And then asked if I could give him some food. And I'm like, yeah, man, take as much... I gave him like a whole big water bottle, I think. And then a bunch of like pain au chocolat. <laughs> pastries, because I ate a lot of pastries in France for obvious reasons. Um, and he tried to get me to call him a taxi to the next town with a, with a train station because he's trying to get somewhere. And he's been walking forever and he's just dehydrated and tired and had it. And I'm like, I don't, <laughs> through a translator, like, I don't, like, I don't know how to call a taxi in France in the middle of nowhere. Bits, each that was some great footage with the drone on. And he know how you did that and drive your bike at the same time. <laughs> well, the drone mostly does it itself. I got that going for me. Stoneman links with 100 bits. I appreciate it. Drone's pretty smart. Um, hey, I explained to him, I'm like, okay, the next town's only four kilometers away. Four or five, something like that. This is a two-person bicycle. You can sit on the seat and pedal, and we can, I'll take you to the train station. I taught, essentially all we had to, to ride in the, the second seat on the tandem, all you have to know is like start pedaling, stop pedaling, that's it. So I taught him start, stop, essentially. And we rode the final four or five kilometers into town to a train station. The solar panel. I don't know how many fly with you all day. Um, like on a sunny day, yeah, if we, had, if we had the solar panel, we'd have to like land it every 30-ish minutes or less um, and then swap out the battery. But with that amount of power, I, I could be charging like four batteries at once and then just cycle through them. And by the time you're through your fourth battery, you for sure will have recharged the first battery. So I wouldn't charge it fast enough? Well, yeah, I would have I've got, <laughs> I've got a 225 watt solar panel, which is what I got. In perfect solar conditions, I generated a lot more power than I needed in a day. Um, on a nice sunny day, I'd get about 1,000 watt hours, one kilowatt hour, which is much more than I need to run the broadcast. And then each of those batteries are just like 17 watt hours. So you can do the math. <laughs> charging any good probably talking about a dynamo the issue with the dynamo is like at this speed right here we'd be getting maybe five watts 
Which could keep my phone charged, and that's about it. Like the phone I reach out off of. And like even then, at full brightness, probably not. Um, actually, what does a phone draw? I feel like a lot of times it's like six, seven watts. And then you're, like you're adding extra resistance into the, the whole setup of the bike, right? Like to get those five watts, it's taking that and adding resistance to the wheel. Um, which means, you know, to get those five watts, you're probably, because energy transfer is 100% efficient, you're probably losing 10 watts from the pedal to generate those five watts of power. So if I'm pedaling at 100 watts at the pedal, the drivetrain is pretty efficient, but you lose. What's a basic like derailleur setup in efficiency? Isn't it like 90 something percent efficient? Anyway, so you lose a little bit just from like the, the chain and the cassette and like how bikes work, but then you lose another 10 watts to power your cell phone. Um, so I'll probably get like 80-ish watts to the actual wheel. Link for the panel. Um, well, it's called the Solar Wind 2 bike trailer. And for that bike trailer, they make like custom made uh, solar panels. You can actually get them up to 300 watts, but then it's much longer and it comes closer to the. Um, the wheel of the bike, which means in certain angles, you'll be getting shade on part of the cell, which actually is very detrimental to your solar generation. But you can Google the solar wind bike trailer. Ahead. Uh, let's see. And we must be getting close, which means I probably should be looking at places to eat as well. Wait! <laughs> I already went past it. The places that showed. It didn't look like I went past it. <laughs> There's like two places just behind me. There's one place that just says Korean restaurant and then one other thing. Um, and then up here, I see, yeah, some kind of settlement, but I don't see anything that says it's a restaurant. I see a start of a hiking trail up here, but no restaurant by this bridge. I might have to go back and hope one of those is open because it really looks like there's not much up here. Um, much lower than I should be on battery. Yeah, like no other stuff coming up for a very long time. Um, okay. Because you're almost at the last like point on the certified route, the Samjing Gang Dam, but there's no restaurants at the dam. There's a gas station, but that really doesn't help me. Oh wait, nope. There's some restaurants just past it. We go there. That has a lot of, re okay. Okay, no, there's, there's quite a bit. How far is that? It's not too far, right? Yeah, we can do that. I hope. Okay. We got uh, 35, I think the sunset's around seven, so we got a little bit of time until the sunset. The options here looked really sparse. I just saw like two places. One of them didn't really have any reviews. One had a couple. The ones up here have like a few hundred. So yeah, like they're more official. Although that first one we went to by that first gazebo we we're gonna camp at, I think that one was, was pretty like well reviewed. I feel like for the last there at some restaurants. Uh, the early closing restaurants are usually eight o'clock. 
which would, yeah, not really be enough charging. But we should get there with enough time to eat there if I if I had to. It was my only choice. I just don't know what I'd do. Like, I wouldn't be able to do a full-length stream tomorrow. So, I need a place that's at least open until 9. Alright, so I guess we can see if just before the dam or something like that, there's a decent place to camp. Now, if it's a proper, proper dam, there are a bit more high secure areas. Like, you can you know, hang out there and stuff. I just feel like if you're camping there, you have a higher chance of running into an issue. It's an important piece of infrastructure. Now, what's our distance for the day? It seems like camping huts they have down there. You know, they're not really designed with the intent to sleep in them. Uh, why do they have so many gazebos? I don't know. They like gazebos. 111. Oh, yeah, that's good. Maybe let's go. part of cycling Korea? Oh, I think like a specific spot or like you know pick one thing like the cycling Korea is just good following the official routes it's like following beautiful river valleys for the most part there's exceptions to that but follow some beautiful areas and you don't have to be like rubbing shoulders with traffic for most of it Our crew felt sketchy on this trip. Uh, we've had to ride on a few like busier, rubbing shoulders with traffic roads, very infrequently. But just because like the path was closed and there's only one other road, <laughs> the main road, um, but if you mean like sketchy, is in like a bad neighborhood? No, I haven't encountered that in Korea. Restaurant closed seven. What restaurant? There's several. If I really had to, there's enough restaurants that there's like a motel. So if I really couldn't find a place to charge and eat, then I'd just have to charge inside because I need to be able to run the stream tomorrow. So in some way, shape, or form, we gotta charge tonight. <laughs> yeah. You know, Rent a room, charge my batteries inside, and then sleep in my tent <laughs> outside. But we got to charge. And it doesn't have to be all night. It's just like, ideally, like two hours. You gonna share on? Yeah, should be. I haven't turned it off, so as long as it's still working, there's no tech issues. Should be on. Some rough concrete road. Well, in sections it's rough. Is this? Okay. Yeah, get out. Okay. All right. The blue line goes both under the bridge and uh, I think we just go under and over and up. So. That always confuses me. 
Blue line signifies like a bike route. So. Pretty new in this section. But yeah, if it's painted red, it's usually um, very bumpy concrete, whether it's new or old. I don't know why. Any red painted sections, especially if they're like up or downhill. Sometimes if they're flat, they're not horrible. But usually any sloped red painted bike section, it could look like brand new, fresh, fresh, but it will rock your world. That one wasn't actually, well, it was a little bumpy, but it wasn't horrible. Getting close to that dam. So, how far actually? Okay, we're just coming around the bend of this river and the dam is up there. Okay. So, I guess we can keep an eye out for like a gazebo or something at this point. Like we prefer closer to where we'd be eating, but there's actually, it's a, the food places are still, hmm. Like one and a half kilometers after the dam or something like that down the road. So this would be, kind of be a far ride from where we're eating. There. Yeah. Ready for the finish line? Ah, uh, yeah, it's Seoul. Uh, it's just still well now under 400 kilometers away. Uh, that's not, is that right? Oh yeah, 402 kilometers left. So we'll get to about our final 400 kilometers today, which is good. And we're like, should we try and do 200 kilometers a day for two days and really crank it out? Kind of want to see what we can do. It really depends on the the routes we take. Like, if I'm on like the really bumpy like side routes, like I just can't maintain a good pace. But following roads, objectively, is just a lot faster. And then wind is another big one. Is your tab been working? Uh, yeah, no, it, it's worked really good. Um, the only issue I had is when my phone was like dead. And I turned it back on, so we missed the media share. Of course, it didn't autoplay, and then I went to the media tab. And I, sh I could see it, I could see what the media request was. And I cried, tried to press refresh, and it just said, cannot play media or something. It's actually been working really clean, though. Like, I might have to up the time. Like, I choose the number of seconds when the notification plays before the song starts. A lot of times the song starts, especially if it's a longer message, <laughs> the TTS like message gets stepped on by the song. But I guess it's not easy to just have it finish the TTS and then start the song. Was band song in Korea? It could have been, yeah. It's just the only time I've had like the phone just die and disconnect. It was Pink Panther, <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, maybe. Can't detect when DTS finish. Yeah, I figured it was something like that. That's kind of what I thought. You got any ideas for the uh, horrible audio from the, uh, Thank you. from the drone? We got BT with the $20. I assume there's some jams. Yeah, there they are. There they are. Yeah. Alright. This is 
this the bridge we crossed? Is this the dam? Doesn't look like a dam. Alright, we cross here. I could technically camp right there, probably. I really had to. Speedy, thank you very much for the jams. Cross the bridge. I don't know why, like, randomly my speaker will just, like, play things really quiet for, like, four seconds and then go back to normal volume. I don't know why it does that. Notification, but, like... I feel like I'm not getting notifications. Uh, here for 1.2 kilometers. There's flags on the bridges. A lot of times the flags are just like, beware of forest fires. What do those ones say? I don't know. Maybe someone could, someone read them. Some good riding vibes. It's like a bad road to ride on or whatever, maybe. It's not much shoulder. But like, look at the speed limit, it's 30. <laughs> it's near. Nah, no one's going 30, but... They're not going fast either. We're getting kind of close. I'm seeing townish. Is a highway? No. It's a local road. It's also got a 30 kilometer speed on. Okay, yeah, we got some uh, food options right here. I want to figure out where I can camp though. So, I might pull over up here and have a look, see at my map, and see what we got. I see things with lights on. Ah, a town. This is good. Opportunities. Uh, just go right here for a second. Okay. Satellite view. What do we got? Da 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 da. Can't explain. Hmm. 
Ooh, random plants on the side rock. Yeah, you didn't notice that till now. Uh, I'm not seeing an obvious park here. That looks good for camping in town. Scouting. That fence next to crossing. What about it? Fence? What, what about the fence? <laughs> Isn't it weird place? The fence? Can't walk into fence. I don't... What, the posts are in the way? On the road. Crossing lines go into a fence. Uh, I don't think that's a pedestrian crossing. I think that's... Uh, had, like it's a, it's a speed bump, a small speed bump, like, like one of those low ones. But it's just to show that. So <laughs> that's my confusion. <laughs> the crosswalks are just white stripes. There's no yellow on them. Big sign says walking, because there's a crosswalk up there. Like in 15 meters. Back to looking at the map, but red triangle means crossing not allowed. No, a red triangle means it's like just a general caution <laughs> sign, uh, or if it's just the, the caution, then that means yield, doesn't it? Let's just ride through the town really quick. There, across the bridge, and then down. Looks like there's like a small path that follows the river. It doesn't look like there's anywhere to camp along there, but I don't know, I could at least go out there and have a peek. Uh, we go... First exit.
Okay, I should be back. Okay. Uh, so that's... I think I changed the mic at five and a half hours before it actually died, so where are we at, like 11 and a half hours? That's our up time. Eleven forty two. Alright, we're close. <laughs> I can usually tell what time of the stream or the uptime on the stream is based off of the mic's death. Okay, we're crossing the river now, but you know it's a river and there's you know it's a small river. Huh? Turn right on red in Korea, right, right, right? It's a cute little town. Yeah, I just gotta find a place to sleep. Hopefully before it gets dark. And then, and then I gotta eat. <laughs> um, and I really gotta charge. So I got a lot to do. If I was a camping spot, I would be around here. Well, here's a little bit of green space. It's a little bit closer to town than I'd like. But... It was a gazebo. <laughs> it's kind of just like behind someone's house, though. Um, if you want to go up there and along the river, maybe? Or across the river, maybe? Under that tree? Let's look over there. This could be nice. I'm seeing opportunity. Maybe. Oh, is that just garbage bin stuff? <laughs> Next to the sign it says CCTV. Pointing that way. That's fine. I, I just need my... Oh, there's a cat. Do you hang out by the garbage? for feeds. It's getting too dark for the sunnies. I'm gonna go look at this real quick. Um, oh. <laughs> Hello, CCTV flashy alarm system. That's nice of you. Yeah, I think it's for dumping garbage though. Uh, there's tire tracks that go up there. Let me just leave the bike here one second. It's essentially just garbage piled currently. But what if you go past the garbage? Think past the garbage. Yeah, it's, it's for dumping trash. I don't know if you're gonna come here for me camping, but like I could camp there, but then I'm just behind a garbage trash. I don't really wanna go there. Let's just go a little further. Like, cars very infrequently drive down here. There's tire tracks, but they don't really do this frequently. I just wouldn't wanna be right here, because a vehicle absolutely could drive down here. Uh, well, kind of get there, isn't it? Just have to be all night with this beautiful running water sound.
No, I really had to. I can't find the garbage bin, but I don't want to. It's not the most aesthetic spot. It doesn't smell bad here, but you know. It's just the clearing in there, so. Yeah. Seems to be a lot of trash here. I don't know if people are dumping the trash. Use needle or something, or glass? Glass possible, I haven't seen much for used needles. Doesn't look like a gazebo. I know we're in a town. It's just right in town and it didn't look the best for camping. There's no like good park along here. Right along that little toppy bit. <laughs> Oh god, uh, I think I'm in the right gear to climb out of here. I'm gonna try anyway. Wind protection? <laughs> yeah. We got that going for us. Okay. Okay. Wrong gear still, but we can do it. Yes, yes, little CCTV thing. What about that? Oh, it's one of those workout parks. That's probably actually really good. Oh yeah, this I can work with. This is looking great. This, oh yeah. And we got nice flowing water over this weir. Oh yeah. Anything even open? I haven't looked yet. I scouted out the camping spot first, then we go for food. I could go like right there. I could go either sleep on the bench. <laughs> Anywhere in here, where this doesn't look that well used, so. Is that anyone's house there? I don't know if that's a house or not. So I probably want to stay closer to here, like maybe by these benches or something. Anyway, we could do it. Like we're like right next to a road. It just isn't a very popular road. Yeah. Mention this place had power. Absolutely. It was a gazebo. Oh, that's right on a busier road. Okay. Never mind. Not that one. <laughs> Down on the top of that hill. I'm like, oh, free gazebo. It's free real estate. All right. More like a public park. Yeah. Which you could get away sleeping in in Korea, which we've done plenty. Nice. All right, so that's satisfactory. I'm satisfied. Um, I plan to get up early anyway, so. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Ours for food, yes. I guess, uh, nah, that's right. Yeah. Woof is right. I agree. I find the churches in these towns really ominous. I don't know if you can see it, but they, <laughs> they just put like a, a cross on top quite often. It's just a glowing LED red cross. It like looks ominous. Why did they light it up red? It doesn't look friendly. <laughs> they might sacrifice me. All right, back into town, and then uh, we pick some food. Ghost town? Yeah. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Good people. Well, fried chicken. Didn't look particularly bumping. Now I'll pull over and actually look at what options there are around here. Okay, 
ratio. I heard someone get a text message. Do 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 do. With fried chicken takeaway. Close that eight. That's not ideal. Although it's not always accurate. This is about 8.30. Need a good amount of time. This is about 8. Again, these aren't always accurate, but I do need time. That's the longest one, 8.30. It has a good amount of reviews. Local favorites. Nice place for lunch after an easy hike. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's back a block on the left and on the right side. Okay. What dude doing? Uh, I'm gonna find a place to eat and charge my batteries because if I don't get a good amount of charge, we won't be streaming tomorrow, which is an issue. Um, because, you know, if I'm planning on starting early and trying to push like really good distance, I do need a good charge. Oh, what was the man doing inspecting the train? Probably. Probably like the... I especially see them in like smaller towns here in Korea, like... There's people that are just like, look out for the... Wait, how far down? No, right here. Oh yeah, it looks very closed. <laughs> Damn, small towns. <laughs> He says 